What day is it? Hi, I got more sleep than last time. How are we doing? I'm ready to go to fantasy court. Um. Yeah, Haksamea. Happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate. We got bar dreidel. We got bar candle. You can celebrate the season in style. How you doing? I'm quiet. Am I quiet? Do I sound quiet? How am I doing? Hello. Could just be the music's loud. Um, we're good? Okay, cool. Night. If I'm quiet, turn up your volume. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Uh, yeah, no, we're doing, we're doing good. Um, I say the royal we. Um, uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, I did spite watch the Game Awards. I don't want to get into every bit of what happened, because I have a lot of video game to play. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun to watch it on the, on, with the Discord. Just, uh, text shit posting in there. It was a lot of fun. Um, I got as mad as I expected to get. I don't think I got more mad than I expected to get. You know, just the, the typical things I expected. I, it did, I mean, I'd have to compare it to previous years to really know for sure. It did seem like there was a more egregious than usual. It might just be normal. Um, a discrepancy between the acceptance speech time limit and how long Jeff Keighley is allowed to talk on stage with his celebrity friends with seemingly no time limit, where it doesn't even seem scripted at times. They're just kind of hanging out and talking. <laughs> and it's like, how come they get like 15 seconds before music starts playing for game of the year? Uh, but when it's just like, hey, look at another friend who showed It's just like, I get it, Je I get it, Jeff. But come on, it's called the Game Awards. So I got mad, but yeah. Wrap it up as even- oh my god, yeah. This is awful. But it was a lot of fun shitposting about it getting mad. And, you know, the reason why a lot of people watch the announcements, there was some fun stuff that got announced. And yeah, I'm excited for Mon Hun Wilds. I'm excited for the big, big walk. I'm excited for new uh, Golden Idol game. I'm excited for new Daniel Mullins game. I'm excited for all kinds of things, but I'm still just mad with the entire vehicle of the Game Awards, and last night didn't change my mind at all. Just reinforced that, yep, he just doesn't want to change what it is, and that's, you know, that's fine. We'll make our own Game Awards with more dumber awards. That'll work. Yeah, yeah, but Sega's just like, by the way, we're just gonna remake and re-release everything? Wasn't expecting that. So yeah, I mean, there was a lot of fun stuff to talk about, but it's just kind of like, soiled by how shitty of a Game Awards it is. I know, I know. Todd is just, like, almost everything he's had us do in, in Color Funk Challenge League is being brought back. Yeah, New World of Goo? World of Two? Rename it to Winter E3. Yeah. Every, I mean, I, I don't even know how many years now I've been calling a Jeff Keighley's video game holiday spectacular, but it's at least four years now. Um, because that's what it is. And if you rebranded that, 90% of my complaints would go away. If it was a video game holiday spectacular that also sometimes gave out awards, I'd be like, fine, sure. But like, there literally was a part of the show where I asked the Discord chat, I was like, legit, how many minutes has it been since an award? It was like back-to-back -back trailers and ads and game reveals, and then it cuts him on the side stage. I'm like, okay, at least, it sucks when he's like, okay, let's go through like eight rewards off on the side stage rapid fire while we're setting up something exciting on the main stage. But at least there were awards. There were a couple times it cuts him on the side stage and he's like, and now a special guest. And it's like, dude, just call it a video game holiday spectacular. I just, it makes me so mad. Yeah, it was, it was like 20 or 30 minutes, not even, not even exaggerating, without a single award on a show called The Game Awards. And Joe Cat tweeted last night that he said he was timing it. And out of a three hour show, it was like 47 minutes or so. We're dedicated to awards. Like, not even a third of the show is awards. Like, that's kind of fucked up. <coughs> it's kind of fucked up. So anyway, um... Oh, Godzilla! Yeah, sounds neat. Godzilla, more time than Neil Neobon. Yeah, yeah, 
No, it's it's uh, like yeah, was Gonzo fun? Sure. It just it's a it, I, I I've ranted about it every single year. I don't need to repeat myself, but it, it needs to decide. It needs to pick a lane, because at this point, including any awards that all feels like it's disrespectful to the awards they're actually giving out. Oh, excuse me. Animals better than Gonzo. Oh, for sure. And 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 Benson and uh, uh, and and Honeydew. Uh, That's the same person. Benson and Beaker. We're better than animal. Hot take there for you. So, yeah. Time. Total acceptance speech time was like 10 minutes filming. I mean, it, it's just like, do I enjoy listening to award acceptance speeches? Not really, but it's like, if you're calling it an award show and you're giving out awards, they are, they have earned the right to say their piece on stage. <laughs> like, it is baffling. That, that that is not acceptable. But it's like, it, I guess it, it would bother me less if when they have the big Hollywood celebrities on stage, um, if it felt like they were sticking to a script. And it's like, I thought it was very charming uh, when Anthony Mackie was like having a rapport with the audience. But then it went on too long. It like, it started as like, ah, okay, hey, shut up, I'm, I'm doing a thing. It's like, okay, great. But then he did it like four more times. There should be a giant wrap it up flashing at him. The first time is cute and, and endearing and, and makes him relatable as a uh, massive, successful Hollywood actor. Doing it like three, four, five times is just like, okay, get on with, why is there no music playing? Like, people are not having any time on stage. It's nuts. So, I don't know. It, it, it's it's a mess. But, yeah. Monon's hype, though. Yeah, it looks great. I'm excited. Um, but, yeah. No. I uh, 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 My favorite part is is just, um, I gotta really uh, uh, pour one out. Shout out. Professor Presser Luke, my name is Luke. I am a gentleman. I wrote this puzzle just to remember him. And my hands are sticky. Number one, hit coin, I'll say the answer is three. Another puzzle song. The blessed RNG, thank you. The RNG that was promised. Be back and finish spots, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, no I, I, I gotta really uh, uh, shout out Jeff Keeley though, because um, he's basically single-handedly uh, uh, maintaining the 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 void that uh, the death of E3 is leaving behind in its wake, um, with his his E3 Coliseum thing in the summer, um, and now with the Game Awards uh, uh, continuing. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> I've been out of cough all day, and then as soon as I start stream, I'm fine. Um, but it, it's like it's like he's finding a place for all these um, awards and stuff. But more important, not, not more, not not. <coughs> Hold on. It's not that he's finding a place for all the awards. He's finding a place for all the announcements, for the for the industry hype that E3 used to provide, and now no longer. Um, yeah, he does a show at Gamescom and stuff as well. Um, you know, and, and it's not that I appreciate him giving a space for these big announcements to be made, because in the age of the internet, you don't need an event. You can just be like, we have our own thing we're doing. Um, what I appreciate is in the same vein as the E3 press conferences of days of yore, uh, he's giving us gamers an opportunity to gather around and all get mad at the same thing together. Um, or to laugh at the cringe that inevitably occurs. And so, in that part, I think he's really keeping the spirit of E3 alive. More so than the announcements, more so than the pomp and circumstance and the event and the, the lead-up to the hype. But he's giving us all an evening where we can gather together and point and laugh. And I think that's really important for our culture. So I do appreciate what he's, what he's doing for us. So... Thank you. And mostly just be mad about stuff. Um, we're here from the Tell Sea of Stars of Pikmin 4. Fuck, remind me I don't care about triple A's. Yeah. I'm legit, like... <clears throat> I was streaming during the pre-show, because I was like, yeah, whatever, pre-show. They're they're going to disrespectfully give away a bunch of awards, right? And they're like, no, no, no. Uh, uh, Golden Idol sequel something. Um, a new game from the dev of Inscription and, and the Hex and Pony Island, like... A bunch of indie dev announcements were in the... So now I'm like, okay, next year I need to watch the pre-show and then check out of the main show. Because most of what they show is going to be a wall of the most tropey sci-fi schlock I've ever seen in my life with not a shred of gameplay. And very rarely you'll have something like Big Walk, which is House House, the Untitled Goose Game devs, just making the weirdest fucking thing. I I'm like, yes, that looks great. And the, the internet's response to be like, this looks weird. And I'm like, that's one of the coolest games of the show they revealed last night. Go watch nice. the trailer for Big Walk and get back at me because it looks nuts. It looks stupid. 
Um, so yeah. Yeah, you have you have Sean Murray up on stage promising everything, and everyone's like, we can't do this again. We can't do this again. So anyway, uh, it was fine. Um Yeah, Silk Song really let's go! I can't believe they just snuck it in right there at the end when everyone was tuning out. It's cool. Just to fuck with me. I hope so. God, I hope so. Anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically all I got. Um, I'm sure there's more specific things I can talk about, but it's fine. It's fine. All that you really need to know is, um, let me go back to the, um, the thread that we made for it. There are some good pins in that thread. Um, yeah, this is good. Hold on. This is good. Hollywood Celebrity, I'm gonna waste five minutes on unfunny bits before another ad plays. Oh, you're sweet. Literally any game dev. If I could just have more than 20 seconds to talk about the game. Hello, human resources! Um, that was pretty good. Solemn had a, um, a bingo card going throughout the whole event. And this did get checked off several times. Insane game dev trip. But the one that really broke me in particular was, um, Solemn said, all right, fine, Jeff, you win this one. And marked off a woman is on stage. But I also want to call out that this was 5.24 p.m. And the show starts at 5. So it did take about 20 minutes for a woman to be on the main stage. There was a woman on the side stage, sure, like doing the pre-show and stuff. But it did take about 20 minutes for a single woman to show up on the main stage. Which is, you know, better than none. All right, Jeff. That's a new PB, probably. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was, we had fun. We had a good time. Uh, um, uh, 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 but, but, anyway, that's fine. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's play a video game, shall we? Keep able to catch your live stream and catch the VODs? Welcome! Howdy doody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, <coughs> yeah. Uh, let me, uh, 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 get caught up on things so we can play this video game. Um, give me that. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Can I share a cat? You can share exactly one or two cats, and no more than that. Um. Ba 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 da ba 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 ba. Devs get less than a minute. Oh, they get less than like thirty seconds. They have Anthony Mackie pissing about with the audience for five minutes or yeah, or have um, um, like at least it's such a low bar, but at least Anthony Mackie and um, uh, uh Simu Liu. Uh, both were like, I'm in the game, I'm about to show you. So it's like, you know, you can talk about the trend of, like, I don't think that Hollywood celebrities should be taking the roles of traditional voice actors and, like, people that have been cutting their chops in the industry doing good work for a long time. Um, but at least there's, like, a relevant point there. And then uh, Timothy Chalamet, who, to his credit, didn't go off script. He was there, he was there, he did the job and didn't make it about himself. But... It, he had a YouTube channel where he talked about 360 controllers, I guess. Like, sure, but, like, there wasn't anyone from the industry who could have presented Game of the Year, the final award of the night. You had to give it to Wonka to give out the award? Like, it just... It, it's... it's it, This is good, though. This is healing, so thank you. Um, yeah, Matt Mercer was there. They had a couple people from the industry present some awards, which is better than nothing. Some developers, some voice actors, stuff like that, but that's a very good cat. Not a thought in that skull. Uh, thank you. Um, you can share exactly one cat! And then that, no more. No one else, anyone else who asks, you're getting a lifetime ban. Me as presenter one. I would walk up and be like, and the nominees are... <laughs> like, at best, you say a blurb about what the category is and what it represents. And the achievement and the hard work and dedication, you know? But you, you don't need a whole song and dance routine that just eats into the time the actual nominees may have. Um, so, yeah, this is very good as well. That's not a thought in there either. Um, perma ban from Peacock Theater? I mean, it's probably warranted, right? I did see a picture someone took from the event, um, showing the line of security guards between the main stage and the audience, which is not unearned at this point. Um, so yeah, they didn't have any interruptions, which is probably the first Jeff Keighley thing to not have someone interrupt it in a year. So that's good. <clears throat> I don't know. Try it, W. Try. See what happens. So let's show awards and do all the announcements of the finale. Give equal time to both. I legit would. I, as I said, almost 100% of my complaints. Not all of them. 
most of my complaints would go away if they just split it up. Look at that. You're getting, you're getting bopped. You're getting bopped. Both want to show bats. That's fine, but I gotta play a game. Um, so ba 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 ba. Uh 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 da 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 da. Yeah da 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 da. In between streams. Um, um, there were subs and resubs by Hacker Boy, B Malger five twelve, Chappy nine, Kale the Dragon for their fifty eighth month, and Mystery, and also Makasu dropped hundred bits when I was setting up and said, "Do you remember?" The 8th of December. All the music they made for the first trial for the prologue. Yeah, it was really good. Well, throw that away. Because they never show up again. They made new remixes and new songs that are used during these parts of the game. No clue why they did this, but gotta love the dedication. That's kind of a bummer, but it's also kind of hype. Because the music's been really good so far. But yeah, they made a bunch of, like, remixes of Ace Attorney music and stuff. So, hmm. Help time out still count against users on Twitch's back end. <laughs> Listen, that's on you. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah, I'm excited to go to Fantasy Court. I don't I can try to I'll do a recap in a minute. Um Plant Sorcerer, thanks for 19 months. Well, it's Joe thanks for eleven. There's jam on this key. Collateral TL thanks for twenty-eight months. Clem. I don't understand. Someone said Clem's like a Warframe thing. I was like, okay. I guess I, I kept the stream full screen for the most part, but Twitch chat just loves the spam. It's like either spam the, the meme of the moment or spam Resident Sleeper, and there's no in between. <laughs> there's absolutely no in between with Twitch chat. Um, during like a major event. Clem. Clem just makes me think of uh, uh, Telltale's Walking Dead, and then I get sad. So that's cool. They had two women on stage at one point. Were they talking about a man? Did the Game Awards pass the Bechtel test? Uh, <laughs> Joe Sketchy, thanks for 53 months. Objections and puzzles and professes. Oh my. Jukes Artbox, thanks for 27 months. Main Correct, thanks for five gifted subs. To Arc Synthesizer, IRL Tim, Estes Soup, Miyamoto, and It Isn't Dana. Welcome, thank you. Meme character and Warframe creator of the meme died this year. Oh. Yeah, okay, I didn't get that context of it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, the Twilight Princess sleeve tattoo was pretty rad. And the claw rings. They were they were they were they were jamming. The game dev drip was on point. Uh both psycho. Can't describe no idea what's going on the TGA. Every now and then I'd be like, let me get out of full screen. Because I had the, the stream on one screen and Discord on the other. And every now and then I'd be like, let me close full screen. Nope, going back to full screen. It's bad. I know. The so it, apparently it's the Larian uh uh lead uh, or head of the studio who's wearing the suit of armor for Baldur's Gate 3. And Baldur's Gate 3 kept winning awards, but they were on the side stage being speed ran, so they didn't get to go on stage to give a speech or accept the award. So it kept being like, I want to see a guy in a suit of armor walk up on stage. And eventually they won. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, again, it, uh, th this is what we lose when you speed run awards on the side stage. You got you to gotta give people their time. Can't come to why giving awards to hard workers in the game industry? That's the point. <laughs> That's the main takeaway. Is that I don't know. The whole point is I think award shows have some merit. They're almost inherently flawed. Especially like the Oscars are kind of the biggest example of a successful award show. And it's extremely messy. Uh, there's a lot of things I dislike. I haven't watched the Oscars in like 15 years. Um, the, but kind of like one of the few net positive things for the Oscars is it does genuinely shine a spotlight on films that otherwise don't have the marketing budget or resources to really uh, 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 gain that widespread attention. Um, especially in the dire state of the modern movie theater going experience where it's all just like the same handful of known IPs. And um, there are still creative smaller films being made, but they just get absolutely buried under the avalanche of eight theaters showing the new Marvel movie or whatever. Um, so uh, it, it's a problem, but uh, 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 you, you do get a chance to talk about these other things other than, hey, does anyone else know that, you know, this new game came out that, you know, sold 100 million copies? Uh, and so I appreciate that they have these because to maybe people like us, uh, when they're like best independent game and they're like Dave the Diver and we're like, that's not independent. That was made by Nexon. Not only are most people not going to care about that distinction, most people have not heard of any of the nominees. Like, 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 we are very deep in the weeds at this point. So for any of those games, whether or not they're independent, to get 
that time on the main stage for a larger audience is a good thing, I would argue. The problem is the way that the show is structured is bad. Um, so, yeah. When's the Buried Friends Award show? Uh, keep an eye on Gam's channel, because he's cooking something. We got ads to watch. Hey, you all got phones, right? Check out the new Hoyoverse G gotcha game. I did. There was a very fun part of the Game Awards where Jeff Keighley was almost mauled to death by a Zenogre during an ad for Monster Hunter Now. It just did, like, a weird overlay thing where it was bounding towards the viewer, and it looked like it was coming from behind him. And that was pretty good. Watch you gotcha slot. It's good. Um, ASDF, thanks for 26 months. Therapist, Alan Wake sweep isn't real. It can't hurt you. TGA. Alan Wake, rock opera. No idea what that was about. It was rad, though. A lot of the music performances, I'm like, I don't care. Unless I literally recognize the song, it just all sounds the same to me. It's like generic orchestral music for a lot of the big games. Um... Uh, and, uh, that was different, which is good. So, this one. Yeah, I just gotta separate them. They just gotta separate them. <clears throat> just do the video game holiday spectacular, and then do a five-minute award show. Combine them, it just, it doesn't work for me. Um, Triple Wing 6 for 100 bits. Kylox like 6 for 23 months. 23 months to wrap 2023. There's poetry in there somewhere. What better way to celebrate than read Scribble on hand? Bread? Yeah, br bread. Bread. The yeah, guy saw Ace, Ace Attorney was about... Lawyers? It's about bakers. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm blanking on his name, but yeah, the, the the flute flute guy, right? It was great. Every time I cut back to him, he had a larger, more elaborate flute. It's about say Gex. Oh my god, new Gex? When? Smash Mix for 10 bits. Uh, a lot of upset Pizza Tower fans. Yeah, no, that's a mess, but... Again, there's a lot of people who are like, what the hell is Pizza Tower? And they maybe learned about it last night. Is that reason for the show to exist? Mm, maybe. Uh, and also, thanks for 100 bits. I'm glad I'm not more invested in the Game Awards. That's kind of just the takeaway. Yeah, it's really maybe best for all of our mental health to not watch it. And then just look at a listicle of the, the announcements and awards. Because watching it in real time is a harrowing experience. Dredge the Daver. I'm so mad they didn't name it something silly like that, and it's just called, like, Dave the Diver Dredge. You could call it Dredge the Diver or, or Dave the Dredger or, like, anything, like, brands, am I right? Am I right? <clears throat> Ace Bakers for five years. I'm still not sure. I haven't even gotten to the recap yet. I'm still not even sure if they're actually, if they have been in some timey-wimey sense in this world for five years living as bakers. Or if the storyteller just wrote, you've been here five years, and they've been here for five seconds, but they think they've been here five years. I'm trying to... Because to me, the logical, narratively cohesive way to write it is to be like, oh, they got sucked into the book world, and then the storyteller said, oh, they've been bakers for five years, and now no one asks questions about it or whatever. But they haven't been here that long. But the shoot Takumi of it all would be, no, they've actually been here not having changed their attire, working as bakers for five years. So I'm torn about which one I think is more likely. I'm sure we'll find out. Oh, actually, maybe we never find out and they never acknowledge it. Maybe the entire game, maybe they're just lookalikes from Labyrinthia that just happen to look identical to Nick and Maya. Maybe that's also it. Maybe it's not them. MS7 stuff in Modern Wild? Yeah. I'm just really bummed that uh, they went with another Monster Hunter game with the acronym MHW. Someone in Discord said MHWI and MHWO. And I'm like, that's just like wee, wee woo. Monhon wee, monhon woo. Um, it is cute though, because it's it's effectively the start of generation six for Monster Hunter. They dropped the numbers after four, um, but the, the logo for a while, it's kind of like a little droopy six at the bottom of its intricate background logo. It's kind of cute. W.I. is Iceborne! Shit! Ah, I'm sure we'll figure out a way to talk about it. But... MHW was always the shorthand for world. This all sounds wild. Yeah, I'll try to get you caught up in a sec. Uh, but it's... I don't know what's... I was very sleep deprived last time. So my memory is especially hazy for stream. It has six wyvern heads in it. Let's go. We're gonna fight, um... What's the, the mythological... Creature? It's in like Okami and stuff. That's got a million heads. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Not Tiamat. Orochi. Orochi's what I'm thinking of. Not Hydra. Yeah, Orochi. They're like Japanese mythology one. Yeah, maybe that they're going to have some variant of that. 
I'm just I'm just hoping because uh, you're riding around on this little like bird palamute thing. I'm like, what if there's like a bird theming to a lot? Because there's a bunch of dog stuff in Monhun Rise. I'm like, what if there's a bunch of bird stuff in Wilds? And then that means they showed a Rathalos in the trailer and it just looked like, like, looked, looked like a Rathalos. What if we get a Rathalos Rathian variant that's covered in feathers? What if that's where they go with some of this? And they, what if they take bird up to the next level and we get like feathery winged uh, uh, wyverns? Because there are, yeah, like Kurapeko's been in it or uh, Ma Ma Macau, I think. Wasn't it Macau? Um, there's been a number of like bird monsters and monster hunter but like yeah like they could they could really do some wild shit i always thought beach 10 is more like bat like than bird like if i'm thinking wait am i which am i thinking of there was the fire umbrella bird and then there was the guy with the monkey well it's like monkey bat thing what about my cow the kuliaku is a different one anyway it's fine i just am excited because uh uh i really enjoyed monster hunter world and I didn't finish Iceborne, but I liked what I played of it, but I was ultimately left feeling a little bit disappointed because a lot of what really grabbed me about Monster Hunter when I first got into it was how vivid and weird the world was. And world went deliberately for a, it's still, you're jumping around in a jungle being chased by dinosaurs. It's still silly, but in contrast, it felt a lot more subtle. The color palette, the saturation, the types of armor and weapons, in general, just didn't have as much silly stuff as the other Monster Hunters. And I also found the map designs not my favorite. Uh, it was great to not have the segmented world like the previous ones, obviously. That was a huge step in the right direction. But the first map in particular, when you're up in the treetops and you have all those vines and trees, I was just like, I played that for dozens of hours and I never learned where I was. I was constantly having to look at the map. Um, so it was like, uh, I had mixed feelings about it. And then I played Rise and I was like, holy shit, yes! Rise's movement, uh, the, 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 the pacing of the game is obviously a lot more arcadey and small and, and quicker, which a lot of diehard fans aren't as much into, but for my money, I was like, I adore the, the pace and silliness of Rise. It's so goofy. Um, there's goofy stuff in World, like you have the Wigglers and the big Wiggler hat and stuff like that. Um, but in general, it, 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 there were so many weapon variants that are like, here's the bone set and we stuck a feather onto it. Like, that, it, yeah, it, it's, it's just not quite the same for me. Um, that's so much of what I enjoy about Monster Hunter is that grind of seeing all the fun, new, exciting armor and weapons every time you kill a new monster and stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, but granted, we haven't seen any of that from Wilds, but just the five second trailer, I'm like, you're riding around on a giant bird through fields of monsters. Yeah, obviously it visually evokes more world than Rise, but it's giving me a little bit of hope that it's sort of bridging that gap between what people love about world and what I love about Rise. Um, so we'll see. I, obviously, there's a lot more to be seen. It's still two years away, so we have a long wait, but I'm excited. Joe Cat's videos, they're great videos. It's a good game. Um, what about a gritty, hard-hitting take on Monster Hunter, though? Yeah, no. What about what, Mila Jovovich? Is she in there? I should put her in the game. Hope they have more goofy than Gunlance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to be able to, to, you know, ride the Gunlance like a rocket across the map which you can do in Rise. I don't remember if that's in World. I didn't play too much of Gunlance. Actually, I played more Gunlance in World than in Rise. Uh, no, I mean, I'm fine with 2025. Give them time to cook. Time for a new weapon type. It's been a long time. I think uh, Insect Glaive is the last new weapon type. That'd be cool. I definitely would not be down. I like to ride monsters. That's what we're talking about. Correct. Good. Yeah, for him. Glaive and Swax, right. I always forget that Charge Blade was new to that gen. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Switch to X was earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New weapon truck. I would love that. Um, ba, 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 ba. Retro Boy 128, the game, Dev, thanks for 100 bits. It's even more Layton versus Phoenix Wright. It is. And Smash Bros. 100 bits. You finished Born of Bread. Nice. Like the game's sense of humor? Recommend. Some bug fixes in QOL are coming at physical release. Nice. Glad you enjoyed it. And thanks for the extra bits. Um, Gone's going on and on about chickens. You know, I'm mentioning Pizza Tower, which has more the chicken in it. Missed opportunity. Uh, Roy, thanks for uh, the hammy. Keeping up the tradition of birthday hammies and going back to Vodland because I'm not caught up yet. Happy birthday, Roy. Hope you're having a good birthday. Hope you have a good birthday weekend. Thank you again. Um, 
Before I forget, uh, Abu Bakar Salim name dropping Golden Sun was amazing. A pretty deep dig considering Golden Sun has been relevant in years. That thing is legit. And I, that was like one of the few times they had someone on stage just kind of like talking about themselves where I was like, this actually feels really sweet and genuine. I was still like, okay, this is very sweet and genuine, but also you're getting more time than the game devs get to accept their awards. And I still feel uh, uh, bled about that. But then the game showed off, which I forget the name of, looked solid. I'm definitely interested in it. Golden Sun, my beloved. Yeah, I never played Golden Sun, but I know a lot of people love that game. It's Kojima still- I know, but it's like... It's like, it- 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 I- I- I'm gonna- I'm gonna keep it very- I'm just gonna say exactly one thing. Kojima is put on a pedestal by the industry and specifically by Jeff Keighley. Some of it is perhaps warranted, but not to the extent that it is. And the first time it wasn't the first game awards but it was after the debacle with konami and mgs5 and a bunch of public shit coming out with this beef between konami and kojima and he started his own studio and then he got to show up at the game awards because he wasn't allowed to go there the year mgs5 came out i don't remember the exact details but it was like really messy so then the year after that when kojima got to have a moment in the spotlight and jeff was like kojima's in the house and was like yes it wasn't just we love kojima it was also what happened to him sucked unequivocally no matter how you feel about him or his games the way that konami handled everything was abysmal and so it was this moment of celebration of like we respect this man and his craft and we're glad that he's here now and he's not trapped under this uh, really strange relationship with this publisher um, to go we're giving him like 15 minutes in the spotlight to show off a trailer that basically says nothing Kojima's made some of my favorite game shows of all time usually they're like not just in engine but like give you a sense of what the game is that just felt like a tech demo that's just like it's gonna be spooky I'm like okay sure um and then he walks out of a door, talks for a long time, and then Jordan Peele walks out of a door, talks for a long time. It just, the pacing of it, the presentation of it, was a fucking mess. It went on for way, way too long and said nothing. <laughs> just, it, it was, it was, it's not like, here's a trailer for Death Stranding that makes no fucking sense, but it's, you're like, what? I have like theory crafting. I can try to figure out what did that mean? Was that gameplay? Is that gonna tell us what the kind of game is? The Death Stranding trailers are bonkers. This trailer was nothing. It was just like, I, 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 it was like one of the worst Kojima shows I could think of in terms of making me excited to learn more. It just made me go, okay, it's gonna use Xbox's cloud services, which we already knew. That was already said ahead of time that he was making a game with Xbox and gonna take advantage of their cloud service stuff. So we didn't learn anything. We learned a logo and a name. Thank you. Did this need that much time? I, I like I'm the target audience for this too. That's what it's not even like, oh man, I hate when they're showing things that I don't care about. It's like, this is directed at me. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like this sucks. So I don't know. I don't know. Ah. Anyway, I like the logo. Yeah, we've seen a lot of logos. Uh Maj, thanks for 19 months. Zenominus, thanks for 16 months. Three bees in the trench go, thanks for 47. Nectarine, thanks for six. Jeff, we're going to be chosen for Nobel Peace Prize for taking the war out of the game awards. We did it. Banjo, thanks for soup. Garbage Nirvana, thanks for soup. Karen Payne's the man holding the pen over the book, and it's Alan Wake. Sunset, thanks for soup. I miss Gonzo every day. Every day. Beam Marie, thanks for 300 bits. Guy, can't watch. Gotta catch up on VODs. Have fun. Bar and chat. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the VODs. Thank you for the bits. Too many no gameplay shows for game show. Yes. And, and granted, there were a fair amount that were in engine, but we're just, here's our cinematic trailer. And an unfortunate number of those were generic sci-fi worlds that all blurred together into a wall of noise. Um, there were a couple trailers that were, here's a bunch of cinematic non-gameplay, and then they cut to something that actually looked in-engine gameplay. And I'm like, that's better than nothing. Obviously, the, my favorite show is the ones that are just like, here's pure nothing but in-engine telling you what kind of game it is. But it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Tom. Boy, do we have a show for you. I don't know what happened in, like, 2020 that made everyone go, let's make sci-fi. But I guess that's what happened. So, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one looked rad. I, I definitely looked interested. It was interesting, that one. I want to see more about it. Um, GTA 6, all in engine. Yep. Rockstar has a solid history of in engine stuff. Argento Nazi, thanks for Doki. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, there was that one Starfield trailer where it ended with the, like text being like, our, our congratulations to all the winners and nominees. <laughs> and I was like, uh, in the Discord, we were like, I bet they were cutting that trailer thinking they were going to get nominated for Game of the Year and then had to maybe tweak the wording of that a bit because <laughs> they were up for one award and they didn't get it. It's like, it was a stacked year regardless, but it's kind of nuts. Super appealing. Yeah, it looks different. Sad Todd field. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, uh, game awards. More like who needs awards. Uh, Aquas, thanks for soup. Petition to call the new Monhan Bird Mounts Palakeets so we learn their real name. I did tweet about it because I was struggling to think of a name. And, um, I don't uh, see if I can find them real quick. Um, but there was, uh, uh, but, oh, I also, I'm glad I opened up Twitter because there's a thing I wanted to share real quick. Um, uh, 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 someone said Palbatross, which I thought, that was really good. Um, and yeah, and someone else said Palakeet. Um, but yeah, I did want to share, there was some art that, um, uh, uh, Smash Tunes made of this game. Inspired by, from, from, or at least just from watching the stream. Um, and I did, I'm glad I rem half reminded myself because I wanted to yell about this! They're solving the bread puzzle together. Is Twitter like X? Yeah, it's like a spinoff. Um, hi, Smash Tunes. Nice. This is so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's very good. Thank you. Uh, Arjun, the Nazi, thanks for sticking bits. Was watching the VODs, just had to check if you were live, and sure enough, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Phoenix is me. Yeah, holding bread and sweating. What do I do? What do I do? Anyway, go, go, go like that tweet. Um, let's play a video game. So, um, uh, Phoenix went to London and defended uh, a girl who was accused of bopping another girl in the head. Turns out someone else bopped her on the head and she's innocent, but she's maybe brainwashed or something. They go inside the book and then become bakers for five years. Leighton and Luke are approached by the girl and she's like, my friend car accident got into a car accident. We're being chased by witches, please help. Luke opens the door to a witch who grabs her and spirits her away. They give chase, wind up inside the bookland Labyrinthia. They show up in Labyrinthia, the guards are like, are you not from here? Even though we don't have a concept of not from here because here is everywhere. And they're like, um, no. And they're like, that's pretty sus. And then they run away. They learn that there's some sort of big commotion going on in town. Um, and it turns out it's the storyteller. So there's a guy called the storyteller who's presumably the creator of Labyrinthia. I don't know. He's the one who writes down, here's what happens. And every so often he shows up in town in this big procession, writes a bunch of shit, and then they throw the pages out into town. Everyone goes, oh, yippee. This is what's going to happen because we live in a deterministic society. Uh, and the the note that he uh, tossed out said there, there's two people who are going to get attacked by witches. And everyone looks at Luke and Leighton, they're like, you're two people. And they're like, well, no, we're standing with a third person. And the third person walks away. So they're going to get got by witches. Um, and then then they're like, okay, we need to retrace the steps of um, of, of, of Carmine Accidente, our, uh, Leighton's previous student, because he, learned, he dug too deep. So what did he dig into that got him in trouble? Let's go to the library. There's an archive that stores everything the storyteller's ever written. And it's this big old building, and there's a book that the librarian's like, you're not allowed in there. And Layton's like, I solved your puzzle. She's like, okay, right this way, sir. You're very smart and handsome, too. What's under the hat? So he reads the book, and it's about witches and magic and stuff, but there's also notes in it that lead them to solve a puzzle to find a hidden chamber underneath the archives that has some ancient ruins and talks about the, the queen of the witches, who I don't remember her real name because someone said Bazinga. It starts with a B, and now I can only think of her as Bazinga. But uh, she... Uh, like, burnt down the town or something. Bazella, thank you. Bazella, the Lady Bazella is, like, the leader of the witches, presumably the one we saw on the bridge who has the big eye, but we don't know. Um, and, uh, she burnt down the town in some great kind of calamity thing, 
and uh, I forget what more details we learned of that. Uh, and then Espella's like, oh, you can stay with me. Uh, I, I live above the Bakers. And you show up at the Bakers, and that's where uh, Phoenix and Maya have been for five years, question mark, as Bakers, and seemingly have no memory of who they used to be or not. I don't know. Maybe they just like baking. Um, and then the guards bust in, and they go, hey, you... You're coming with us, mister. And we assume it's Layton because he's been running around town being sus all day. But th no, they're grabbing Phoenix and throwing him into a dungeon. Uh, and so that's where we've left things off. That Phoenix is in some sort of a dungeon, presumably going to trial. I don't know if either he's guilty of something and has to defend himself or if they just need an attorney and thought that bakers know about law. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't remember if we know that, Ran. I think they they just were like, hey, Phoenix, we're taking you in. And then they just grabbed him. They did say, they said who we're defending. They said a spell requested Phoenix. I totally forgot about that. Well, thank you. That was very, okay, that's when I was exhausted. Okay, so I slipped my mind. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay. So a spell is in trouble? Weren't we just with, no, she disappeared. We were with her at the archives, and then we were like, oh, time to head back to town. And she was like, I gotta run my errand for the baker lady. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she might have burned two people to death. But who knows? You know, maybe it was a trick of the light. I mean, you say immolated, uh, maybe uh, just a uh, potato potato. Like, uh, they they just, uh, uh, she, 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 she spit some hot fire at them, metaphorically speaking. And they're fine. So, accidents happen. That's why her name is Fire Accidenti. So, they were all, they were on fire when I got there, officer. Uh, so, I don't really know what's, uh, hydrate, I will hydrate. Um, so, it was self-defense. They were like, yeah, give us the milk, lady. Uh, uh so, you know. Immolate? No, Im immolate. As in not molated, immolate, I M M O L A T E, like an immolate. That's what happens when you set milk on fire. Um, so yeah, uh, carmine accidente is the best thing. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, so so last we saw Phoenix, he was in some sort of like dungeon type environment, and he has to defend Espella but he maybe doesn't remember he's a lawyer, which has happened before in Phoenix Wright. So honestly, he should get deja vu from this, if anything. Yeah, he is dumb. Well, not just dumb. He's also had amnesia before. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, fire extinguisher, ye oldie fire extinguisher. -y. Just smack him like the pipe. He'll get him. Um. But yeah, uh, 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 smash thanks for the 10 bits. Getting to the bakery, having born a bread come out the same day. Oh yeah. We love a coincidence. In the eye of the beholder, thanks for 34 months. Thanks for the prime. Librarian was straight up. You can't just come here and say you want to, you want, no, you know. You want, no? I just like that she was like, you know, only our highest inquisitors are allowed access here. And they have to pass a series of arduous tests. And Phoenix just leans over and goes, I solved your crossword puzzle. And she's like, Right this way, sir. I love this universe. Even this mashup made up universe inside the stupid universe. So, let's get back to it. I hit the button and it just cut back to logos. Uh, we did have a clock puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm very excited to learn all the myriad ways that fantasy court differs from normal London court or Japanifornia court. I'm sure it's completely different. And it'll be fascinating to learn about. Okay, go. Flash time. Oh. Oh, we're just gonna. This is fine. This will be a nice refresher. This one's Kingdom Hearts for Straits. Oh, for sure. We don't want no fuss and we don't want to hurt you, all right? Yeah, we just want your money, that's all. And you'll give it to us, won't you, without any fuss?
Your Honor, my client is innocent. Um. Is that immolate or outmolate? Chapter 2, The Fire Witch. Um, Your Honor, I, I just want to say that's quite leading for the jury to call my client the Fire Witch. There's no jury. Rats! What is this place? The room is lit, but it's still somehow dark, and the atmosphere feels... Heavy. Nick! What are we doing in a place like this? How should I know? We're just a couple of bakers, but I don't think they brought us here to make bread. Yikes, is a mirror is that guard staring daggers at us right now. Mr. Right, Maya! Oh. Ah, Spella! What exactly is going on? I'm sorry. I was the one who sent for you both. You sent for us? I'm being put on trial. Wait, what? What happened? I don't know. I just don't understand what's going on. I didn't do anything wrong. Unless you count burning two cut purses to death in a field with fire that I created. I couldn't possibly murder anyone. Murder? Why is Maya not wearing her, her baker's... Is, is the word smock? Is that like the kind of drapey apron thing? It was self-defense fire. Frock? My don't I not remember it's literally apron? But wasn't it like isn't apron just over the front? Didn't they have like a thing that was like all over? A drapron. <laughs> I beg you, Mr. Wright, please, I need your help. Just one more time. Uh you need my help. What what am I supposed to do? A spell I'm just a baker. The only thing I know about law is how not to get on the wrong side of it. Hmm. Hmm. Wait. Hold on a sec. Espella? What'd you just say? You said you needed Nick's help just one more time. One more time. We celebrate. You no, know we're gonna do it tonight. I'm not quite sure myself, but when the knights came and took me, a vision suddenly appeared in my mind. It was Mr. Wright. He was pointing. Even though he didn't know what he was talking about, he was pointing and yelling. He was fighting for me, defending me, that brave blue figure. It was clear as day. I was fighting for you? Was I handling a sourdough or a brioche at the time? Hmm. Does the text above the door say one up? It absolutely does. No way, that's impossible. I mean, it's like I already said. I'm just a baker. I've had enough. I've had a hard enough time rolling dough, let alone defending someone in court. I thought the same thing too at first, but I don't think that's quite true. You and Maya, at some time, somewhere, you helped me. You fought for me as a defender. A defender? What's wrong, Nick? Um. This? This is- this is wrong? This is what's wrong. Bazinga. Is that a spoiler for what she looks like? <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. What's wrong, Nick? I wish I knew, Maya. But... Hearing Espella mention a defender... No, I don't know who that is. Okay. <laughs> what, what is that, Kelly? Hearing Espella mention a defender... I can't help but feel something inside of me just burning at the mention of it. Accused, Defender! It is time. Head forth, you two. Head forth? Um, where are we going exactly? That's fan art? Oh. Bazinga Accidente. <laughs> uh, to the courtroom in which today's trial will be taking place. The Chamber of Fire. Chamber of Fire? Make haste, if you are but a moment late, a guilty verdict will be delivered immediately. What? No way! Mr. Wright, I... I'm truly sorry, Mr. Wright. I know this is all so sudden. It's... a lost cause, isn't it? I don't even know anything about the case or anything about law. Well then, let's head inside, Espella. Huh? 
Look at the floor. I mean, can I choose to leave? I think I think that it automatically goes if it's like the other games. This overwhelming pressure, it feels so familiar. Oh, it's like deja vu. Yeah, the rats, I talked about the rats. Mr. Right! I mentioned them at least. Let's go, Maya. Maybe we'll get a better idea once the trial gets underway. All right, let's do it to it, Nick. I may not give my life for honor. I may not give my life for honor. But I would gladly give for you. I would gladly give for you. And when I hunger for a tree frog, and when you hunger for a tree frog, I'm still in a dream snake eater. Thank you, Tita. Appreciate it. Thanks for the Emmy. That's my slow poke theme for the DS. Anyway. What is this heat? It's like an oven in here. I will now pronounce the verdict. This court finds the accused guilty of being a witch. Uh, no! I'm no! I'm not a witch! That's what a witch would say. Please! Please! I beg you to reconsider! I'm not... Witches are to be cast straight into the hellfire! What? No! So, this is the... the witch's court? Uh... 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 So she's dead. <laughs> Hopefully there's a trap door in there, and it's all a big elaborate ruse. And all the witches are fine. That'd be pretty cool. You know, you, I mean, it, it, wouldn't that be a twist if there was like a a a a, 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 a village where um, the the women conspired to help out the young girls and get them out of um, having to? She's probably dead. How are you feeling, Nick? I'm feeling good. Now that guy knows how to make a pile. Bounce from the sixth. That hasn't happened yet, has it? I had foregore what this felt like up until now. Wait, does he remember being a lawyer? Hmm. Huh? Yeah, it's definitely the butterflies in my stomach. Tension so thick you could slice it with a knife. All these feelings. These are all feelings that I'm definitely familiar with. Anyway, we're here to fight for Espella and get her out of this place. That's right. The court is now in session for the trial of Espella Cantabella. I do like how the fantasy judge looks more like the Japanifornia judge more than the London judge did. Like, he legit, he just put on a hood. Draculogy? <laughs> Defender. Yes, your honor? Yours is a face I've not seen in any past trials. But no matter. Start by stating your name, Defender. Yes, your honor. What's my, my name? name is Phoenix Wright. Okay. Ace Baker. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, this game is pretty good. <laughs> In and out of context, that's just excellent. A baker? I asked him to come, my lord. I want him to represent me. Mm hmm, mm hmm. This court dictates that the accused is free to assign a defender of their choosing, my lord. Oh, he's got a bridge. Here's my bridge. Hands him a loaf of bread. Mm, very well. He's like, that's fine. At any rate, the result of this trial shall not change. What? That aside, I've not yet seen hide nor hair of the Inquisitor assigned to this trial. Oh no, he's gonna be hot. Or she's gonna be hot. Or they're gonna be hot. The Inquisitor's definitely gonna be hot, though. Inquisitor? Oh, right. I should have noticed earlier. No one's there. Should the assigned Inquisitor fail to appear in court, I will have no choice but to dismiss all charges. Let's go! Technicality win! Thank you for the bits! 
I generally said it'd be funny if a trapdoor opened below the witness stand that would immediately send him to jail if someone was found guilty. It took every fiber of my being to not spoil the fact that that's basically what happens in the crossover. You can't out Takumi Takumi. <laughs> Thank you, Aladichi. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh. He is an inquisitor of high caliber, but if he does not come forward soon, this trial will end, and victory will then be declared in favor of this baker. Let's go! Hold it! Uh-oh. Oh, Barnum. Oh no, he's hot. Knights of the court, I have but one question for you both. Are you prepared to cross swords? In what sense, Your Honor? Oh! Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum, I'm indeed prepared to do battle, my lord. Oh, we're gonna die. Oh. Something amiss, Baker? Sorry, Your Honor, I just didn't realize we could have swords here in the courtroom. It is the way of the court knight. A knight must always ensure that he rides with a blade at his side. Now then, state your name, Sir Blue Knight. Huh? My name's Phoenix Wright. I'm a baker. How many times will they make me say it? Baker. <laughs> Took him a sec to process that. Nick, quit with the long face. You look miserable. I am miserable. No need to waste your breath. This trial will be over before you can utter a single objection. He could have said no need to waste your bread. That also would have worked. For the security of all of Labyrinthia, my blade shall rend your defenses swiftly and without mercy. Okay. That's it, Barnum. Put another one out of their misery. Woo! This trial's pointless. Hand down the verdict already. Get him. Put that doughy defender on trial two, I say. Nice. Barnum. Barham my pebbles. Barnum. This will be the yeast of your problems. Thank you, kid. What's well, with all this excitement? You'd hardly think this was for uh, this was a courtroom. The crowd doesn't seem very interested in law, that's for sure. It's like they're all just hoping for a guilty verdict. Inquisitor Barnum, you may begin your opening statement. As you wish, my lord. First, let us begin by recounting the events leading up to the murder. Is that acceptable, Sir Apprentice Baker? Never said I was an apprentice, Baker. As you wish. Oh yeah. The murder occurred this very evening. Justice moves swift, you see. Yesterday, there was heavy rainfall in the area. Eventually, it gave way to sunshine, which came just in time for today's parade. Although a few hours after the parade ended, the rain set in once more. That must have been when Espella and the others were at the Great Archive. It continued to rain until just before the incident, which took place on a small path leading to the market. The accused had been out doing some shopping at the market. She returned home on that very same path. Oh yeah. And on that forest path, two rogues named Robs and Mugs are said to have accosted the accused. That's very, uh, ghost trick character design. One could assume the accused simply acted in self-defense. I see. Robs and mugs. Those two have appeared in court a number of times in the past. Two rogues, huh? So far, it may appear that the accused was more the victim. 
However, the situation soon changed. That's right. The accused Espella Cantabella knowingly and mercilessly murdered her two assailants. Cantabella, isn't that still self-defense, maybe? Mm. That girl, isn't she? A female girl? I always knew she looked sus. They were going to assail her. Not so loud. Applesauce, 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 applesauce. There's that weird excitement again. Oh, yeah. God forbid women do get a, a say. I believe we now fully grasp what happened. It is getting late already. Let us begin the trial. Inquisitor Barnum, you may now begin. I already begin. What are we? As you wish, my lord. The Inquisition will now hear eyewitness testimony regarding the night of the murder. Self-defense via magic. Instant violent execution. Guilty. Eyewitness testimony. It looks like this trial is finally getting underway. Who witnessed this in the wood at night? I can't back down now. I have to fight. But I'm just a simple bread-making baker. Living a simple bread-making life. In my bread-making house. With my bread-making bread -making tools. Ugh. This situation's more twisted than a pretzel. And I'm smack in the middle of it. I'm like a, a bagel. With them in the middle. But I have to do this to save a spella. Okay, let's see if I can untwist this testimony and put this thing to bed. I mean bread. I'm bread, daba, bread, daba, rye. What the f what, huh? Oh, oh, okay, goat lady. Allow me to welcome you all. Now, would each of you please state your name and occupation? Hold it! Wait a minute. What's going on here? As I already explained, Sir Apprentice Baker, this is the eyewitness testimony. Yes, I understand that, but there are four witnesses. Indeed, this many people inside the courtroom could pose a health and safety issue. Your Honor, that's not quite what I meant. I'm glad the judge is also a little bit thick of brain. Witness testimonies are supposed to be done one by one, as in one witness at a time. <laughs> Don't squeeze the goat! <laughs> what are you talking about, child? We'd be here all night if we did that. <coughs> That's right, young man. We have witnessed the very hand of fate reach out to us this evening. Um, could we hurry this along, perhaps? These flowers won't sell themselves as much as my boss wishes they would. They're also not going to sell themselves if you rip out every petal on every flower in the basket. But I'm not a flower seller. What do I know? The path to knighthood is an arduous one, but I remain steadfast in my resolve as I travel down this long road. She sells the petals. Oh. I shall not fall up. I will be victorious. His name is Nightful. Night Nightful. Who cares? Just question them all at once. We already know the girl in the cage did it. Let's get on with it. Yeah, finish this already. I like to go back home and get to bed. No one's forcing you to be here, my guy. Silental Nightful. Witnesses, again, state your names and occupations. I am known as Wordsmith. But what is a name? How doth one describe an occupation? Like the bubbling of a babbling brook. I flow gracefully around the rocks in Debris. That is life. Nary a worry in my mind. Right, so I guess that means he's jobless. My name is Mary. And this darling kid is Snowy. I li- we met her the other day, and I only just now put together Mary Had a Little Lamb. I'm a bit slow on the uptake. Snowing and I often travel to the edge of town to sell delicious fresh milk. Milk like that doesn't happen overnight. I work my hands to the bone, squeezing each drop out, literally. Little goat in this case. Yeah, close enough, you know. What do you mean had? Well, she had a little lamb, now she has a little goat. That sounds pretty frightening. I'm Kira. Kira! 
Oh, shit. Your Honor, we gotta get out of here. We're all in danger. I call Elf the stand. I'm a flower seller. Akira! If you would all be so kind, feel free to purchase one of my beautiful flowers at any time during the trial. There's no way I'll sell them all by morning. Oh, the life of a flower girl is so hard. Heesh, talk about a hard sell. My name is Nigel. I aim to join our town's order of knights. I study day and night, though I'm still but a mere squire. So his name should be Squirtle. Joining the Knights of the Inquisition is my life's ambition. I and I, Nidor, will do whatever necessary to join. He's a Nidaboo, so he's jobless too. Honorable witnesses, I ask that you show this court your best when delivering your testimonies. Kira and Knightly. What's Layton doing right now? Eating some bread, relaxing in bed. Just taking it easy. Now tell us what exactly you all saw on this ill-fated eve. Night will evolve some square squirrel. Squirrel is fun to say. What we saw tonight. Well, look at his thumb animation. Damn. Oh, I just gotta look at that for a minute. Yep. Yep. Let him go. Okay, now it's getting upsetting. Blech. Blech. It's neat though. Twiddles. <laughs> it's just like Ned Fa Ned Flanders thumbs. Twiddling his thumbs. Ah, uh, the delicious scent of mid-evening dinner permeated the air, and a soft light shone faintly in the distance. Muggs grabbed the girl by the arm. It looked like he almost pushed her to the ground. I heard a faint voice cry out. The next moment, those two villainous men burst into flames. There was not a trace of fire to be seen in the area. Without a doubt, magic must have been used. That's the... Magic? Sir Apprentice Baker... You may now begin your interrogation. I have but one piece of advice. I suggest you pay it heed. Do not waste the court's time by grilling these witnesses over irrelevant nonsense, Sir Apprentice Baker. You're right, Nick. They sure love calling you an apprentice baker, huh? I'll be honest with you, Maya. I have no idea how I'm feeling right now, but I know it's all up to me as her defender. Spell as fate is in my hands. I have to believe in her, and I need to start believing in myself. I can do this. I believe a spell is innocent, and I'll fight until the end to prove it. Yeah, that's the spirit. We can do this thing, Nick. We're gonna, uh, gonna believe. Ooh, ooh. That was rad. What we saw tonight. The delicious scent of mid-evening dinner permeated the air, and a soft light shone faintly in the distance. I'm assuming I can press this without being punished. Hold it! Yeah, we have shields. What time would that be exactly? Dinner time. When else would the scent of dinner be in the air if not dinner time? Do you see? Not so much. The sun had already set by that time. That should be adequate. <coughs> the sun had already set. So, you clearly witnessed what happened tonight, is that correct? I've been dubbed a witness, thus I must clearly have witnessed something, do you see? Hold it! In that case, how much light was there in the immediate area at that time? Enough to see the nose on my face, but not enough to see the trees ahead, do you see? No, 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 that doesn't add up. If the area was completely dark, then you couldn't possibly have witnessed anything. Do you see? Oh! N nevertheless, something caught my eye. It was a most ominous sight. Ominous is what that sight was. Okay, I get it. It was ominous. Objection. Poor form, Sir Apprentice Baker. Do I have a court record? I apparently do. Should probably look at that, huh? I hate to disappoint you, but there was in fact light in the area. Huh? Take a look at this. This is a drawing of the crime scene based on the witness's accounts as penned by the court illustrator. That's a lot of words for take a look at this photograph. The court illustrator? Never heard of that before. Look carefully. It, this shows what the scene looked like at the time of the murder. Oh, oh. 
Hmm, an illustration of the highest quality as always. This murder happened tonight. Now then, we've established that by the time the murder occurred, the sun had already set. Zoom. And so naturally, the defendant was carrying a firelit lantern, as we can see. A lantern? Eureka, indeed! Yes, that is what I was saying earlier. There was a lantern. A lantern, I say. Oh, please. You totally forgot. To be honest, I did not imagine it would be necessary to present this, but... Lord, here is the lantern in question. This is what was responsible for the light illuminating the area. Very well. The court accepts this into evidence. The lantern is supposed to holding the glass is broken. It's covered in mud. Speaking of which, Inquisitor Barnum, in this drawing... The accused seems to be holding a milk bucket of sorts. What became of this? I'm very thirsty. That... Is a strange case indeed, my lord. That bucket seemingly disappeared from the murder scene. The bucket did it! The milk bucket disappeared, you say? There has been talk of wolves living in the nearby forest. It is thought they often make off with the items they find on the ground. Mr. Bucket. Great. Wolves that steal your stuff. Remind me you never set foot in that forest. This is great, Nick. We've got new evidence now. Ah, yeah. I guess you're right. You know, Nick, you really don't look like just some normal run-of-the-mill baker. Been a baker for five years. I'd say you're more like a somewhat articulate run-of-the-mill baker. I think you might even have a knack for being a defender. Knack? Knack mention. There's a clear contradiction somewhere in that testimony, and I'm gonna find it. Muggs grabbed the girl by the arm. Look, like he almost pushed her to the ground. <coughs> um. Okay, hold on. Case outline. Use of witchcraft to burn two male victims alive. Plants were sold the glass is broken and it's covered in mud. Oh my god, everyone's here. Spell can't spell. Accused of witchcraft to come out with a fire spell. Killed magic. So they were actually killed. Okay, I didn't know if this game was going to have full-blown murders in it. They're bloodless murders, and I, I imagine that might continue, but no, they're still putting murder in here. Okay. Until it turns out that they were just hiding. Um... Passionate about becoming a knight, currently unemployed. Owner of a farm near the market, seems to have a fixation with goat's milk. When his flower girl thinks only about leaving the flowers ASAP. Leave the court ASAP to sell her flowers. When this mysterious old guy totally detached from reality. I really like their character portraits. They are very good. Um... Okay. It's so moider than, isn't it? Hold it! Did both Layton and Ace murder, though? Yes, but Layton games typically have... Bloodless murders. It's a lot of, like, cartoon violence. And it's also very, very rare that anyone's even, like, seriously injured in Layton. Whereas Ace Attorney's like, there is a person who was killed, and there's, like, blood on them. Like, that's a degree more violence than the Layton games have. The parachutes to play every time. Yeah. Burning to death without blood. Yeah, burning to death is a bloodless death in this kind of cartoon. So, yeah. Yeah, they murder and they're fine. Don't worry about them. <laughs> Too soon. Muggs is one of the two rogues, is that correct? That's right. That man, he grabbed the girl's arm and pulled out a knife. Uh, you, you good, ma'am? She had, like, me eyes for a second there. Oh, is something wrong? Phoenix proved ghosts exist. Or was it Rob's that grabbed the girl and had the knife? Huh? ESRB puts a lot of stick on blood for some reason. It's not just ESRB. I think about it in terms of, like, the collaboration between Capcom and Level 5. That with the Layton games, Level 5 is like, yeah, we don't have a bunch of stab wounds and dead bodies in our games. And Ace Attorney does. So... I wouldn't be surprised if all the... I, first of all, the fact that we have an actual death that we're arguing over is kind of neat. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if all the murders in the game are bloodless in some degree. Uh, oh dear! Let's see. Muggs was the short one, Rob's was the no. I think it was the other way around. Well, it doesn't really matter which was which now, does it? 
that's all well and good, but I was kind of just hoping to testify about the lantern. They're both rated 16 in the EU. Mm -hmm. Die from bloodless from shot in the head. Well, yeah, it's still not like a realistic crime drama, but... Honorable witnesses, please continue with your testimonies. So we got nothing out of her. Great. I heard a faint voice crowd the next moment the two villainous men burst into flames. Um, what's the L? Hold it! She can't be a witch because they're actually a vampire. Oh. Then we'll stake her through the heart before we drop her in the fire. Whose cry did you hear? It was the accused. It was Estella's voice, of course. And did you get a good look at Miss Cantabella's face? Yes. I mean, she was carrying that huge lantern, after all. You're only sure because all the other witnesses just finished saying they only saw they saw her with the lantern. So that's not helpful. Not a trace of fire to be seen in the area without a doubt magic must have been used. Hold it! I think we're meowing for the, the, the little goat. Is it a bit premature to assume it was magic? What an absurd statement. Say what? Think about it. The knaves were engulfed in flames in the blink of an eye. The blink of an eye. There was not a single trace of any other fire source to be found in the area. Not a trace. Did I hear that right? I think I found a contradiction in this testimony. Let's do this thing, Nick. Hurry up and present something. Hit him with some decisive evidence. <coughs> <coughs> I'm okay. As well as carrying a lantern at the time of the murder. That fact definitely contradicts a certain witness's testimony. That's right. But even if we know what the contradiction is, where do we go from there? I mean, what can we do? We're just a couple of bakers after all. No, Maya. I think you're wrong. Huh? I don't know why, but I feel like I know how to do this. If you're going to speak up in court, there's only one thing that people will listen to, and that's evidence. I think we're an ace attorney TM. Try and present evidence whenever there's contradiction in one of those testimonies. Yeah. Okay, Nick, let's give those testimonies another listen. Let's do it. Over here. No fire to be seen. What about lantern? Objection! Did he just. Did he forget what he was objecting to? But what is the matter, Defender? Did yelling objection and pointing in court give him his memory back? What is this feeling? I just felt the urge to shout out right from the bottom of my lungs while pointing my finger. <laughs> Objection! I can't help but feel that's a word I've used quite a bit in the past. That's it! I remember now! I remember everything! <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. Amnesia solved. No, you really can't. I... go. Is Maya just gonna, like, secondhand amnesiant? How does she get her memory back? Or did she not lose her memory the whole time and thought it was funny he was a baker for five years? The Legal League of Attorneys Exchange. Espella's Trial. That strange book. This feeling. I feel like I can take on the world! <laughs> she has to get arrested? If she's thrown in a, in a dungeon, she'd be like, Hey, this seems familiar. Oh! Witness! What's with the sudden pointing? I am assumed to be a member of the Honorable Knights of the Inquisition. I accept your challenge. Have at you. Yeah, the wiggle on his blade to show that it's not a real sword is very good. You say that no fire was present at the scene of the crime. Meaning the defendant must have used magic. Unfortunately for you, that is not the case. What do you mean, Sir Apprentice Baker? What I mean is that the defendant was, in fact, carrying a lantern. A lantern containing fire. 
which she made via magic. Throw her in the dungeon's fire. These two rogues were actually burned by the flame that was inside that lantern. That is the only logical explanation. Real swords did wiggle like that. Yeah, but in this... this, this don't I'm um, actually this video game. You know what game we're playing, right? My, what a startling conclusion you've come to, Sir Apprentice Baker. What do you mean? Nice. Papyrus Priest Skelly? Not that much. <laughs> the only logical explanation? Do you agree with this statement, honorable witnesses? It is presumptuous for a man that knows nothing to claim that he knows something about which he really knows nothing. I don't know why I keep changing his accent. Huh? Besides, how could one teeny tiny flame be strong enough to set them both ablaze like that? Uh. There were two of them. How could that flame engulf them so fast? Ah. Uh. Furthermore, if they did burn as you claim they did, do you mean to suggest that they were soaked in oil or something? Uh. Well, Sir Blue Knight, it would seem you have bitten off more than you can chew. I definitely didn't see that coming. He does seem like, yeah. What do you say, my lord? What say you? Do you have any thoughts on the proceedings thus far? I want to play on the merry-go-round. Given the testimonies we have heard, it, this court has come to its conclusion. "'Twas a truly gruesome and merciless act, an act for which only one thing could be held responsible. The nefarious crime of magic. I really like the art in this game. That looks great. Especially for the 3DS. It is great. Those are some high quality textures. There's like a... Kind of sounds like an acoustic guitar or something. It's like doo -doo 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 -doo, doing the little arpeggios. It sounds really good. Is Beard Studio 3D? I mean, it looks like a 3D model with some good texture work on it. Yeah. Our stuff with the three things. Yeah, it looks great. It's just like a, like obviously it's stylized, but good. Wait just a second. Is there something you've forgotten to mention, Defender? I just think that they knew the judge was only going to be seen from this one angle, so they could really focus on getting it to look just right. Whereas like Phoenix is a full 3D model, so some angles doesn't look as good as others. So yeah. not exactly, Your Honor. It's just that I mean, you just said magic. That can't be right, can it? Millions of polygons. What are you suggesting, Sir Apprentice Baker? Witches use magic, which in turn brings about disasters such as the way of this world, is it not? Uh, well, yeah, that may seem to be the case. No way is that actually possible. This court finds Espella Cantabella, the accused, charged with being a witch. Espella, a witch? A witch's existence in this world is a crime in itself. The ability to use and control magic is a criminal offense indeed. As such, any witch found practicing magic will be sentenced to death by fire. No, you're wrong! I'm not a witch! Sir Apprentice Baker, I do not envy your current predicament. He's gonna be even madder when he remembers ghosts are real. Yeah, can, can Mia's ghost powers reach into a fictional book world? Hand down your guilty verdict against this witch immediately. Objection. But there's no evidence to prove that any magic was really used. Put a sock in it, bread boy. We all heard her cast the spell. Huh? That's right. Snowy and I heard it. Isn't that right, Precious? We heard that incantation quite clearly. Uh. Life has many doors, bread boy. That frightening voice! There's no mistaking it! It was the Spella's voice! Ah. These ears do not lie. I clearly heard an incantation most sinister. Ignaze it went! Incantation? Ignaze? It's no good. I just can't wrap my head around this topsy-turvy otherworldly court. Well then, it would seem the defense has no further objections. It appears so. The court finds the use of magic at the time of the murder to be an undeniable fact. 
Furthermore, the honorable witnesses have stated that they each heard an incantation being recited. The court finds no reason to delay its verdict. Holy shit, with the gavel. There's a sound, too. The court finds no reason to delay its verdict any longer. Nick, we have to do something. I know, but what exactly can we say? Here in this world, our sense of logic is completely useless. You call the other games logic? Whoa, whoa. This court is ready to hand down its verdict for the case of Espella Cantabella. I was wondering why they lagged so bad. It's because it was a whole big shot. Hold it. <laughs> Holy shit, Your Luke Honor, is pissed. I request that the court hold its verdict a moment longer. Okay. What? What is the meaning of this intrusion? I have something I believe will be of use to the defense. A weapon of sorts. Th that's... The Grand Grimoire. All of this world's magic is contained within its pages. Without it, this trial cannot reach a satisfactory conclusion. This is bonkers as hell. Nice. You have to be puzzled on gentleman style. Latent adventure. The Grand Grimoire. <laughs> Holy shit. <coughs> We meet again, Mr. Wright. Well now, it seems things are already afoot here. Although the real contest begins now. Are you fully prepared? Where'd Maya go? So are you here to help us? Of course! The professor always helps people in trouble. It is the duty of every gentleman. Right, professor? P professor? There is a saying that I find quite useful in situations such as this. There is a time for words and a time for action. R right. You've been working as a baker in this town up until now, have you not? I must say I'm a little mystified. I'd have expected you to be more familiar with this world and its system of magic. Uh, yeah, how can I put this? I guess that's not quite the full story. Is that so? <laughs> Luke also... Hmm. Just watching the professor and copying his motion good <coughs> I kind of had an epiphany just now I remember all sorts of things like how I'm not actually a baker and well how magic can't really exist it's not like ghosts which are real what what did you no ghosts aren't real but time travel is what then it would seem I was correct about you mr. Wright you are not in fact a citizen of this town is that correct? Right, at least it seems that way. Time ghosts! However, for now, we have no option but to accept this world and its rules as a reality. You're right, this is before Unwound Future, because Luke leaves for America at the end of Unwound Future. Maybe he becomes an apprentice to Leighton and Co., right? Uh, right and Co. law offices. I wanna... Uh, good. Ghost trick music? Without first understanding those rules, I'm afraid you will not be able to save Miss Cantabella. But uh, things like magic only exist in fairy tales and make-believe. I'm afraid, Mr. Wright, it would seem magic does in fact exist in this world. Such a truth cannot be denied. Whew. Indeed, that is why the Grand Grimoire is a weapon well suited for this witch trial. At the moment, you are tantamount to a knight without a sword. I feel more like an attorney without a chance, actually. More like an attorney without a badge. Right then, Mr. Wright, I'll explain how the Grand Grimoire works. Have a turn, look at the touch screen. There you see the Grand Grimoire button. What are you, who is this strange sassy child? Touching the Grand Grimoire button will open up the Grand Grimoire. Blayton just kicks him underneath the podium. You will be able to present spells from the Grand Grimoire much the same way you would present evidence. 
This book will surely be a most important asset for us in this trial. Why didn't the judge immediately go, How do you know so much about spells? You're also a witch. Throw him into the fire. I don't see this going well for us. Oh, that reminds me. I've gone ahead and bookmarked the spell Ignatius for you. The spell Ignatius has been bookmarked in the Grand Grimoire. Ignatius. That's the magic spell all the witnesses said they heard, right? Warlocks aren't real. Only women deserve to burn. <laughs> Nick, you should take a look at that spell. All I have to do is touch the Grand Grimoire button, huh? The defender has been given more than enough time. It would seem this trial has reached its end. Is that understood, Sir Apprentice Baker? This case is quite straightforward with very little room for doubt. Hey, hold on, what was... Oh, fancy. Um, summons a circle of flame within a one meter radius of the cast that requires an incantation and scepter to cast. I didn't see no scepter in the drawing. Where's the drawing? I don't actually have the drawing to reference. Well, I don't think she had a scepter. The witness's testimony coupled with the illustration of the time of the murder makes it quite clear that what must have occurred. Maybe milk is a scepter. This murder was the result of magic. And furthermore, the caster of said magic was none other than the accused. That, Sir Apprentice Baker, is the truth. Best you go back to baking, for I believe your days in the courtroom have crumbled. You best start believing in baker stories, Mr. Wright. You're in one. Is everything okay, Mr. Wright? Jesus Christ, it's startling every time it cuts over to them. Yes! I, it would seem that photographs do not exist in this world. Photos don't exist. I guess that makes sense. Ye olde time period and all. How is the judge not accusing them of witchcraft? The sketch drawn by the court illustrator. Therein lies your final chance, Mr. Wright. My final chance? Maya's hiding under the bench with a loaf of bread. Just gnawing on it like a rat. I understand the witnesses have already finished their testimony, however... If you could perhaps find a clear contradiction within this illustration. There's another contradiction. In that case, there's still hope that I can turn this around. Mr. Roy, you have to hurry. Look, the judge. Oh, no. Oh, look out, Mr. Wright, behind you. Look out. Oh, no. Over there. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Luke, please. He's dancing. He looks ready to deliver his verdict any second now. This is it. This is my last chance. What should I do? I'll probably give up. It's no good. I pretty much ran out of evidence. I just can't see another contradiction anywhere. Just a moment, Mr. Wright. Huh? Isn't the Grand Grimoire a new piece of evidence? Ah, now that you mention it. Mr. Wright, I explained you out of you the Grand Grimoire, remember? That's right, he did. Okay, I can't give up just yet. Hold it! One second, Your Honor. The defense requests permission to have another look at the court illustration. I think there might be a contradiction in there. Objection. There's 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 a lady at a piano off to the side and she's like, oh, Dubba 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 dubba. You are already out of time. All testimony and evidence given thus far has been proven to be accurate. Objection. I wouldn't be so sure, Inquisitor Barnum. Hm. There's just one thing you've overlooked. A piece of evidence within this book. The Grand Grimoire. Absurd. I overlooked something? You are the defender here. You should have examined the tome earlier. You're right. I should have. But unfortunately, I was nothing but a simple baker until just now. What? Interesting. <laughs> He's not even upset. He's like, okay, that makes sense. Yo, si nice. 69, nice. Hope you don't go to these things with a dollar as well. Thank you. You've certainly begun to show your true colors, Sir Blue Knight. 
dabba dee dabba do. Let us see what type of knight you truly are. Have at you. I am now a complex baker. I create bread hypercubes. The defender will now show us this supposed contradiction. The court illustration and the grand grimoire. Somewhere there's a contradiction between those two and I've got to find it. This is my last chance. Defender, use this magnifying glass to locate the point of relevance. Then reveal to the court the location of this contradiction. Um. Uh, ooh. Mm. Oh no. Um. The bottle. Uh, uh, so what? what is... Summons a circle of flame within a one meter radius of the cast that requires an incantation and scepter to cast. Well, I mean, it looks like they're standing within a meter of her. I mean, it's different than the cutscene where they're standing together. But maybe that's fine. Requires incantation and scepter cast. I mean, I don't see a scepter, but how do I point where there's no scepter? If that's indeed just the milk? Is it is it the is it the milk bucket? I'm gonna try the milk bucket. Got it! The contradiction is bucket. The bu bucket? The hand of the accused ship is wielding a milk bucket. Yes, but that milk bucket was said to have vanished from the crime scene. It's quite possible that there's an important reason behind its disappearance. Inquisitor Barnum, what are your thoughts on this? It is quite mysterious indeed, my lord. However, the Inquis Inquisition believes it bears no relation to this case. Forest wolves simply came and stole the bucket. Nothing more. Let us not dwell on the milk bucket for the time being, Mr. Wright. Rather, we should first consider any information within the Grand Grimoire that might lead us to a contradiction. A new piece of evidence makes another look at it. What am I missing? My apologies. Give me one more chance. Granted. <laughs> You're running out of chances, Defender. No, but yes. They will now show us the supposed contradiction. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Summons a circle of flame. I mean, there's a big puddle on her at her feet, but maybe that doesn't matter. Requires incantation and scepter to cast. Um, I don't. If it's a circle of flame, a meter big, I don't see why the puddle there would make a difference. Um. Uh, it's weird. She's. I guess it's just around her wrist. Um. Fuck it, puddle. Got it. The contradiction is right here. Nope. Hmm. Is this correct? No. Engage overthinking mode. Rad. Have you greatly overestimated your Thank you. Huh? You clearly are more baker than defender. It's best you head back to the bakery. Get me to a bakery, sir. Looks my train of thought was a little off. I would say your train of thought was very off, Mr. Wright. Thanks. My apologies, Runner. Give me one more chance. No. What do you think Barnum's pawn name is? I mean, it just makes me think of P.T. Barnum. And that he's maybe more showman than actual knight or something, but... I don't know. Um... What else am I overthinking? Summon a circle flame. Cars incantation. I mean, there's no, there's no uh, 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 ruler in the scene for me to dictate the size. Burn them. Burn them. Uh, is it the other hand? Got it. The contradiction is right here. The hand of the accused is holding a lantern. What is your point? According to this tome, using the spell Ignaze requires the use of the witch's scepter, as well as an incantation. Isn't that right? Why didn't the other hand work? Correct. For witches to use magic, they must be in possession of a witch's scepter, also known as Italia Magica. 
If that's the case, then there's one thing that doesn't add up. Take another look at Miss Cantabella's hands. Tell me, do you see the witch's scepter in either of her hands? You can't cast spells with your left hand. That's your bucket hand. There we go. Let's see you point that sword at me now. You did it, Mr. Roy. But wasn't that contradiction just a little too obvious? You may be right, Luke. Eh? It would certainly appear that the good Inquisitor is taking this particular oversight rather too well. That is correct, Sir Apprentice Baker. But you should not underestimate me. This is perhaps your first time seeing this item, is it not? But right here is the very scepter you mentioned. Where were you keeping that? One of the witnesses found it tossed in the shrubbery on the side of the path. A shrubbery? Ah, yes, indeed, that was I. I located it. My feet found themselves ensnared in the blasted thing. It sent me flying through the air. Somehow, I'm not surprised to hear you fell, Gramps. Hmm. This scepter does seem to carry a most sinister air. Indeed, my lord. However, this scepter will only work while in the hands of a witch, with the incantation being said aloud. Aw, that's too bad. I wanted to try lighting some stuff on fire. Please don't look at me when you say that. You see, there are two magic gems set in this scepter. Magic gems looks like a red gem and a white gem. These gems each contain a particular magic spell. By simply looking at these magic gems... Hey, Emily! Welcome, Raiders. Hi. We are playing Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright, Layton, Clock Crossover. We're in Witch Court? We're trying to prove that our client isn't a witch who burnt two dudes to death. And we're arguing about her magic scepter in a court of law. Don't, I don't know what's happening. Hope you had a good stream, welcome. By looking at these gems, one can easily determine which spell can be used. Nick, look at this page. Well, well, yeah, fire gem. Which court? This court. Thanks for the hydrate. Is that the red magic gem? Indeed! The red gem you see here is the spell Ignaze. And if you look carefully, you should notice that this scepter also has one more spell that can be used. Appreciate it, Emily. Thank you. Thanks for the raid. One more spell. That must be the white gem. What's the white gem gonna cast? Frost? Or maybe mayonnaise? Here's the spell for the white magic gem, Professor. Demir, vanishing spell. Causes anything the caster touches to vanish from sight. Simply chant a mare or mare, a mare, a mirror to make it reappear. Did she disappear her milk bucket? Why did she do that? The mare has been bookmarked in the Grand Grimoire. Amore. Causes anything the caster touches to vanish from sight. Yeah. Hmm. I see you managed to work it out in the, that crusty head of yours. Just because I'm a baker doesn't mean my brain's crusty. It can't be. The reason the witch's scepter couldn't be seen is because the magic spell Demera had made it disappear. Wait. She made the staff disappear? Then who made it reappear? Another witch? Is he dabbing? Oh. That's right. In other words... The accused conjured a cowardly spell to camouflage her own use of magic. I thought, yeah, I thought I was going to shot put <laughs> the scepter straight into our chest. No! No way! He's hot and smart and emotionally manipulative. Oh, hold me! Order, order, order. Inquisitor Barnum, please submit the scepter into evidence. Objection. Hold on, please. Is there a problem, Sir Baker? Not an apprentice Baker anymore. We're gaining his respect. I understand this is a witch's scepter. However, 
Whether or not the scepter was in Miss Cantabelle's possession has not yet been proven. Obliterated by facts and logic. Thank you, Phoenix. What are you talking about, Sir Apprentice Baker? Isn't it obvious? I'm talking about fingerprints. This is gonna go great. Supposing Miss Cantabella did in fact handle this witch's scepter, then her fingerprints should still be on it. What's with the silence? You said fingerprints? Inquisitor Barnum, tell me, just what is this baker blabbering about? I haven't the slightest clue, my lord. It is the baker's first time in court, after all. Huh? Mm -mm. <laughs> Why is Layton like, now? I'm afraid it's no use, Mr. Wright. I forgot that Layton and Luke were standing next to him. In this world, it would seem the concept of fingerprinting does not yet exist. What? I can't believe it. As I have said already, best you head back to the bakery, lest you continue to serve this court more of your half-baked ideas. Yeah, that's pretty good. They're about as half-baked as your terrible puns, Barnum. Forensic science does not exist here. Instead, this is a world in which witches and magic are accepted as fact. Truly fascinating. Not, not the time, Leighton. Our client is dangling over a pit of fire. Save it for later. Talia Magic got it to the magic, to the magic record. Magic scepter needed to cast spells. The available spells depend on the magic gems. Holy shit. What the heck? They had a hell of a wind up in that animation. There are just way too many things I don't know about this world. Mr. Wright, I believe you may be able to take these things you don't know and use them to your advantage. Huh? The Inquisition believes there's no room for debate on this matter. The accused clearly attempted to conceal her magic. Better luck next time, Sir Apprentice Baker. Mayhap your next loaf will not leave such a bitter taste in our mouths. Now then, my lord, I believe it is time. I ask that you render your unwavering verdict. Render tree. Objection. When did he get over there? Pardon the interruption. May I have a word, Inquisitor Barnum? What's that? Who might you be? Is he gonna make him do a puzzle in court? My name is Herschel Layton. I am a friend of the accused. Inquisitor Barnum. Please allow me to confirm what you believe happened on the night of the crime. Images that go insanely hard. You claim the witch's scepter was made to disappear through the use of magic. Is that correct? Indeed, throw the magic spell Demir. If possible, would you mind providing proof of this particular claim? What? You claim the scepter was not seen. Indeed, that is one possibility. However, a wise man must always consider every possibility. Hmm. It is so jarring to cut from Layton to the judge. What say you, Inquisitor Barnum? Can the Inquisition fulfill the request presented by the gentleman with the unusual hat? Apparently it's fine for anyone in court to just walk up and be like, I want things to be different. The Inquisition cannot honor this request for proof. Have at ye! I will fight you to the death. If you are asserting that the accused is not a witch, then the burden of proof lies at the feet of the defender. Come on! It's the prosec Inquisition's job to prove that a crime was committed. Luke is having a great time, as I thought. Indeed, it would appear the accepted method of thinking in this world differs greatly from our own. How regrettable, Sir Apprentice Baker. And you, Sir Dark Hat. You're gonna have to workshop that. You can do better than that. Luke is intolerant! Oh, God. Luke is intolerant! Inquisitor Barnum, sir, should you require it, I stand ready to lend my testimony. As soon as people are guilty until proven innocent, too. Yeah. 
they're guilty to proven innocent, but I mean, that rarely works out in the Phoenix games. Usually it's on the defense to prove everything. And prosecution should be like, here's what happened. See you later. Would anyone actually care? Would anyone care to purchase any pre-testimony flowers? I've got a lovely array of bewitching lilies. <laughs> Snowy and I will not be dismissed so easily. We came here to expose the identity of this witch. Isn't that right, Precious? A witch's scepter, you say? Yes, yes, I know of such a scepter. Allow me to elucidate the matter. What do you think, Inquisitor Barnum? Your witnesses appear to have something to say on the subject. Hey, Fertilino. Here to inform that finding Barnum's theme is hard as hell because he uses the OG name because... What do you mean he uses the OG name? Like it uses the name from the Ace Attorney games, even though it's a remake? Thank you for the bits. That's a lot of bits. You said the lilies were bewitching, Your Honor. Motion to burn the lilies! Burn her at the stake! It's not just enough to prove the defendant is also to prove one of the witnesses guilty. <laughs> you have to get someone arrested. Very well. Oh, it's it's in the Japanese name. Oh, gotcha. I see. Well. I mean, you, I'm sure there's an OST rip somewhere and you can just go through the whole thing, but... Yeah, it'll take a while. Uh, most honorable witnesses, I grant your request to testify once more. Tell the courts all you know regarding this Talia Magica. Wish there was. Oh. Sucks. Well, we got somehow managed to keep the trail go going. I owe you one, Sir Dark Hat. Tall, dark, and handsome. Please, Mr. Wright, Mr. Layton will suffice for the time being. Wasn't that an internal monologue? You can read my thoughts. There's an OST on YouTube. Nice. About the Talia Magic. When I saw her, the witch was carrying a large milk bucket in one hand and a lantern in the other. Don't worry about it. The girl had the lantern hanging from her wrist. Her hand was contorted in a strange way. I got a good look at her hand, and it looked for certain that she was gripping something. The witch was holding a scepter in her right hand. She did not drop it once before she was apprehended. Hmm. I see. The accused hand was contorted in a strange way. Yeah, we're gonna bake it. I'm gonna bake it up like you wouldn't believe. Thank you. Have a good one. The accused hand was contorted. I do believe this is quite an important piece of testimony. I saw it. I most certainly saw it. She was holding an invisible scepter. We saw it too. It was the girl up there, without a doubt. I as well. These old eyes don't see as well as they once did, but I witnessed the hazy, blurry form of the accused quite clearly. Don't tell the court you're blind. My eyesight is as sharp as the edge of my trusty blade. Hmm. A toy sword. How fascinating. Although I wonder if he understands the implications of that analogy on his vision. Yes, sir, Baker. You may proceed with your interrogation. Mr. Layton's given me another chance. I can't let it go to waste. About the Talia Magica. Sharpest blade in the toy box. When I saw her, the witch was carrying a large milk bucket in one hand and a lantern in the other. France Bucket! Hold it! The large lantern you mentioned is this one, correct? There is no mistaking it, that fiendishly fiendish form, with its case darker than the darkest of nights. That was the lantern. Penalties are back, but nothing has been penalized. Penalizable? Is that a word? Penable? It's just a normal lantern. France, but with like a fancy E at the end. Instead of the normal E it already has. What is this? It would seem the glass is shattered. And there seems to be a sizable amount of mud stuck to it. On closer inspection, it appears mud has stuck to the broken sections of glass. Most intriguing. If she was holding a scepter in her hand and the lantern was around her wrist, then how did the lantern wind up on the ground if she held it the whole time? Wordsmith, riddle me piss. Hi, Katie. Thanks for saying peanable. Happy Apex getting cool DLC day. Well, I don't know when it's out. It was announced at the Game Awards. I did immediately think of Katie and Viz. I was like, Apex mentioned. Most intriguing. 
That's why I get the big bucks. I get paid for being in court? So then when exactly did the Lancer get put all over it? By the way, witness, you also saw a milk bucket, is that right? Indeed, I would bet my sword on it. And yet, that milk bucket mysteriously vanished from the scene of the crime. Hmm. Curious. How many times must I say it, Sir Prentice Baker? The problem is the Black Lantern. Mm hmm. Big bugs! <laughs> well done in court today! Here's your box of bugs. Dear Lantern, I'm interested in what's a strange way. Hold it! Good art, somebody across the wall. Oh, hell yeah. She had the lantern hanging from her wrist. Are you sure? <laughs> of course we're sure. If that wasn't it, then how else would the girl manage to hold her invisible scepter? Ma'am, please just testify about what you actually saw. We just said that's what we saw. Isn't that right, Snowy? Indeed, a handle as wide as this could be easily hung from the accused's small wrist. That's what we were telling you. Isn't that right, Mumsel Snowball? Lobo has different stock sounds. It's no good. They're all bent on assuming a spell was holding that scepter. Wrist shaming. It seems it may be best not to pursue this particular line of questioning any further. No, oh, that's just super. I like that Leighton seems to know more about reading the room in a court of law than Phoenix. I understand the context is that they're fish out of water, but it's still he's like, hmm, this is the... It's like... Phoenix is a quite successful lawyer at this point. Um, yeah, go look at her hand. Look like there's grim something. Hold bucket. Hold it. Trials are just big puzzles. That's true. What exactly was the defendant gripping? When I speak, everyone able to read the room. I mean, fair. Yeah, that's right. It was something uh, cane-like. What was it called? A witch's scepter? It was definitely that. Objection. He's a gentleman. Miss Kira, you didn't actually see it, did you? Witness? This cane-like object, was it perhaps roughly this size? Oh, why, yes, it was exactly that size. It's no good. They're all bent on assuming a spell is holding that scepter. Uh, super. The witch was holding a scepter. She did not drop it once. No. Hold it! I'm glad that the speech detection is still in the video game. Let me get this straight. There was no way for you to see this invisible scepter, was there? Well, now that's common sense, boy. One cannot see what is not there to be seen. In that case, there was also no way you could tell whether or not she might be, might have dropped the scepter. Well, these old eyes of mine honed in on her hand like a hawk until they couldn't see straight. The young lady was most certainly holding an invisible scepter in her right hand, while at the same time also carrying the lantern. Twiddles. Or do you perhaps possess some piece of evidence to suggest that she dropped the scepter? There hasn't been any evidence so far to suggest the spell was holding the scepter. Evidence suggesting the scepter was dropped? Now that is an interesting idea. Huh? If a spell did not have the scepter in her hand, it would have been impossible for her to have used any magic. Well, yeah, that's true. I don't suppose. Might there be a piece of evidence that could prove this? Something to prove that Espella was not holding the scepter at the time of the murder. In other words, evidence to show that even if Espella had been holding the scepter, she would have dropped it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Right. The truth about what happened in that brief instant will likely decide Espella's fate. I have to do everything I can to find a contradiction in these testimonies. Guess I should take another look at the court record. I'm just, I'm deliberately ignoring chat. As is my right as a streamer. Hold it! Wait, I meant, I meant to, yeah, jeez. I meant to present evidence, not press. Meh. Meh. I don't know why they got rid of, in the Ace Attorney games where you can hold B to skip through text again. I don't know why that's not in this. Well, that's my, that's my goal, Chuck, is that chat should be able to just amuse themselves. When, when the streamer's not providing anything. At least chat can entertain themselves, right? Uh, the lantern! The guys, it's probably covered in mud! Uh, uh, d d object sh this! 
Lantern, France. Objection! There is a high probability that Miss Cantabella was not holding the scepter. The uncle on my bungle. Stop. But if, for the sake of argument, she had been holding it, she would undoubtedly have dropped it at the time of the incident. What do you mean? It might be an option in settings. Oh, I'll take a look. Thanks. What I mean, in Inquisitor Bottom, is that this lantern proves the defendant was not holding the scepter. Objection! What foolishness are you spouting, Sir Prentice Baker? The lantern's handle was around the accused's wrist. Objection! Meaning she could have held the scepter? I'm afraid that's not the problem here, Inquisitor Barnum. The problem is with the broken glass and the mud plastered all over it. What? The rain had ended just as the murder was taking place. That would make the path fairly muddy, wouldn't you agree? When the thieves grabbed Miss Cantabella by the arm, the lantern must have fallen into the mud. The lantern fell into the mud. Why, of course. That makes sense, doesn't it, my little snowy willy? Well, what do you say, Inquisitor Barnum? If she was holding the scepter at that time... That would mean that when she dropped the lantern, the scepter would have fallen along with it. Here. What's going on? Inquisitor Barnum seems speechless. That defender's managed to turn the thing around, even though he's just some baker. Mommy, mommy, why did you bring me to court in a fantasy world? Pay the witch's accomplices no heed. They're just trying to trick you. That just... What is this? Hold it! One moment, please. Everyone, please listen. Didn't we all just stand here and explain to the court what we clearly saw? It's a lantern, so what? What's so special about it? Explain it to me so I can understand. So that you can understand? I mean, it's pretty obvious just by looking at it. Mr. Wright. Why is it, Mr. Layton? There is something about this witness. Hmm? Miss Kira, was it? Tell me, Miss Kira. How good is your eyesight exactly? Huh? As you just heard Mr. Wright explain, the answer to your query is quite obvious. At a glance. Yeah, he keeps teleporting from side to side. Tell me, are you able to see the mud present on this lantern? Mud? What mud? What are you talking about? Oh, ho, ho! your honor. Did you hear that just now? I slammed my hand on the table. Was that cool? Whoa. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, what does it mean exactly? It means that Miss Kira's poor eyesight is the reason she cannot see the mud present on this lantern. Again? Any point? In other words, the validity of Miss Kira's testimony is questionable at best. Order, order in the court. What is the meaning of this? Smack that all on the floor. Smack that. Give me some. Hmm. Hmm. Thought her eyes were very dilated. Thought it was just neat design. Think it would be important. Importance, big eyes. What say you in your defense, witness? I highly recommend you give us nothing but the truth. I'm sorry, Inquisitor Barnum. It's true, I need to wear glasses all the time, in fact. You need to wear glasses? Aha, now that you mention it, I did notice something odd about you today. Oh, well, I thought you looked familiar. Gone is the mist that clouded my mind. In its place, clarity. Fair maiden, a, pa a pair of spectacles are as valuable as a shield to a knight. Make haste and procure another pair. Now then, Miss Kira, tell me. At the time of the incident, were you wearing your glasses? No. No, I was not wearing them. The truth is, I lost my glasses a couple days ago. You lost them? So, the glasses were missing during the time of the incident. Mr. Wright, might I recommend that you keep note of this fact? It could prove useful later. 
I did see the pin message. Thank you, Weeb. And thank you, Katie. Uh, got it! Glasses! She lost them a few days before the incident! I want to see Luke wearing those glasses. Am I to believe there's nothing left to prove on this matter? At the time of the murder, the accused did not have a witch's scepter in her possession. Hold it! Wait just a moment! Snowy and I have much more left to say! That's right! My trusty sword of justice shall cut through this witch's treacherous lies. I may have lost my glasses, but I haven't lost my will to testify. But <laughs> just eat a flower? Eureka! I remember now. Old age has a way of sneaking up on me. I'm sure you must understand. Yeah, I understand. I understand you're all completely ridiculous. It would seem we have not yet arrived at a clear-cut verdict. Witness! Is you may once again begin to testify to the court. Tell us about the scepter and how it was used in the detestable display of witchcraft that you all witnessed tonight. What on earth is happening? About the Talia Magica continued. The girl was not holding the scepter in the same hand as the lantern, which means it must have been in her other hand. The bucket hand? The accused is holding a milk bucket in the court illustration. Who's to sh say she wasn't also holding the scepter in that hand? The scepter was hiding in the bucket. It was in the milk. That milk bucket's lighter than it looks. Even Snowy could carry it. So she could easily held the scepter as well. I did not see this milk bucket. Everything felt like an illusion. That's great witness testimony. Thank you, sir. Milk scepter. Maybe, maybe it is actually a, a milk crystal and not the disappearing crystal. The scepter was in her other hand, you say? Indeed, such a proposal is feasible. Sir Baker. Yes, Your Honor. It is the strangest thing. The longer this trial goes on, the more you begin to resemble a legitimate defender. Uh-huh. Well, no matter. Defender, you may begin your interrogation. <laughs> Phoenix has no reply other than, huh? Great. The ghost the holding the scepter with the milk hand. Hold it! But did you actually see that with your own eyes? Alas, Magic's vile embrace hid the scepter from my sight, so I did not see it per se. However, through my years of nightly training, I have learned to see through such cunning trickery. Is that so? For example, this morning I found myself unable to locate the whereabouts of my trusty blade. Its location was a mystery. So I tried my hardest to think and remember where I could have kept it last and before long. Behold, it transpired I was carrying my trusty blade in its scabbard all along. Life is riddled with such trickery. Would you say life is riddled with trickery, Nick? Only for talking about my life, Maya. That's fair. The accused is holding a milk bucket in the court illustration. Who's to say she wasn't holding a scepter in that hand? Milk bucket hand card door. Hold it! I want a poll. Which hand is your milk hand? Left, right, or other? What's other? The court illustration. That's right. Judging by the sketch alone, it does look possible for her to have held the scepter. Where? Where would she be holding the scepter in the milk bucket hand? My other hand. You don't have a third hand? However, if you actually try holding that thing, you'll notice just how thick it is. No way she could have been holding it. Objection! That is nothing more than mere speculation. You cannot say for certain that she was unable to hold it. You say speculation. I say it's a fact. There's just no way a spell could have been holding that thing. As expected, this testimony is filled with nothing but assumptions and conjecture. Mr. Layton. You know, Mr. Wright, there does not appear to be any usable evidence pres present in the court illustration. Yeah, I agree, it does look that way. The milk bucket ended up disappearing from the scene. Could that actually be an important piece of evidence in itself? That milk bucket's lighter than it looks. Even Snowy could carry it. Hold it! Just one second, Miss Mary. 
What is it now? Snowy and I don't have all night, you know. Come on then, out with it. I just have one question regarding your testimony. How exactly did you know that the bucket Miss Cantabella was carrying was light enough for Snowy to carry? Huh? I, I, well... You see, the girl always uses the same bucket whenever she comes to buy milk from us. Naturally, I would have seen that bucket countless times before. You've seen it countless times before. That doesn't answer my question. You specifically said that bucket is lighter than it looks. <laughs> Miss Mary, at some point tonight, you must have held that bucket yourself. 58% of chat said that their other hand is their milk hand. Okay, chat. Uh. Now then, please enlighten us as to exactly when you got your hands on the bucket. I really like, it's like a renaissance painting. Her with her little, little goat there. Uh, anyway, hum. It's true. By that time, Rob's and Mugs had already been burnt to ash. And then, I noticed the milk in that bucket that the girl had been holding in her hand. The milk. Then, when those two went up in a blaze, Snowy and I made a dash for the bucket. Why? As the girl stood there, looking confused, we took the milk from her to make sure it was okay. You witnessed two men be engulfed in flame and you went, Oh no, the milk! Huh? Unbelievable. Witness, you. Ah. Well, it was just so wasteful. The thought of all that disgusting ash falling into such precious milk. That ash is for burning people, Mary! I felt I just had to protect the milk, so I took the bucket back to the farm with me. Madam, do you mean to tell the court that you took evidence from a crime scene back home with you? That explains why we were unable to locate the milk bucket at the scene. Oh my, you're scaring poor Snowy. Here, I brought the bucket with me anyway. See, I didn't even tamper with the milk. I'm sure you didn't. The court shall accept this milk bucket as evidence. And as a tasty, refreshing snack. Bucket of milk added to the court record. Good. Hmm. I mean, it is only from today. It's only half-day-old milk. Looks like that's one more piece of evidence for us. I hate it here. Now, will the gentleman with the impressive beard proceed with his testimony? Other than myself, of course. Upgraded milk topsy report. I don't like the word milk topsy. I did not see this milk bucket. Everything was like an illusion. <coughs> milk bucket. Hold it! You didn't see the bucket? Indeed. Naturally, there was no way of me noticing the witch before the crime occurred. My mind was placid as the most placid of placid lakes. But like the early bird on its morning hunt for the elusive worm, my senses remained vigilant. Updated bucket topsy report? Yeah, bucket topsy is fun to say. You do realize the other witnesses have all testified to having seen Miss Cantabella carrying that bucket, though. And when you have journeyed as far as I have through life, uh, you find all is but an illusion. That is, except for Lord Storyteller, of course. Huh? That's it for the testimony. Still, something's bound to be there. I can't believe Mary took the bucket home with her. Miss Mary must be one of those thieving forest wolves we've been hearing about. Let us hope she doesn't eat like a wolf as well, Luke, for her snowy's sake. That's quite morbid, Professor. I've got this new piece of evidence. Question is, how can I use it? You know, looking at this milk bucket now, it does look sort of different from the sketch, don't you think? It might be a good idea to get a nice good look at the actual milk bucket. Uh... <laughs> 
Um, it looks like a milk bucket. I mean, is it a different bucket of milk? Um, we got a bucket of milk and she's got glasses. Great. The girl's not holding the scepter in the same hand, which means it must have been in her other hand. Did this bring up the court sketch? How full is it? Um, pretty full. You see with your own two eyes. Yeah. Trickery. Good. Good. Yeah, I think the other bucket didn't have those, like, bits of wood on the sides. And maybe the, uh, the handle was rounded. I don't remember exactly. Uh, hi. The court illustration. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's definitely just a string or rope. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not the same bucket at all. Hmm. Hmm. Good thing th that everyone has a photographic memory and the court sketch is infallible. And there's no way they would mistakenly draw a different handle for the milk bucket. Objection. So where do I throw that out? On her line? He said there's nothing wrong with it, right? Just in the middle of a wooden peg or is the rope not being pulled? I mean, it looks like a wooden peg. It doesn't look like a rope to me at all. It's not even affixed to anything on the sides. It's just a bit of... It's just a bit of wood going through it. Right? Yeah. Um... Mate. Go back. Kiss only milk bucket in the corner. She was the only scepter in that hand. What? This bucket? Objection! All of your testimonies have come to the same conclusion. Say peg more. No. The scepter was not in her right hand with the lantern. Therefore, it must have been in her other hand that was holding the bucket. However, that's not it. Not by a long shot. What do you mean? Contrary to what one of the witnesses stated, the milk bucket was in fact at the crime scene. And you'll also notice something about this bucket. Take another look at the court illustration. Something about the bucket seems a bit odd, wouldn't you say? Objection! This illustration was based on eyewitness accounts, so a small discrepancy or two is conceivable. Objection! Actually, Inquisitor Barnum, it's highly likely that this illustration is much less accurate than you think. In fact, there is a blatant contradiction present in this illustration. Admittedly, it does at first look possible that Miss Cantabella was holding the scepter and the bucket at the same time. However, if you look at the real milk bucket, that possibility goes up in smoke. I still don't see how she could be carrying the scepter in that hand. Let's have a look at the real deal. Notice the handle. Yeah, that cannot be. Oh, but it is. This particular milk bucket has two pieces of wood on either side of the handle. If you were to try and hold both the scepter and this bucket, well, let's just say that'd be a challenge. To put it simply, there is no way anyone could hold both the bucket and the scepter at once. It's a rope and rope isn't stiff. I, eh? Like, if you could feasibly say she was balancing it between the handle and the bucket's rim, like laying it across it and holding it in place with the rope. But I don't see how the different bucket wouldn't make that possible either. I just, I don't know. What? That must mean clearly you have the wrong bucket. We never lie when it comes to milk. That is the very bucket I took. Uh-huh. Yeah. Looks like the witnesses are as surprised about this as Barnum. The defendant couldn't have been able to hold the bucket and the scepter at once. Milk lies are a sin, the only sin. We have already established that she was not holding a scepter in her right hand. Therefore, the defense, the defendant, Mrs. Bella Cantabella, was not holding a witch's scepter at any point during the incident. It was her other hand. Order, I said, order! Just what is the meaning of this? 
In all my days as judge of this court, I have never heard such an argument. These are but a paltry set of words, and yet they ring with such remarkable strength. Your Honor, what you just heard was logic. L lo lodge. What is this word, strange man? Logic. Logic, you say? What, what is with these two? They just silenced Inquisitor Barnum with mere words. Such foolishness. This must be some type of witchcraft. Wait, do you think? Could they be witches? Burn them! It would seem that the concept of logic does not exist in this world. Is the is this is this Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright JPEG? Is that is that? Oh God! We're only on chapter two. Oh no! It's gonna get worse. Oh no! Okay. All right. Okay. Vod thumbnail. Yeah, maybe, maybe. God damn. Great. Right, then let's take this chance to knock that case down a peg or two. Just sit there for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm worried if we keep this up, we'll all be joining a spell and a one-way trip to the flames. To the to the what? We came in late. Yeah, she's suspended over a pit of fire. Holy shit, I'm out of here. Objection. It does seem like he's going to go shot put something. Most intriguing. That's not as powerful as your gesture suggested you'd be saying something more impactful, but... A knight allows his sword to speak for him during battle. You have spoken with a sword of words. What? <laughs> words. Normally, I fight with my sword. You have spoken with... Words. Uh-huh. He's confused, but he's got the spirit. He sure do. Thank you, Spots. <laughs> he's a himbo and we love him. I don't know if himbo does that justice. I think Barnum drank from that milk. He definitely did. So be it. I, too, shall wield such a blade. Is he going to write nut on his sword and then point it at me? What what do you mean? What have you been doing this whole you weren't using words up until now? Sir Blue Knight, there appears to be a hole in this logic of yours. Am I saying that right? A hole? According to the earlier testimony, it was believed the accused had the lantern hanging from her wrist by the handle. However, she supposedly dropped it, hence it being covered in mud. That's right. While that may be true, it does not necessarily mean the accused was therefore unable to use magic. Okay. It is merely a question of when she dropped the witch's scepter. Well, what do you mean, Inquisitor Barnum? It is very shrimple, my lord. The accused, while first holding the lantern and the witch's scepter, cast her magic. Then, she dropped both the lantern and the scepter. Ah! The witch's scepter was dropped after the spell was cast. Of course, yes, that must be it. Case closed lower into the fire. What say you, Sir Blue Knight? That is but a taste of the knightly knowledge of the Inquisition. Ah, I find I have a taste for these words and logic of which you speak. Sir Blue Knight. Wow, Sir Barnum cut through that baker's witchery like a hot knife through butter. Anybody else hungry? Exemplary. I expected nothing less from the hand of Barnum. Ooh, to be able to shake that powerful hand someday. Can't get enough of him. That Inquisitor isn't quite what he first appeared. Luke is having a terrible time. Sure seems that way. 
Just a moment ago, it seemed like he'd never even heard of logical debate. Now he's suddenly using it against us. I really wasn't, Quincy. It's quite applicable. This guy's no joke, that's for sure. Huh? Now then! Most honorable witnesses, I ask that you lend us your aid once more. I request that you all testify to the court once more. Tell us, which occurred first? The dropping of the lantern or the casting of the spell? Witnesses, you may begin your testimonies. Tell this court in your own words about the sequence of events which transpired tonight. Barnham. Barnhams. Barnhams. It's when you're on the backside of a barn. Of course, the lantern fell to the ground after the incantation of Ignaze. Sploosh! So it fell in the puddle and not in mud? I mean, it could be a muddy puddle, I suppose. I'm as sure as Snowy is white. I made certain to keep my eyes peeled on that milk bucket, after all. Besides, how can you be sure the lantern fell just because it has a little mud on it? All, all the glass broke, too. These eyes do not lies. I saw the lantern in the accused hand when the incantation was uttered. Mm hmm Figures. Their testimonies are all over the place now. These four testimonies, they're most interesting. The witnesses all saw the same thing, and yet... People's memories are evidently quite fickle. They can never be a truly reliable source. Well then, Professor! With the roof poking and prodding, I bet we can really cause their testimonies to crumble. Of course. We need to exploit their fickle memories to turn this thing around. We've got this, Nick. We'll press them so hard, they won't even remember what they had for breakfast. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. Probably bread. Breadfist. Now, Sir Baker, you may begin your interrogation. Of course, the lantern fell to the ground. Sploosh! Hold it! The lantern fell after the incantation. Are you positive about that? I say I'm positively positive that I am positive. I heard her voice and then sploosh. That sploosh. Was that the sound of the lantern hitting the ground? Mm-hmm. Indeed. But of course, do you see? Uh, but if you look at the lantern, you'll notice that the glass is shattered. You specifically said you heard a sploosh. Shouldn't you have heard the sound of the glass shattering when it hit the ground? The sound of glass shattering? Uh, no, I'm afraid I failed to catch your drift. Uh huh. Mary's having a time. I was present in an area a bit farther away from the crime scene, you see. I have no recollection of hearing such sound. No recollection? Precisely so. I'll have you know I can easily hear a dog barking across town. Do not under underestimate my hearing. I mean, dogs are significantly louder than a lantern being dropped into a puddle from far away. But go off, King. I wasn't. Relax, Grandpa. Granddad. There is nothing of interest in this testimony. Will the witness with the goat please proceed with her testimony? Huh? Uh, uh, right. You mean us. You startled us, didn't he, Snowy? <laughs> What's going on with Mary? I'm as sure as Snowy is white, I made certain to keep my eyes peeled on that milk bucket after all. Hold it! But earlier, you stated Miss Cantabella had the lantern hanging from her wrist. Well, not quite. We didn't say for certain. We only believed it was on her wrist. Believed? Yes, yes, precisely. You know how you sniff milk when you're not quite sure if it's gone bad. And then your nose is assaulted by that foul odor that you weren't expecting? Well, it's a bit like that. Heed my words, madam. Do not make a habit of stealing for your own safety. We said we're sorry. Please, it was all Snowy's fault. How dare you. Now I can't great ace turn. Wish we could. Does Wordsmith have arms? I think he has hands sticking through his beard. Oh, brother. Anyway, we can confidently say that we both saw the milk bucket, right, Precious? 
A literal scapegoat. I may not give my life for honor. I may not give my life for honor. But I would gladly give for you. I would gladly give for you. And when I hunger for a tree frog. And when you hunger for a tree frog. I'm still in a dream snake eater. A Valinara the ever the hammy. Happy birthday, thank you. No, I'm late. Start, I started watching part one VOD. Never got a chance to play this game myself. Loving what I've watched so far. Looking forward to the rest. Thank you. Thank you very much for the birthday wishes. Thank you for the hammy. And I hope you enjoy these VODs. I'm very excited myself as I know nothing. And the more I learn, the less I understand. It's great. As for the lantern falling, we don't know much about that, do we now, Schnookums? Multiple witnesses and ones. Gotcha. Yeah, and also, like, the other witness reacted to something the other witness said, which is... That's neat. That's new for the series, as I've seen it. Besides, how can you be sure the lantern fell just because it had a little mud on it? You didn't even know there was mud on it! Hold it! Madam? What do you mean? Oh, well, maybe the mud was already on the lantern before any of this happened. Did you ever think of that? Before any of this happened? Like, maybe it's been there since last week. It did rain last week, too, after all. But the glass is broken, and she wouldn't be using a lantern with broken glass. So, no. And if that's the case, then we're really... Then there really isn't any point arguing about whether or not she dropped the lantern, right? Hmm, indeed. What say you, Defender? I say, take a closer look at the lantern. You notice there's mud on the glass. Mud on the glass? The lantern wouldn't be very useful with all that mud blocking out the light. Miss Kira. I'd say your little theory regarding this lantern is muddy at best. Eh. I could point at witnesses till the cows come home. But that wouldn't turn this testimony into anything I can use. I've got to find a lead somewhere. 80% lantern is fine. Yeah, but enough of the glass is broken that it would probably be tough to use it at night with an open flame walking through the woods without it going up. These eyes do not lie. I saw the lantern in the accused's hands when the incantation was uttered. Hold it! And this is important. Are you sure you really saw that lantern? You are but a petty baker, are you not? It is not your place to be telling me what is important. There is but one thing of importance, ridding this town of its witches as quickly as possible. Objection! Hardly. I'd say this is far more important. What? We're trying to find out the truth here. How absurd. That girl is a witch, I say. A witch! I would stake my entrance into the Knights of the Inquisition on it. Listen well, whelp. Yes, Sir Barnum. Many young men within the ranks of the knighthood share your level of passion. However, you let your ambition completely blind you. The same way that a muddy lantern leaves one blind and helpless in the dark. <laughs> This guy. Yes, indeed. I would say he's quite the tough motivator. What do you think, Nick? Did you notice anything fishy? Yeah, possibly. I think there may be something I can use. Really? Wow! I didn't hear anything special. There was definitely something out of place in that one witness's testimony. I really like this theme. It was something I haven't noticed from any of the other witnesses so far. It appears you may have found something, Mr. Wright. A four-witness cross-examination, this is something I've never done before. But then, maybe there's another way I should be tackling this. I believe it is worth trusting that intuition, Mr. Wright. Okay, got it. All right, let's try pressing that old man one more time. So do I need to present evidence to Mary because she reacted? Lens fell to the ground after the incantation of Ignace Sploosh. Hold it! The lantern fell after the incantation. Are you positive about that? I say I'm positively positive, I'm positive. I heard a voice and then Sploosh. That Sploosh was it the sound of the lantern hitting the ground. Indeed, of course, do you see? But if you look at the lantern, you notice the glass is shattered. You specifically said you heard a Sploosh and you've heard the sound of the glass shattering when it hit the ground. 
The sound of glass shattering. No, I'm afraid I failed to catch your drift. Why did that make her react? I don't understand. Hold it! There it is, right there. I knew I heard something strange. Is he multi evidence drifting? Old Greybeard didn't say anything weird. Maya, it's not the old guy that said something weird. It's the person next to him. Next to him? Ah! Look there, Professor! A goat lady! She looks really deep in thought. It would seem. She has noticed something odd in this elderly gentleman's testimony. Ah! That's right! These cross-examinations have four witnesses! There are four witnesses. It looks like we're not the only ones paying attention to these testimonies. That's pretty neat. You're right, which means if they're all listening to each other's testimonies... Correct, Mr. Wright. Each witness is fully aware of themselves and their own actions when in the middle of their own testimonies. However, it is while listening to the testimonies of others that the witnesses may sometimes reveal the most valuable information. Call oh, really cool mechanic. Yeah, oh, he's neat. What game came first, this or Greatest Attorney? I think this came first. I see, it's habitual. They can't tell they're doing it, but I can. And I'm gonna use it to turn the tide back in our favor. In fact, I do believe I may have spotted our first opening into which to test this new technique. Mr. Wright, could I draw your attention to the touch screen? Huh, what, huh? The touch screen? Sliding the magnifying glass during a witness's testimony will allow you to shift your focus across to another witness. Oh. This might get really tedious, though. The every line of dialogue, you gotta check everyone. Right! So the important thing here isn't the witness that's in mid-testimony, it's the other three listening. It's just a matter of catching them off guard and questioning them. What are you waiting for, Nick? Let's give it a shot. How about we try questioning the goat lady next to old Greybeard? Okay, all I have to do is slide the glass over to the witness. Just when you hear someone react. Gotcha, okay, that's nice. The sound of glass shouting, afraid I'm to catch a drift. I thought it was gonna be like, now every time anyone's getting what testimony, anyone might react, so. That was president, I can't try, oh, there it goes. Whoa, oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Hang on! Hang on. Excuse me, Miss Mary. <laughs> Do you mean us? Uh, but Snowy and I have nothing else left to say. I knew it. I caught her completely by surprise. Mr. Wordsmith just gave his testimony. He told us all about the sound he heard when the lantern fell to the ground. If you question someone when they don't have thinking dots, gotcha. You tried that too. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wordsmith didn't seem too sure, but I wonder if you might have something uh, to say about this. Uh, well, that's... Is that all right, Sir Barnum? May we answer the question? Do what you will, madam. There's no need for formalities. Huh? Well, we'll try and explain, won't we, Snowy? The truth is, we did hear something. That is to say, we heard the sound of the lantern's glass shattering. We're sure of it. It was frighteningly loud. It's quite, it quite startled us, didn't it, Snowy dear? I looked in the direction of the sound, but I couldn't see anything, let alone the girl or those two thieves. It was a tad dark, after all. When the glass shattered, the flame inside must have gone out, hence she could not see them. That seems to be the gist of it. Then, as I peered into the darkness, I heard it. You heard it? What did you hear, exactly? You know, that I heard... The incantation for the spell Ignaz. What did you just say? N now. Now hold it right there, witness. Yes, my lord. The glass shattered when the lantern fell. Then after that, you heard the incantation for the spell Ignaz. Do you swear to this court that this is without a doubt, correct? Uh, yes, maybe, I think. 
How about my testimony? What of my oratorical observation? That blasted spelling needs occurred first. Then the lantern plummeted to the ground. I heard no such thing. There was no sound of shattering glass. Absurd, simply absurd. So the lantern fell in the glass shattered. That does not change the very fact that this girl is a witch. Objection. I hate to disappoint you, but that's not quite the case. In fact, this testimony changes things a lot. Wouldn't you agree, Inquisitor Barnum? What is the meaning of this? Let's go over what we know so far. In order for a witch to use any magic, they must be holding a witch's scepter. And yet, none of the four witnesses saw the defendant holding a scepter of any kind. That's because the scepter was made to disappear with the spell Demir, correct? At the time of the crime, the two victims grabbed Miss Cantabella's arm, causing her to drop the lantern onto the ground. If, at the time, she was in fact holding an invisible scepter, then the scepter must have fallen when she dropped the lantern. Now, let's say hypothetically that Miss Cantabella really is a witch. So you admit it, burn her! In order to use any magic, she would have had to recite the spell before dropping the scepter. However, as our witness Miss Mary has just stated in her testimony, she heard the incantation for Agnes after hearing the lantern's glass shatter. Ooh. You do all understand what that means, don't you? It means that Miss Cantabella, the supposed witch you've locked up, could not possibly have cast any magic. Therefore, the defendant, Espella Cantabella, is clearly in no way, shape, or form a witch. What the? He's back. When? When? What? What? When? It, what? Such frivolity! Do you realize what you're insinuating? Don't say he got better! Do you really think she's not a witch? He's designed after a rocket? I- I mean, maybe? The lamb is eating her flowers. There's a- We are so far into this court case. This trial. And there's- there's still like new animations popping up. Constantly. It's really good. Such nonsense. Did any of you even listen to my testimony? We did, but you're wrong. There was no glass shattering. Are you calling me a liar, Missy? You couldn't even see the mud on the lantern when it was plain as day. What ridiculous claims, all of you. Oh, hush. Take your little toy sword and go back to playing pretend, Sir Knight. I really just want him to shot put something into them and knock them over. Witnesses, this is a court of law, not a playground. Must I remind you of the importance of these proceedings? Witches and their magic threaten our fair town of Labyrinthia. Your words here today could decide the fate of every single citizen within our walls. Do you understand? As such, I expect each of you to take your role seriously and testify honestly about what you saw. In all my days as judge of this court, I have never seen such behavior. And I've been judged for three days. Behavior that leaves a cloud of doubt over the credibility of each of your testimonies. Indeed, my lord. Quite a miserable set of witnesses, this lot. Hmm, I see. It would appear this trial has come to a sudden halt. Huh? So that must mean... Quite right. It means you have won this trial, Mr. Wright. Yippee! We've won. Where's Gumshoe with the confetti? I can hardly believe the situation we have found ourselves in. 
I did not anticipate this trial ending with such a strange turn of events. But due to these witnesses' dubious credibility, I can see no reason to continue. What say you, Inquisitor Barnum? As you wish, my lord. Ye oldy gumshoe. What is going on? They're actually gonna let this witch run free through the town? Kai says, if it wasn't for that witch and her friends... Mm -hmm. Was Kira eating one of her flowers? She does have some friends. Wait a bloody second. This trial ain't even close to being over. Oh my god, it's some guy! Not before I take the stake to testify! Order! Order! Who is this... this buffoon? Behold! Who am I, you ask? Who am I? Why? I'm the man that's gonna single-handedly save this trial! I'm the fifth witness! <laughs> Let him finish. Any minute now. You thought I was over, huh? I sure did. Say what? What? Even Barnum didn't see this one coming. Just as I thought, this trial was going down the drain before I got here. Yeah! Okay, you lot, assemble! We need a strategy meeting ASAP. I say, who are you? Thank goodness you showed up. We can't give up now, everyone. It has come down to this. To arms, everyone, we shall do battle against that baker and that hat seller. I can't believe this. The heck is going on? Hmm. Truly fascinating. It seems a new witness has taken the stand. What's more, he appears to be quite the formidable witness. Oh, yeah. I guess. The goat is also part of the strategy meeting. Hold on, there comes the goat. He's helping. Good. This trial is still far from over. Quack. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is trial number two. Oh boy. Yeah, at least there's a save point. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, I'll save. Boo do 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 boo do. Okay, that's fine too. Well then, we will now continue with the trial of a spell of Cantabella. Oh boy. A group of witnesses huddling up before a joint testimony in a witch trial. He can't make this stuff up. Shoot the Kumi. Inquisitor Barnum, if I may ask you a question. Yes, my lord. We now have five witnesses on the stand, so I must ask. Why was this obnoxious looking man left out of your initial group of witnesses? He's right, Barnum. That's just cold-blooded. He's some guy. There is but one reason, my lord. I did not know this witness even existed. Eh? You, sir, failed to come forward. When we were asking for witnesses for this very trial, you were nowhere to be seen. It's the same night that it happened. But... Is he drinking a cup of mashed potatoes? What's going on there? That ain't foam. That's cause I didn't hear a peep about it. I ain't usually around at night, except for maybe a rogue's tavern. So you're basically telling us that you were up all night 
drinking. And anyway, it's all water under the bridge now, as far as I'm concerned. Just leave the rest to yours truly. Chat, chat. Is that the yeah the milk bar? Har, 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 har. Yeah, 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 yeah. During the last interrogation, the defender brought forth some surprising proof, namely that there was little possibility the accused could have used magics. I have never heard of such a claim. It must be the doing of this logic. What rubbish? Logic, you say? I ain't got a clue what that is. But I do know that this bread baker, baker ought to head back to the bakery. Eloquently said. Oi, Gramps, give me and me partners over here a chance to speak. You want to know how this witch managed to be holding that scepter, don't you? Oh, uh, when you say Gramps, you wouldn't mean me, would you? I fail to see anyone else meaning such a description. We'll show you she's a witch. I'll bet Snowy's beautiful white coat on it. On guard. All right, team. Let's do this. Jesus Christ. Hi. Witnesses. <laughs> Ahem. Well. Let us proceed with the testimonies. Why do I feel like I've totally lost control of the situation? I hope the judge is feeling the same way. Because what on earth? There's Ace Attorney Stupid and then there's this. It's clear as day, Espella is a witch. We're not backing down on her. When she dropped the lantern, the scepter was not yet in her hands. Okay. The scepter must have been hidden by magic and carried on her back. The rogue grabbed her by the hand that held the lantern, so she must have had another way of holding the scepter. That's easy. The girl just put the bucket down on the ground and picked up the witch's sep sep magic st stick. My god, it chat was right with the pull. It wasn't her left or her right, it was her other. So she had the witch's scepter behind her back. Then she dropped the lantern and reached for the scepter after it fell. If that is the case, then it must have been possible for the accused to have used magic. This is bad. Oh. He's just drinking some sarsaparilla. He's got, a, he's got some cream soda. It's not booze, kids. Thanks to this guy, now all the witnesses seem extra determined to pin this thing on a spell. They each harbor a shared anger towards witches and magic. Such is the cause of their strong desire to see a guilty verdict passed as quickly as possible. However, such confidence is undoubtedly bound to cloud their better judgment and thinking. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think these guys mean any real harm, but they're all riled up. Don't even realize how distorted their idea of what happened tonight has become. What are they all doing? At least, that's how it seems. This is a good professor. The witnesses aren't thinking straight. They're completely blind to the truth. Sir Baker, uh, rather, Sir Wright. Hmm. Yes. You do not appear to be a mere simple baker. That much is clear. I am a complicated baker. On the other hand, you are no ordinary defender either. Never before has a defender managed to clash and do battle with me here on this battlefield as an equal. Sir Blue Knight. This trial has not yet been decided. If there is any doubt in your interrogation, I will not hesitate to strike your case down where it stands. Yeah, right. I understand. Defender, please begin your interrogation. The mystery of the witch's chapter. It spells a witch. We're not backing down on this. Did you just eat a flower? Hold it! Not backing down, you say. 
Uh-huh, that's right. Estella is a witch. That's our story, and we're sticking to it. Stop eating flowers. This is a courtroom, Miss Kira. We're not interested in your story. We're interested in the truth. You know what I think? I think stories have the power to touch our lives in really meaningful ways. Thank you, Shutsukumi. What do you mean? Last year, I read a book about a flower girl who brought peace to the world with all the pretty flowers she sold. Because of that story, now I tell myself, Kira, one day you'll fill the world with beautiful flowers of your own. That story inspires me to sell more flowers. It's pretty much the same as this trial. What a very touching story. Indeed, I have heard nary a truer tale. Wouldn't you agree, Sir Blue Knight? Maybe it's just me, but I'd prefer something a little more relevant. I'm afraid our logic may do us no good here. Let's move on to the next witness, shall we? Abandon ye all logic and reason, thou who must treadeth here. When she dropped the lantern, the scepter was not yet in her hands. Nuh uh. Hold it! No matter how many times we ask, you still say you didn't see the scepter, huh, Gramps? He better not blast off again. I ask you, youngling, were you paying attention to this trial? Yeah. Well then, magic made the scepter invisible, did it not? Thus, my old age clouding up my vision has nothing to do with anything. The scepter actually vanished. Now, what I'm saying is, if it really was invisible, you wouldn't be able to actually prove it. Not so, young one. We can prove it. The girl's a witch. There's your proof. So, my old age clouding up my memories has nothing to do with anything. The scepter magically vanished, you see? Okay, okay, we get it. When the lantern fell, you claimed the scepter was still not in our hand yet. So that means... The scepter must have been hidden by magic and carried on her back. Hold it! The witch's scepter was behind her back. Well, it's like my little snowflake here. Whenever my darling gets too heavy, I hoist him up and carry him on my back. You mean your baby goat, right? Yes, yes. There isn't a cuter little goat in this entire courtroom, right, precious? I know it's been asked already, but you didn't see the witch's scepter, did you? Well, no, but it must have been made invisible by magic and then put on her back. You know, Snowy's still such a tiny little thing. If I put him on my back, you can hardly see him. I hardly see the point of that comment. So the accused grabbed the witch's scepter after the lantern fell. Ask the goat to bear his testimony. Ask the goat to bear his testimony. The rogue grabbed her by the hand and that held the lantern. She must have had another way holding the scepter. Hold it! Uh-huh. Are you all right? What? Why? Why? Well, for one thing, you're hiding behind what I assume is a shield. <laughs> well played, Blue Knight. You managed to see through my steel guard technique. You managed to see through my steel guard technique. Your steel what technique? You tried to penetrate the depths of my mind and deceive me once with your witchcraft of words. But you will find your words are futile against the strength of my shield, crafted from wood, harder than steel. Wood harder than steel. Now then, have at you. Attack me if you dare. No, 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 no. Just listen a second. Hmm. Looking at this sketch, it's quite clear the accused could not have held the scepter in the same hand carrying the lantern. Witness, explain to the court just how the accused held the scepter. I'm doing, I'm doing my best. That's easy. The girl just put the bucket down on the ground and picked up the witch's magic stick. Hold it! She put the milk bucket down. That's right. Reckon if she did that, she'd have no problem holding that thing. Objection! But none of the other witnesses have said anything about seeing her put the bucket on the ground. 
yeah, but no one said a thing about not seeing her put the bucket down either, right? Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, all right. Is anyone sus? Uh, I think everyone is. <laughs> everyone is upset by that. Um, what else you got? Well, yeah, but... There you go. These lot probably just didn't see it happen is all. Never question a witness. That's what me pappy always said. Huh? <laughs> Several people are typing. <laughs> yeah. Ain't a doubt in me mind that witch put the bucket down before using the scepter. If that is indeed accurate, then it would seem we may have found our truth. Mm hmm These testimonies, something's definitely not right here. What do you think, Nick? There's no way this disappearing scepter explains what actually happened. I mean, no one saw anything. How can we prove it was there? This is starting to get really annoying. They can talk all they want about an invisible scepter, but no way is anything slipping under my radar. I do believe that is correct, Mr. Wright. Somehow, we must find a clue that can lead us to another opening. Yeah, you're right. I think Mr. Personality over there may be the key to doing just that. Also, the girl's glasses hasn't come up as actual evidence yet. Just waiting for that, too. Hold it! Hold it. She put the bucket down. <laughs> Luke's just, yeah, Luke's here for flavor. Let's go left to right, I guess. Hey there. Hang on! Hang on? Excuse me, Mr. Wordsmith. What is it, oh boisterous blue one? Yeah, Luke's just making ch some jam off to the side. Tell me, what do you make of this witness's testimony just now? He has stated on that the defendants put the bucket on the ground. The other witnesses never mentioned that. Let me tell you something, young man. Long have I lived and prospered as a rocket man. In that time, I have forgotten much. Dreams, aspirations, even love. I simply forgo about the bucket, like one would forget about a single drop of water within the bucket that is life. Um, thank you for that, Mr. Wordsmith. No further questions. I don't understand a single word that comes out of his mouth, Nick. Sheesh, guess it's back to the drawing board. Why doesn't he just shoot them? Why does the strongest witness simply not eat the others? Oops. No! Damn it. Wait, let me, let me, uh, I'm actually need to see if there's a setting. Options. Great. Those are our only options. Confirm. Well, great, moving on. Uh. Better than literally nothing? We've made progress from no options to individual volume sliders. So that's good. Back in my day, we had three options, and we liked it. If I could make Jeremy sticky and tell him that the lantern was stuck to her end, maybe we could win the case. What? All right, Mary. Hang on. Hang on. It's a very, like, Sonic the Hedgehog read on that. Hang on. Hang on to something, Tails. Excuse me, Miss Mary. Huh? You mean Snowy and me? Tell me, what do you think of the witness's testimony just now? They said they placed the bucket on the ground, don't say anything about that till now. That, that must be how it happened. The girl probably placed the milk bucket on the ground, yes. Objection! Miss Mary, you did not mention anything to that effect in your previous testimony. And yet, you clearly stated that the one thing you were specifically focused on, more than anything else, was the milk bucket. Ergo! You should be able to confirm to the courts whether or not the bucket really was placed on the ground. He, he whipped out the ergo. Objection! One's memory is not flawless, Sir Blue Knight. This happened a couple hours ago. Pay attention to what the witness was saying. The accused probably placed the milk bucket on the ground. There is, there is the possibility such was the case. 
Yes, yes, that's right. Isn't it, my little cuddle pumpkin? I knew it. There's something fishy about her testimony, but... Indeed, it would seem we require a decisive piece of evidence. If we are to expose the contradictions in these witnesses' testimonies. Air come, air go. Snowy just wants to run around in a field. Yeah, Snowy doesn't deserve this. She's possibly not a witch, then. That's not how it works. I just have to think of what that could be. So can I throw evidence to them when that pops up? Hold it! Hashtag free snow. Objection! No one saw not put in the bucket. Question. Hang on! Yeah, I'm curious about the other two. Excuse me, Miss Kira. Huh? What is it? Tell me, what do you think of the other witnesses' testimony? They said some words. Why, you're right. How odd. Everyone must have simply forgotten, myself included. Huh? But, yeah, Espella definitely did put that milk bucket down. That way, she was able to easily grab her scepter and use magic. Easy peasy, right? A nerve, Nick. It looks like she's trying to peg Espella as a witch. Oh. Oh. Every chance she gets. Oh. Really? I don't know how much more of this testimony I can stand. Phew. Close call there. Hmm. Hold it! Try again. What? Objection! Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 All right, what's nightly the night? Have any thoughts? Hang on! Excuse me, Mr. Nighter. Tell me, what did you think about the witness's testimony? He said some stuff. I am reminded of but one thing, sir. A battle tactic important to any knight. Imagine in one hand you hold your sword and in the other your shield. When suddenly from the shadows, an itch of epic proportions takes to your back. What does one do? Indeed, what can one do? Well, let me tell you. One must drop one's sword and fill that unholy itch with a well-timed scratch to one's back. Right. A crafty witch would surely use the same tactic, would she not? I called my signature back scratch attack of great justice. Right. By the way, be wary when using that tactic in battle. I find my opponents rarely give me ample time to remove my armor and scratch. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Nidal. No further questions. Mr. Nidal sure takes the whole night thing super seriously, huh? Here's this is back to the drawing board. So, I can question Mary again, but I don't see an option to present evidence unless I'm meant to present evidence to Hold him. It. Yeah, I could always throw out a hint coin. Objection. Let me see. Let me talk to her again. No, the witnesses said the thing you said that they said. Yeah, but they did not say the thing that I didn't say that they said. Oh. Uh, Hey Viz, how you doing? Everything's fine. We're yelling at a goat. You mean Snowy and me? Maybe the witness's testimony. Hey, yeah, you're supposed to be looking at the bucket. Yeah, but you don't know. And probably is good enough, I guess. Yeah, there's no option on the touch screen. Point at her! Air go! Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. We require a of evidence. Hmm. Let's go ahead and save. Real quick, like... Wait, let me check my memos real quick. Oh, did it delete my memos? Or are the memos different between Layton and and Phoenix? Maybe that's the case.
Okay. How am I gonna remember three? I don't remember. I don't remember nothing. Um. Yes, yeah, so which guys are doing is alive. I just supposed to hold the glasses broke is covered in mud. I just have to need details. Well, that's new. Wasn't able to inspect it that closely before. Um. I don't know what, what I'm meant to be looking for. But that's neat. The art is cool. Kira's poor eyesight wears glasses. She lost them a few days before the incident. The milk bucket, Mary brought it back to her farm. This kind of magic is going on. This is going on the night. Oh, she has glasses in her art now. She's actually wearing glasses now. That's cute. Okay. Um. Wordsmith, mysterious old guy detached from reality. Some guy. We still don't even know his name. He's still just some guy. Barge didn't decide to testify. Okay. Still only have these two pages. Causes anything the caster touches to vanish from sight. Simply chant a mere to make it reappear. Still don't know how it reappeared if it was invisible the whole time. Seems like it's hanging over the entire case, but... Yeah, I'm a little bit stumped here. The scepter was not yet in her hands. It must have been hidden by magic carried on her back. Grabbed her by the hand that held the lantern, she must have had another way of holding that scepter. The girl put the bucket down on the ground, picked up the witch's magic stick. Yeah, I can toss the coin. I have 70 something of them. So, okay. So you have to present evidence to this. That's weird. Yeah, so I thought it was like, oh, you press, and then there's someone else, and then you can go down the line of questioning there. But I need to give him evidence that'll make the Mary react, I guess? I don't know. Um, put the button on the ground and pick up the witch's magic stick. So what? Okay. Well, between the lantern and the milk, it's probably the milk. Objection! But I'm not entirely sure why... I'm afraid what really happened is not quite so shrimple. Wait, wait, wait. What you talking about? It had only just stopped raining moments before the crime took place. As a result, the ground was very muddy. Oh, and there's no mud on the bucket. If Miss Cantabella really placed this bucket on the ground like you claimed she did, then it should be caked with mud, just like the lantern was after it fell. Well, but Mary took it back to her farm. She, she had ample opportunity to clean off the bucket. Well, I'd say that clears up your muddy testimony, wouldn't you? well. Hey, Barnum. What? You just gonna sit there looking pretty? Come on, give me a handy. Flattery will get you nowhere, witness, other than perhaps to the dungeon. The dungeon in the castle? I didn't say which dungeon. At any rate... There is but one question we ought to ask. Why is there no mud on that bucket? To the witness with the goat! May I ask you a question? Huh? Are you talking to us? Indeed. You admitted to the court that you returned home with the milk bucket. Illegally, I must add. My, oh my, such harsh words, Inquisitor. When you took the bucket home, you must have simply wiped the mud from the bucket. Is that correct? You know, now that you mention it... No way, don't tell me. That milk bucket... Ah, uh, that's right, I remember now. I don't know if what was on the bucket was mud exactly, but it certainly was dirty. Before taking it inside with me, I remember wiping it clean with an old rag. Are, are you kidding me? Leading the witness. What's that, your honor? Exceptional work, Inquisitor Bob. Right, right. It all makes perfect sense. See, we're all right. We were right all along, weren't we, Inquisitor Barnum? I knew that sword weren't just for show, Barnum. You sliced this argument in two. Objection! 
Witness, uh, Miss Mary. What is it? You're absolutely sure there was mud stuck to this milk bucket? Oh my, well, truth be told, I don't remember whether it was mud exactly, but I do remember cleaning the bucket off when I got home. It would seem the defense has failed to disprove the witness's claims. Of that, we can be quite certain. Har har, that'll teach your bluey. You got that right. Do me a favor, will you, Gramps? I want to change my testimony just a little tiny bit. I will allow it, only if the witness refrains from name-calling in the future. Yar! You got it, Grave, my lord. Well, all this court mumbo-jumbo has left me thirstier than a dog in a desert. Is that your updated testimony? Yeah, he's, he's really giving uh, Godot a run for his money. That witch there was holding the stick. I haven't heard her say the incantation thingy. That's right, I witnessed it all. Is that your update? That's it? That's what you wanted to add? They may have other reasons for uh, accusing a spell. There's one thing they have in common. They genuinely believe a spell's a witch. Were we to disprove that belief, there would be no re way for them to regroup. The witnesses would have to acknowledge the truth of what happened tonight. They are, after all, witnesses. They must be fully aware of what actually transpired. That means they gotta pay extra attention to their reactions and testimonies. I think you better observe the witnesses, Mr. Wright. You can do it. I've got to try and get the truth out of these witnesses somehow. Hmm. He's basically alcohol to dough. It's clear as day, it spells a witch. Meh. Yeah. That witch there is holding the shtick thingy. Hold it! But no one knows for sure if Miss Cantabella dropped that milk bucket on the ground. Because there's no mud on it, is that what you're saying? Hey, we went over this already. We know the goat lady wiped off all the mud. Objection! However, Miss Mary doesn't clearly remember whether or not it was mud that was stuck on the bucket. Hmm, we were really, we really don't remember, but maybe, I guess maybe there was mud on it. I mean, she couldn't hold the scepter without putting the bucket on the ground. Miss Mary, please give a definitive answer. Y'all done, Bluey? Talk all you want, cause they could help you, see? The five of us, we saw what that witch went and did. We saw it clear as day. Especially the one who needs glasses. She definitely. Oh, he, oh, what is he? He's doing, what is he, sir? Doing a weird spin. This is like playing L.A. Noir, where you're like, so what were you doing at the time of the crime? And they're like, nothing. And then they do that for 10 minutes. And you're like, X to doubt. Um. Okay, what? What? Hang on! Minecraft villager looking ass. Yeah, uh, mister? Earth to Gramps. <laughs> Defender, when you say Gramps, might you by any chance be referring to me? Uh, no, no, of course not, your honor. Mr. Wordsmith, are you listening? He's back. I heard you quite clearly the first time, young man. These ears hear all. The crackling of the fire, the whispering of the crowd, and now your voice. If that's the case, then allow me to ask you a question. You were clearly deep in thought just now. Do you have something to say about this man's testimony? Indeed, so I felt something was amiss. However, what that means, I cannot say. Amiss? Witness, could you tell us? What precisely was amiss with this third-rate testimony from this third-rate witness? What a burn, Barnum. Five heads are better than one. Ten eyeballs are better than two. As I listened to this man's testimony, I could not help but become aware of something most odd. 
Oh! Tonight, when the crime occurred, we all made haste to that terrible scene. This art is so good. The delicious scent of mid-evening dinner permeated through the air, the shadows of those present cast through the dim light. And yet, there were but four figures standing in that vicinity, myself included. Four? Hold on one second. You're saying that there were only four witnesses at the crime scene tonight. These eyes may be old, but they know what they saw. Um, is something the matter, Miss Mary? N no, it's just that Snowy and I are trying to remember what happened at the time. I remember the flames erupting into the air. That's when Snowy and I made our mad dash to save the precious milk. And when those two ruffians were set ablaze, the flame filled the area with light. In that sudden flash of light, we could see that there were other people around besides ourselves. And that's when I saw them, the other people that scrambled to the scene along with us. I'm quite sure of it. There are only four of us there at the scene of the crime. Objection! Hold it, madam. You this? What in blazes is going on? We have five witnesses on the stand, all claiming to have witnessed tonight's events firsthand. That means we have an imposter. So smooth is Professor, Professor. Don't be stupid. Or oh, you're all better stop speaking at a turn. All for one and one for all, remember? We all promised to take this witch down together, didn't we? It's not quite that simple. We saw what we saw. Well, I say it's all about the numbers, and I counted, I counted, I say. I'll have you know my counting is flawless. On nights when sleep eludes me, I can count sheep from moonrise to sunrise. Four witnesses, five witnesses, what difference does it make? Things all started getting muddled when you showed up. But, but what the? You saying it's my fault? I was there, you fool. Didn't I just finish saying that? My testimony is strong as steel, even if it's not completely stainless. They have stainless steel in this world? Order, I said, order! What? What is going on here? You claim the number of witnesses does not add up? I saw him vent, Professor! That's the joke. I have never paid witness to such an outrageous conflict. There is but one answer to this puzzle. A single possibility. What do you mean? Without a doubt, magic must have been used at the scene of the crime. Furthermore, it would indeed appear that there were only four witnesses present at the scene. And yet, currently, we are faced with five witnesses testifying to the court. That certainly is quite a fatal contradiction, with only one possible answer. Would you not agree, Mr. Wright? Are we about to get someone else murdered at the stake for being a witch? The answer, it can't be. Well, out with this supposed answer, Sir Blue Knight. What is your explanation for the current number of witnesses? They didn't see things correctly. The witch cast a spell on them. One of them is the witch. That's the one, I'm gonna say the other one. They, they didn't see it right. It's possible that the witnesses were mistaken. I say, where are you insinuating my senses are those of one past his prime, young man? Did somebody say prime? I'll have you know, part of my job is to count the number of goats on my farm. I think I can accurately count four people. Perhaps you should go back to counting loaves of bread. Yep, they're mad. Mr. Wright, even if they are mistaken, I'm afraid that would not change anything. So, let us endeavor to seek out a more pertinent possibility. Even Layton sounds annoyed in a gentlemanly sort of way. Goat counter. It would seem Sir Apprentice Baker and Sir Top Hat are in disagreement. I suppose I owe you for that most unflattering moniker. The defense should think twice before recklessly casting such accusations. Well, out with this supposed answer, Sir Blue Knight. What is your explanation for the current number of witnesses? I was trying to m go through her his text. Shit. Yeah, yeah, no. Good thing I'm not taking damage from this. Not yet. 
All right. All right. Yep. What is the explanation? The witch cast a spell on them, isn't it? Maybe the witch put a spell on them, you know, to affect their testimony. Like, Alaka wrong, or some weird spell like that. Mr. Wright, there's no record of Alaka wrong in the Grand Grimoire. Thanks, kid. The witch's scepter has two magic gems, Ignaz and Demir, Mr. Wright. What a ridiculous spell. Hocus Pocus. This court is a ruckus. You think? It's not any more ridiculous than those other spell names. That was simply dreadful. Death. The death penalty. The next time you spout such drivel, you shall tell it to the flames. Is that clear? Yeah, crystal clear. Can I get a do-over? Yes, you may. Out with the supposed answer. What is your explanation? One of them's the witch, isn't it? Burn her! Burn the witch! While it may seem far-fetched, the reality is actually rather shrimple. The real witch. And the real murderer in this case. Is actually one of the- ooh, One of these five witnesses! Wah! Shot put! You're telling us that the witch is amongst this group of witnesses? What utter rubbish. There's no possible way that such a claim could be true. That's right. You got a lot of nerve accusing one of us of being a witch. We have told you nothing but the truth. Yet you still have the gall to bat around such an outrageous accusation? Behold, as my trusty shield deflects your petty words, like the petty words that they are. Inquisitor Barnum. Yes, my lord. I... I hate that I'm gonna vocalize this thought against my better judgment, but I, like, I looked away and I looked back at the judge a couple scenes ago, and now I can't unsee it. The, the two parts of his cloak, if you kind of squint. He's got, he, you know, he's got some big naturals. Uh, do you have, I'd like to see a sketch of the crime scene at the time of the incident. Do you have one in your possession? Yeah, his big nat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his big natural. Certainly, my lord, I have one here. Am I good? It's been a long trial. I requested it from the court illustrator, just in case. I can't see it. I'm envious. My brain, like, flicked it on like a light switch and I can't unsee it. Very well, witnesses. I would like each of you to mark your location at the time of the murder. Here on this crime scene sketch, quickly now. The number of witnesses doesn't add up. Looks like we're getting somewhere now, but we haven't even scratched the surface of this case yet. We haven't scratched the- it's been hours! And it's all thanks to this top hat wearing gentleman! His blank ass face! <laughs> the slow zoom on a lady's face as he's just... Complete, just two dots, line mouth. Who is this- this gentleman? Who is he? <laughs> oh! Oh god, hi, hello. He's reading my thoughts again. He, okay. The court accepts this crime scene sketch into evidence. Area map adds a court record. Okay. Oh God, he's he's aware. If one of the witnesses is the witch, that could only mean one thing: somebody here isn't telling the truth. Luke, run! That would indeed appear to be the case, Mister Wright. Listen well, Sir Blue Knight. The path you tread now is a dangerous one. Claiming that a witch is among these most honorable witnesses is a serious accusation. Should it prove to be a false one, you will find yourself at the other end of my sword. Do I make myself clear? Huh? Uh, but that... That wasn't so much my suggestion. I mean, the, the gentleman here with the lovely top hat was the one who urged me to say it. Lane's like, that's on you, bro. 
It is the same thing, Sir Blue Knight. Indeed, it is the same thing, Sir Baker. It is the same thing, Mr. Wright. <laughs> You're going down for this, not me. I'm innocent. Now, oh, boy. Now, ready your sword of words. R ready? Were you listening? You claim the witch is not the accused and that someone else at the crime scene was the true culprit. If what you say is true, then surely you can tell the court exactly where this person was at the time of the crime. Can you not? Yeah, I cannot. Absolutely. Um, what? Huh? Um, am I gonna get any more testimony? Yeah, that's it. The magnifying glass is almost too zoomed in. I'm hoping there's more... Yeah, she doesn't care. Uh, I'm hoping there's some more testimony that we're still missing. Um, well, 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 hold on. The Some guy was saying that he only saw four others, right? Actually, everyone. Never mind. Mary also reinforced that. I was like, if, if he was like, oh, I only saw four other people. Well, uh, I mean, what's her face is behind him. So he only would have seen four. And if she didn't approach the scene afterwards, then then that still checks out. But if she only saw four others, including herself, then that doesn't work. But also her glasses hasn't come up yet. It's gonna. I don't know. That was what the Rocket Man said. Oh, I thought it was. You're right. He was the one who was like, mm, I don't know. My bad. Come now. Only you can enlighten us as to who this real witch actually is. I wish Pearls was here. Better that she's not. Sir Dewey Defender. Yeah. Show us where the witch was at the exact moment the murder took place. Oh. Um. Okay. Um. Uh. Um. Summon the circle of flame within a one meter radius of the cast. It requires incantation and scepter to cast. Um. Um. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I gotta put it all together. So, so. He heard a sploosh. So, so something was dropped into the puddle. But also, the lantern was definitely dropped and broken. Probably not in a puddle. Kira needs to wear glasses. She lost them. She maybe put down the... I think the milk bucket's what fell into the puddle. So it got, like, dirty water on it. But not necessarily mud. But I don't see how that really changes any of the events. If there's... If someone else is the witch... They could have used the scepter to hide themselves. I literally already said it. I don't remember anything I said. Um... I'm thinking they probably used the scepter to make themselves invisible and then hid nearby and went, Haya, uh, 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 didn't fire, blammo. So, I don't know where they were, though. Only that they were probably nearby. But I don't see how I can determine exactly where that was. And it, also, I should say I'm suspicious of Kira. I think Kira's the witch if any of them actually are. And because of her lack of glasses, she would need to be close in order to properly see what was happening. I'm also assuming that she's nearsighted, because if she's farsighted, then it's fine. Um, hey, shit ass, check out this pipe bomb. Oh. Um, so, I really wish I could go through their testimony again, but there's like, nope, point it. I did already say it. I don't want to use a hint. Um. The location of the witch during the crime was... Pro I mean, I would assume, like, in the woods nearby. Right? But... I just... Uh, that God, that face is good. I just don't know how accurate it needs to be. Being closer to something doesn't solve the problem. Well, right. That's my point. Only one of them vented an electrical. We don't know that she vented. It's a very good face. It's a very Leighton-esque face. Um... 
I'm just gonna say that they were like in the bushes nearby right there. Got it! The witch must have been standing here! Objection! What is the meaning of this? Unfortunately for you, that spot has absolutely nothing to do with any of these witnesses. Objection! Inquisitor Barnum, I suggest you try taking a look at this. The Grand Grimoire? Oh, it has to be a meteor radius, doesn't it? According to this tome, Ignaz summons the circle of flame within a one meter radius of the caster. D&D rules. In other words, the witch had to have been within one meter of the flame when casting the spell. Objection! Of course, you needn't say any more, Sir Blue Knight. First off, notice that there is no one else in that area other than the accused. It should also be quite obvious from the sketch that there is clearly nowhere for anyone to hide. Objection! True, there aren't any hiding spots, however, there is one other possibility if a witch wanted to stay hidden from sight. Most intriguing. Since you seem to love showing evidence, prove it! How was the witch able to hide in plain sight? For the first time, there's actual consequences to getting this wrong. Um... Demir! Hiya! Take that! This Talia Magica contains two magic gems. Ignaz and one other spell. That's right, the spell Demir. Demir. Ah, it cannot be. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. That's right, mm hmm, yep. There was most certainly a witch present at the crime scene, only they were completely invisible. All thanks to the magic spell Demir. I keep feeling like there should be a, a kind of a pun that works with Demir. All I can think of is like Demir, or like come over Demir. In terms of like being hidden, D Demir, Demere, Dimmer, Dimmer switch, Dismir. You can't, yeah, Dimmer. He's thinking about them hams. Order in the court, Defender, what are you getting at? I thought the witch used Demir to make the Talia Magica disappear. Objection! Dim here, get your dim here, get your dim some. Fresh out of the, the, the oven. According to the Grand Grimoire, under the entry for Demir, it causes anything the caster touches to vanish from sight. In other words, the soundtrack is so good. Supposing the witch were holding the staff in one hand while touching part of their body with the other, they would be able to make themselves disappear. Are you implying that this is the reason for the conflicting number of witnesses? Every time it cuts back and it's latent instead, it just is just like... Ha. Indeed it is. Which means, witnesses, someone amongst you is not disclosing the entire truth, and that person is the witch we seek. He could have said someone among us is not disclosing the entire truth. He could have. I believe this is the most probable scenario. Amongst ye, the medieval spin-off of Amogus. Honorable witnesses, you will testify to the court one final time. My big high face is more jarring. It's pretty rough. Tell us exactly what you saw and what you did not see at the scene of the crime. How absurdly absurd! The purpose of this trial is to convict that girl of the crime, is it not? That's right. We are not witches. Bullshit, you are. Uh, uh, witnesses, I ask that you listen. There is a witch mingling among you. We keep getting close. We keep getting this one blatant. That's right. I'm afraid you are all no longer brothers in arms. The true opponent here is within your own group. Among you. The real witch is one of these five witnesses, huh? Fine by me. Time to put an end to this trial. 
No one said that there wasn't not a witch. Therefore, I'm innocent. You wish to know where we all were standing tonight? Uh, it matters not. Would the flames not burn just the same? That flame, I never saw anything like it. It quite literally left me speechless. I couldn't even so much as scream. I heard the tiniest cry, and then when I turned around, the blighters were roasting, so I rushed right over. I heard the incantation, then the flames suddenly erupted. I'm certain of it. I only saw three people there with us. As I said, there were only three others present, like that man there who was stumbling around like a newborn calf. Which man were? Hmm. The most heinous act indeed. No small wonder these witnesses are so confused. The witch amongst the witnesses. What an utterly baseless claim. I don't think so, Barnum. The only baseless claim is this case of Espella being a witch. It's more than a little likely one of these witnesses is the culprit. These testimonies are bound to tell me who the real witch is. But why did Espella say the incantation? What we saw and what we didn't see. Unless the cutscene lied to us. Trogdor was a man. Was a man. I mean, he was a dragon man. Burnate. Or maybe he was just a dragon. But he was still Trogdor. Trogdor! It's Trogdor. He was fighting Trogdor out in the woods. Thank you, BT, B2KD4 Judge. For the enemy. Barlated birthday. Thank you! For the barlated birthday. Hope you're having a good one! Thank you. Uh, you wish to know where you're all standing tonight? It matters not. Would the flames not burn just the same? Trog did. Hold it! So bad typing this phone. Typing is tough on phone. In other words, you're not sure exactly what happened tonight. Is that right? Defender, I fought with burning vigor this night. Do not belittle my efforts. Burning? Right. A knight does not just run away at the mere sight of fire. Ha! No one even said anything about running away. If I may be perfectly straight with you, the pillar of fire illuminated the area as it rose high into the air. There by the fire was the witch. And excluding the two unfortunate knaves, I counted three others at the scene. What? What What? Ha what, are you, what are you upset about? Wait, hold, hold, hold on, I'll come back to you later. Exactly. That means there are only four witnesses at the scene of the crime. Hold on, sir. You cannot say that for certain. Perhaps I missed the other witness. Maybe they were obscured by this shield. See, that is another possibility. Anyway, how about we not talk about your shield anymore? I'm not forgetting the floor. Can't believe. Damn, Layton, smack that on the floor. Smack that. Give me some more. Yeah. Cutscene, she opens her mouth and the camera looks elsewhere for the incantation. Oh, well, that's quite sneaky. Hmm. Hmm. Very well. Nine of Fregor, what? What are we talking about? No, go back. You! Hold it! You there! I like how, like, the use of accordion and stuff, that there's, like, a lot of latent instrumentation. Yeah, I. It's. it's what? It's very jarring, and I like this a lot. Um, hey, did you have anything about Hang that? On. Excuse me, uh, mister? Hey, give me a sec while I polish off this drinky poo here, alright, Bluey? Okay. Are you almost done? Uh, how much more do you have left? Uh, never mind. Let's just move on. Witness, please continue with your testimony. It's empty, isn't it? Definitely. He's all out of mashed potato. Yep, yep, yep. Hold it! Portal to the foam dimension. Mmm. Love, love drinking nothing but foam. Thank you, Smash, man. They drive me to drink. You there with the goat? Hang on! Hang on! Excuse me, Miss Mary. Do you have something to say about the testimony just now? Hello, Miss Mary. Bear. 
Doesn't look like she has anything to say. That goat sure does, though. Yeah, this witness is starting to get my goat. Witness, continue with your test. Yep. Hold it! All right, Wordsmith. What are you so suspicious of? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can't skip this text whenever it does this. Yo there! I call the goat to the stand. Luke, grab the goat. Run! What is it, young one? Do you have anything to say about the testimony just now? My mind is like the mid-afternoon sun, serene and hazy, mellow and yellow. As the day rolls on and the sun sets, my forgotten thoughts are my only regret. Looks like he has a lot to say, none of it about the testimony. Either that or he, isn't just, he just isn't listening. Can I tell you what I'm talking about? They call me Mellow Yellow. Quite right. Hold it. Okay. All right. Kira! Kira! There by the fire was the witch, and excluding the two unfortunate knaves, I counted three others at the scene. Ma'am? Hang on! Excuse me, Miss Kira. Eek! What do you want? You looked like you had something to say about the testimony just now. Well, it was about the number of people at the crime scene. Have you ever played the Daisy Petal game? Daisy Petal game? One witness, two witnesses, three, four, five, six. Hmm. What an adorable game. It seems like something out of a fairy tale. Seriously, Your Honor. Anyway, you may continue your testimony, witness. That was it? That's all she... Okay. That flame, I never saw anything like it. It left me speechless. I couldn't so much as scream. Hold it! It must have been pretty terrifying, huh? Yes, it's the kind of thing you only read about in books. The moment that pillar of fire erupted, I could feel my throat tightening up. It was so difficult to breathe, I couldn't even manage so much as a scream. Quite. After all, the flames engulfed the scene in the blink of an eye. Yes, I'm sorry, that's why I can't really remember. So you can't remember the number of people at the crime scene? Naturally, that is understandable, witness. That's also why I was a little late getting to the scene compared to the others. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you might say that. That's why she put herself at the outskirts of the map. I heard the tiniest cry when I turned around. The blighters were roasted. What do you mean turned around? What do you mean turned around? Where, what were you? So you would have seen the girl if you were facing the wrong way. Did you see her there? Sir? Hold it! The tiniest cry? It might have been someone saying the incantation for that spell. My memory's kind of hazy on that one. Scared me good, though. Never jumped up to me feet so fast in all me life. Nearly had a heart attack, I tell you. So you were facing the wrong way and you were sitting down? Jumped up? Strike! I was still raining cats and dogs, so being the resourceful chap I am, I decided to doze under a tree for a bit. And that's so. Oh no. What does she say if she doesn't have anything to talk about? What do you want? Do you have something to say about the testimony? I got far more important things in my mind right now, like will my boss fire me if I don't sell any flowers tonight? Huh? He fires me, he fires me not. He fires me, he fires me not. Nope, she's got nothing, Nick, except maybe the sack. I honestly don't think being a flower seller could be so stressful. Didn't think. Continue with your testimony! Yep. Nope, we go back. Hold it! Yeah. You have a flower selling boss? Stuff out here. Still raining cats and dogs, me and the resourceful chap I am. I decided to doze under a tree for a bit. So you slept under a tree in the rain. Why am I not surprised? Anyway, I tried to put out the fire by chucking some of me drink at it. Amazingly, didn't do much good, though. Right. They ended up roasted, huh? Turns out magic won that fight, all right. This guy is unbelievable. Hmm. Good thing he wasn't drinking alcohol, because that would have been bad on the fire. Hold it! Me thinking juice. 
Hey, <laughs> Shay. Hang on. Is everything all right, Mr. Wordsmith? What is that you want this time, young one? I just wanted to know if you had any thoughts on the testimony just now. Ah, uh, yes, uh, thoughts about slumbering under trees, you mean? Slumbering? I often find myself weaving the most intricate of dreams under that very tree. Of course, I could not nap tonight. Not with that uncouth man usurping my special dreaming spot, could I? Are you using this cross-examination to argue over a napping spot? Let us hope such arguments do not lead to any criminal acts in the future. Witness, please continue your testimony. Okay. Peak old man design. I heard the incantation, the flames erupted, I'm certain of it. I only saw three people there with us. Hold it! Confirm so, guys. Yeah, he, he claims that the guy was there under the tree. Are you absolutely certain? Well, I believe so, but then when you think about it, can anyone really be absolutely certain of anything? It worries me that you're saying that in the middle of a cross-examination. I believe the witness means that there is no way she can be certain whether there were four witnesses or five at the crime scene. Anyhow, there was a matter of great importance that Snowy and I had to tend to. Uh, you mean... That's right, the milk! If any soot had gone into that milk, it would be the tragedy to end all tragedies. Overflowing his bug. Also, I realized you can use the circle pad to slide it around, which is a little bit easier than the. He's fine. Uh huh. I see. No use crying over spoiled milk, I say. As I was saying, I ran as fast as I could to get the girl away from the flames. I took the milk bucket from her and wrapped it up in my scarf. It doesn't look like there's anything out of place in her testimony except for maybe your priorities. We've lost the plot. We're so far from the plot. Hold it! Alright. Yes, yeah, certain? Eh. 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 The soot! It would be a tragedy! Mm hmm. Hang on! Luke fell asleep a while ago. <laughs> He's just like face down in a pool of jam. Could I stop you there, mister? Mister! <laughs> Whoa, tone down the volume, Bluey. That's my line. Is it? Does anything come to mind regarding Miss Mary's testimony? Nope, not really. Nothing important anyways. Just that I think this old lady's full of it. Huh? I'm talking about the milk, man, the milk! You'll know the second you try the stuff. Ain't nothing to write home about, let me tell you. What are you saying, you dolt? Who on earth would let you drink anything as delicious as the milk from my farm? A ruffian like you is better served by whatever unthinkable liquid is in that never-ending mug of yours. You said it, Snowy. Are you guys using this cross-examination to argue over milk? I am the milkman. Let us hope such arguments do not lead to any criminal acts in the future. Witness, please continue your testimony. He's still just some guy, 100%. As I said, there are only three others present like that man there who is stumbling around like a newborn calf. Was he, was he in viewing distance? Who was he near? Okay, so I'm thinking that he passed by his napping spot Wound up over here and might have seen this guy out in the distance. So almost everyone is accounted for except for Kira. I know I'm already kind of biased towards her or against her, but I'm trying to figure it out. Hold it. See who he says. So including yourself, there were a total of four witnesses of the crime scene, correct? Mm, that is how it has come to pass. By the way, what do you mean by stumbling around like a newborn calf? Ah, yes, that was a man as inebriated as he was loud. Quite the humorous sight it was, I dare say. Never mind. He saw some guy. He must mean the witness permanently glued to his cup of whatever it is he's drinking. Glue? When I saw the flames rise up into the sky, I wondered myself, my word, whatever could that be? However, I could not simply walk over to check. My knees were a bit weak from shock, you see. 
That's when the wobbly-legged gentleman came running over. Who was upset about that? Him again? Okay. The next thing I knew, he tripped over with all the grace of a grizzly bear on stilts. A responsible adult should know better than to go stumbling around in the dead of night. That certainly doesn't surprise me. Mmm, Gru. I would wonder just why he stumbled. Why on earth, indeed? Is that it for the testimony? Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? I hate to say it, but it looked like there weren't any contradictions. Is that right? Hmm, just as I thought. I suppose the only option at present is to try and coax some more information from the witnesses. You mean catching them off guard, right? Precisely. All right, it's worth a shot. Let's see how they respond to a little hard questioning. You gotta get him. You gotta get him. Hold it. Why was he stumbling around? Yeah, this is just the second trial. All right. Wobbly leg gentlemen came running over. Hang on! Is something the matter, mister? Mister! Whoa! Toe down the volume, Bluey! Why is this the same thing? Sir Blue Knight, next time please think before trying to press this witness. Looks like this guy even managed to scare Barnum half to death. Now then, sir, about Mr. Wordsmith's testimony just now. He claimed you were stumbling around. What does he mean by that? I'm gonna set the record straight right now. In no way was I stumbling around anywhere. I'd like to think of it more like staggering with style. A responsible adult should know better than to go stumbling around in the dead of night. Hey, look, I don't just go stumbling around like some clumsy idiot. I got more sense than that. But anyway, I kind of tripped over a large stone. I mean, you don't exactly see what's on the ground in front of you when you're running at full pelt, right? So, you could say I put me life out on the line, proving that you really need to watch where you're going when you run. How courageous of you. Someone give this guy a medal. My lord, this testimony is a meaningless waste of everyone's time. Well, Defender, is there a point to this particular line of questioning? Is there anything worth pursuing here? What should I do? Question further. The witness stated earlier that he tripped over a large stone. Mister, I have one question for you. Why weren't you watching what was in front of you? Well, to be honest with you, it ain't much of a real reason, but something suddenly caught me attention. Out of nowhere, I sort of heard someone call out me name. You heard your name. Is his name Ignaz? Or like Ignatius or something? Of course I turned around when I heard it. Who wouldn't? When a woman calls your name, you pay attention, am I right? So, you heard someone call out, Hey, you, from behind, you mean? But I said they called up me name! How many guys do you know called, Hey, you? <laughs> me name is Amir! And don't you forget it, Bluey, you hear me? So that's, that's the other spell. Dimir. Mm-hmm. Okay. I must say, this gentleman really does not strike me as an emir. No more some guy. You know, Professor, it's not a very memorable name, huh? That's harsh. Honorable witnesses, is there anyone among you who was aware of this man's name prior to now? Not at all. He's always just been Mr. to me. A knight's name is only as good as the name of the sword he carries. When supper is the first I've heard of this, I dare say I do not expect his name to be one such as Amir. I'm sorry, but I didn't know his name either. I only remember the names of my most loyal customers. Okay, looks like absolutely no one knew this witness's name. You know, it ain't really much of a surprise to me either. But seriously, I definitely heard someone call me name. When you get to be me age. 
You really start to wonder when you'll find that true love, you know? I thought that pretty voice tonight might have been me sweetie. Your Honor. I don't believe we should be so quick to label Mr. Amir's testimony meaningless, would you not agree? I request that the witness add this amusing anecdote to his testimony. Thank you for the raccoon. Try to keep things relevant to the future. Understood. Witness, amend your testimony, but please reflect only the important points of your story. I'm telling you, I heard someone call me name, and I was looking around trying to find them. I hurried to the scene, but then I ended up tripping when I heard someone call me name from behind. Hold it! Excuse me. M I, I mean, Amir. Don't sweat it, Bluey. Mr. Hey, you, it's all the same to me. You stated that you heard your name being called from behind. Are you absolutely sure about that? Uh, well, uh, right or wrong, sure sounded like me name. I mean, what else could it have been? I wouldn't have remembered it happening if I hadn't been heard something, right? Still, maybe there's a chance I just imagined it, huh? But anyway, I remember it came from somewhere behind me. From somewhere behind you. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? M uh, Amir's memory isn't the most accurate, but if what he says is true, there's definitely something there. Something, you say? Might you mean a contradiction? Yeah, I think so. Although, I don't know. There's something strange about his testimony. I don't see any decisive evidence in the court record that can help. Do you mean to say you found a contradiction that cannot be supported by the evidence? Objection! My lord, this line of interrogation is a complete waste of the court's time. Hmm. Defender, I must warn you from here on, any unnecessary questioning will be dealt with accordingly. If I don't answer correctly here, it's curtains for the trail and for a spell. Uh... Mm, just... I love being able to save from the pause screen. If you are intent on finding a fault in this witness's testimony, you will need to present decisive evidence to back up your claims. It's not one single piece of decisive evidence in the court record. What do I do now? Mr. Wright. Mr. Layton! I have an idea. Run! I, I believe there is a weapon of sorts with which you may be able to expose this contradiction without the need of evidence. A weapon? Now, Defender, give us your answer. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. The defense finds that the witness's testimony contains a clear contradiction. Your Honor. The defense... Yeah, Layton goes, I have a weapon that can help. And he just puts a gun down in front of him. The defense believes there is a huge contradiction in the witness's testimony. Objection. I love how long he holds that for. What is this? You must be an even bigger fool than I thought, Sir Blue Knight. You really do not possess even a sliver of common sense, do you? Objection. If I may interrupt for just a moment, Inquisitor Barnum. Allow me to ask you this. What need is there for common sense in a world that forgoes using it? Accordingly, I must humbly ask that you discard such a manner of thinking. Whatever do you mean? You have my utmost- Why is he back over there? You have my utmost thanks for placing your trust in me, Mr. Wright. Let us discuss the one remaining weapon in this cross-examination. The remaining weapon? This trial has taught us a valuable new technique to be used in the courtroom, has it not? You mean questioning, right, Professor? He can teleport. Objection. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Indeed it is, Luke. Each of the witnesses in this trial has given their own account of what occurred. Therefore, whenever one witness has testified, the other remaining witnesses have listened. That gives me an idea. In addition to catching a witness off guard and questioning them about another's testimony, there is one more thing. There's something else we can get from a five-person cross-examination. That's right. Of course. Now can I present evidence during the thing? Contradictions. 
Should one witness's testimony differ from another's testimony, then I suppose that in itself can also be considered a contradiction, can it not? Testimony contradicting testimony? I never would have thought of that until now. Enough, Sir Blue Knight. Are you prepared to present to the court evidence proving the contradiction within the witness's testimony? No. The witness's testimony does not contradict any evidence. It contradicts a testimony. Shit. What are you talking about? It is time. Where did Luke go? Who's Luke? Have a look at the touch screen. There you will see the testimony of the witness in question, as well as those of other witnesses. Keep your eyes peeled and identify the contradicting testimony. All right, let's give this another shot, Nick. And make sure you don't forget to take a look at the court record, too. Hmm. Give me a professor. Probably chill, but heart hopes it's a base. Whatever it is, it's rad. I hurried to the scene, but I ended up tripping when I heard someone call my name from behind. Uh, you wish to know where we're all standing tonight matters not, but the flames not burn just the same. That flame never said anything like it. Let me speak just I couldn't so much as scream. I think the incantation, the flames suddenly wrapped them sooner, but there were like three people there with us. Only like three others, like the man there, was stumbling around like a newborn calf. Which one of these contradicts what he's talking about? Um. <laughs> This is from this is from this is his name is Amir. Yeah. Uh. I heard this thing when I ended up tripping when I heard someone call me name from behind while I was hurrying to the scene. I mean, I mean, the way the wordsmith presents it just makes it seem like he wasn't heading in any one direction. So I guess that's the contradiction, but that doesn't seem especially strong as a contradiction, but it's literally, that's literally it. That's all I can think of. Let's go. Objection. Yeah, I know I have hints. Young, a contradiction lies in this witness's testimony. Uh, please, just a moment, Mr. Wright. I made Leighton disappointed. Perhaps it'd be wise not to leave this quite so up to chance. I'm, I mean, I'm not randomly guessing. But I've got nothing but the witnesses' testimonies to work from. It's not just the testimonies, Mr. Wright. I recommend you have another look at the court record. The court record. This man testified he heard a voice call his name from behind. The important thing here is the position of all parties at the scene. The guy should bring the witnesses' position the testimonies. Time three thing this one. Okay. So am I just supposed to point at Kira on the map? How sad. It would seem the only contradiction to this witness's testimony is you. How is that? makes sense. Just give me one more chance. One of these witnesses definitely contradicts this man's testimony, and that person is... So it's not what they said, it's where they were standing. Okay, well... I thought that was gonna be relevant. Bum, ba -da, ba -ba -ba -da. Wait, so I'm not... So I'm saying it's her. Objection! Oh! The person contradicting this man's testimony is none other than you. They're pointing at different people. For the record, they are pointing at different people right now. And they're also both pointing at um the 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 uh the inquisitor Barnum. They're they're not pointing Miss Kira. Are you both pointing at me? You, uh, you! Over there! Oh my, oh, holy shit. Images that go hard. At the time of the, look at his stupid face. At the time of the incident, that man heard someone's voice call his name. Oh yeah, it's chugging. The poor DS. That voice belonged to you, Miss Kira. It could not have been anyone else. 
And yet, in your testimony, you stated that you were in such shock during tonight's events that you couldn't even speak. Oh, that is, a, okay, that is a contradiction. Even chugs on emulators? Yeah, I mean, I'm not even using an emulator. Imagine turning on the stereoscopic 3D for that, too. He'd be like, yeah. Um. I thought this game was called Layton Versus Right. I guess we'll see if that Versus ever comes into play, but so far, we're just the great team. Get him! This is a clear contradiction. Objection! But what? What is the meaning of this, Defender? Can you really claim to trust this sham of a witness and his sham of a testimony? Objection! That man's character is beside the point. His testimony is anything but a sham. As he watched the flames erupt, his attention was drawn to a voice behind him, which in turn made him fall over. He heard a woman's voice calling his name. A very concrete reason, and reason enough to believe his testimony. Objection! Crazy logic versus dumb logic in a world that has no logic. If it is as you say, then explain why you feel this witness is somehow responsible. That's right, why me? People barely hear me when I'm out selling my flowers. That's how soft my voice is. And besides, there was another woman at the scene, wasn't there? Me? What are you getting at, young lady? Do you honestly think a woman my age will be out late at night in the forest, flirting with questionable men? Besides, I didn't even know this pathetic man's name. How could I have called out to him? Neither did I, and even if I did know his name, do you really think he's the kind of guy any self-respecting girl would want? Come on, ladies, I, I'm standing right here, you know. Um, as I was saying, the only person that guy could have heard from behind him was you, Miss Kira. The defense wishes to present evidence to prove this claim. Get her ass! To accuse a witness like this young lady here, why this is simply unheard of. I must warn you, Defender, if you cannot prove your accusation to this court, you will see the underside of my gavel. Show us the evidence proving this young lady was the one who called out to this man at the time of the crime. Uh, is it just the map? I think all I have to go off of is the map. Because... I, I, yeah, because it seems like after this might have to be like, Well, I don't know his name. I'll be like, you didn't say his name. So, yeah, map. Look at this photo, map. Take that! Take a look at this, and you'll have your answer. This is the crime scene sketch. You can see the position of each witness during the crime. The only person that he could possibly have heard from behind him was none other than Miss Kira. Objection! But if that's where she actually was, how was she close enough to cast the flame spell? Listen here, Sir Blue Knight. I will only tell you this one more time. A sham of a witness yields only a sham of a testimony. That's all there is to it. <laughs> He's so sad now. Did you in fact see this flower girl's face? Uh, you know, now that you mention it, seeing as I'd fallen down and all, I don't think I saw her face. Okay, but you heard her voice, right? Hmm, let me think. The voice came out of nowhere, it was kind of high-pitched, and I guess it kind of sounded like her, but I can't say whether or not it was this girl's voice. And there you have it, Sir Blue Knight. Such a pity. Huh? My lord, it is clear that the defense's claim is nothing but a pointless waste of the court's time. I recommend you deliver unto them a penalty befitting such behavior. Hmm, indeed, Inquisitor. Ready yourself, Defender. Heh, 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 heh. What is that laughter? Pardon me, my lord. It looks like you've finally arrived at a decision. That means this has nothing to do with me. Uh-huh. Isn't that right, Inquisitor Barnum? 
What are you saying? I'm saying that it's time for me to stop peddling testimony and get back to peddling flowers. I mean, look at all these flowers left over. It's gonna take until sunrise to sell them all if I stay here any longer. Just let the goat eat the rest. Or you can eat the rest. Or maybe, my lord, you and the rest of the courts would be interested in buying my entire stock of flowers to help a girl out. Uh, no, I don't think I mean. Then it's settled. Now, if you'll excuse me, my apologies for the interruption. Uh, understood. The court will dismiss the witness. No, the court will not. Well, Miss Kira, it would seem you are beginning to show the court your true colors. Oh, whatever do you mean? Okay, then. Everyone, it looks like that's that. Hold it! You can't leave yet. This cross-examination isn't over. Now that's funny. You say it isn't over, and yet the rest of the court seems to think otherwise. Isn't that right, Inquisitor Barnum? The Inqu Inquisition maintains that the real witch is the accused Espella Cantabella. This girl is nothing more than a witness. As such, the courts cannot force her to stay against her will. This is bad. If they let her walk out now... Nick, do you think she could be... The real witch? You really like throwing around accusations, don't you, Sir Defender? Let me spell it out for you. She said spell! One last time, so even you can understand. I didn't know this man's name at all before today. I still don't remember it. So, how could I have called out to him? Do you get it now? Now then, until we meet again, don't forget to buy some flowers on your way home, everyone. Boop. Hold it. He hold it. Hold that jam, Luke. I'm holding it. One moment, please, Miss Kira. Is there something else you wanted? You don't seem to realize what you just let slip. What are you talking about? This man testified that he heard his name called at the crime scene. However, you had no knowledge of his name at the time. Is that correct? That's right. This weirdo just is just, he's just imagining things. Like I said, I've already forgotten his name, even though he told it to us earlier. There is just one problem, Miss Kira. I can't believe that Kira was the killer. Namely, what the voice he heard tonight was actually saying. Huh? <laughs> well, what do you mean? That's obvious. It was a name, wasn't it? Uh, what was that name again? My lord, I'm still here, you know. You're saying that that what this man heard tonight wasn't a name, but rather something else entirely? Yeah. Shelly de Kira. How many times? Indeed I am, Inquisitor Barnum. Something else. Aha! Holy shit. There's only one other thing. It could be... I'm in my thinking pose. Imagine standing across the courtroom from that. It's a stretch, but the possibility is there. We stretch nothing. It's definitely what happened. That's right, Mr. Wright. That single possibility is the key to solving this mystery. Hmm. Is the defense ready to present its evidence to the court? Uh, this is ridiculous. I demand you let me go this instant. Nuh-uh. Witness, what you are being accused of is not to be taken lightly. You will not leave this courtroom so long as any reasonable doubt remains. Defender, you may present your evidence. I do like the fake out where the UI popped up and everything. Only to be interrupted by her. That was good. Um, what, what, what he, she was really saying... Demir, Take that! Excuse me, mister. Um, I'm sorry, what's your name again? You've, uh, you got a name that no one seems to be able to remember for some reason. It's Amir! My name's Amir, darn it! How many times have I gotta say it? No matter the number of times you say it, you do not look like an Amir. 
Again, I only remember the most my most loyal customers' names. He doesn't look like he could afford even a single daisy. Well, come on, guys. Stop kicking a guy when he's down. Mr. Amir, what you heard tonight at the crime scene was not your name. The silly music is just kind of his theme song, I guess. Your name just so happens to sound exactly like a certain other name. Another name? Book. Phoenix knows how to read. The answer's right here in this tome. I'm talking about Amir. Amir? What he actually heard at the time wasn't his own name. Oh, I completely glossed over that, huh? The name of the spell is Demir, but Amir. Oh, Demir makes it vanish. Amir makes it reappear. So that's even more. I thought she said Demir, and it was close enough. No, she literally said Amir. Uh, what he actually heard at the time wasn't his own name. It was the name of a magical incantation. I'm glad I wasn't the only one to gloss over that. Miss Kira, have you forgotten what you said just a few minutes ago? You quite clearly stated you didn't know this man's name. Ah, objection! Sir Blue Knight, let me get this straight. You're saying that the Amir heard by the witness was actually said by this flower girl? And that it was not his name at all, but rather the incantation of a magic spell? The defense proposes the following. The true criminal, this supposed witch, is not the defendant, Mrs. Spella Cantabella. But instead, the witness who has heard uttering the magic incantation, Miss Kira, she's our witch. You used magic to vanish from the scene and tried to frame Miss Cantabella instead. No! What just happened? Is that girl? Is the spell of really not a witch? Unbelievable! I've never heard anything like this! Inquisitor Barnum! Have those two really defeated Inquisitor Barnum? Objection! An impressive display, Sir Blue Knight. It would seem you have finally managed to hone your blade. However, I believe that blade's edge is already beginning to dull. What do you mean? I am referring to a contradiction, naturally. Eh? Hey, that's my line. My lord, the Inquisition would like to set the record straight regarding what transpired this evening. Very well, Inquisitor Barnum. Sir Blue Knight, you claim the following. At the time of the crime, the accused of Spella Cantabella was surrounded by the two rogues. Then, in order to frame the accused as a witch, Miss Kira cast the spell Demir and made herself vanish. She then moved in closer to the victims. <laughs> At which point, she cast Ignaze. It was muddy as fuck. There should be footprints everywhere. Granted, a bunch of people rushed to the scene. Thus causing the incident seen by our witnesses tonight. They're dead. Yeah, but it was comical. Indeed, that does seem to be the claim. The problem is what happened next. There is a contradiction in the defense's account of Miss Kira's movements. A contradiction? In her move, what's this? Is the contradiction that I pointed out? That if he was like, oh my god, a fire, and rushed right when he heard her say, Amir, that's too much distance for her to have traveled that fast? Maybe. Allow me to continue. The witnesses have stated that they each ventured out towards the crime scene. Which is when Miss Kira, the witch, made her way to this point where, while still invisible. When she arrived at said spot, she then cast a mirror and it reappeared to join the other witnesses. And there you have it. That is accurate, isn't it, Sir Blue Knight? Yeah, huh? That's correct. Then Mr. Amir heard her call his name. 
Well then, I have but one question that I would like you to answer. Why would a witch need to do such a thing? But what, what, what do you mean? Supposing Miss Kira were a witch, surely she would not have made the conscious decision to reappear when she did. One would imagine she would remain hidden and flee the crime scene. Yeah, that does make sense. You're quite right! That's what I'd do if I was a witch! Given that point, there would be no viable reason for her to recite the incantation. In other words... It is inconceivable that this flower seller, Miss Kira, could be a witch. What? What, what just happened? Is that girl? Is Kira really not a witch? Inquisitor Bottom just turned the entire trial right around. Just what I'd expect from Labyrinthia's Sword of Justice. <laughs> Look at Phoenix's face. That face from the front was very good. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's right. You all heard it. It's just as Inquisitor Barnum said. Huh? Chat, come up. That that was fast, Chat. From her face changed to everyone in Chat started mashing. Me, a witch. The idea is laughable. Not good. She's completely bounced back onto her feet. Oh, we were so close, too. I can't believe it was in the bottom. Can he see it? You just have to take one good look at her. It's obvious she's the real witch here. Remember, Mr. Wright, at times like this, a cool head will prevail. Mr. Layton. Three games of the same rigmarole. You're not wrong. I'm just shocked at the speed with which everyone in chat was like, Oh no! Uh, I'm sure you have had to fight your way out of circumstances such as these many times before. The situation is no different. As a defense attorney, what would you usually do at such a time? Uh, call on Mia to tell me what to do, but only vaguely hint at it, so I still have to figure it out on my own. Or random bullshit go, that too. What would I usually do? What would Phoenix do on a bracelet? Of course, there's only one thing that can get me out of a situation like this. Lie like a dog. I've got to flip this case on its head and think outside the box. It would seem the defense has nothing further to add. Why, of course, that's because everyone knows the truth. They know that girl right there is the real witch. That settles it then. Go ahead and deliver your verdict, my lord. Objection! The situation is exactly as you described, Inquisitor Bottom. It really doesn't make much sense for the witch to have used a mirror. Regardless, the defense still maintains that Miss Kira did utter that incantation and make herself reappear. Now the question is. For what reason? If she really didn't have to use that spell, then why use it in the first place? If I can find the answer to that question, then this entire case will start to unravel. Most fascinating. Very well. Allow us to hear this theory of yours. Tell the court why it was necessary for the witch to appear at the crime scene. Well, we're still in the game. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. You're still using logic. Why are you doing that? The reason Miss Cure reappeared the crime, the scene of the crime. Hold on. Hold on, Your Honor. Hold on. Wait. One moment. Hold on. Wait. The reason why she reappeared at the scene of the crime was to become a witness, to give herself an alibi, to cover up her crime. Hmm. I mean, I would just think of an alibi, but let me, hold on. She would not necessarily want to become a witness. Covering up probably makes sense if she fucked up and needed to go back. 
that's all the same thing. Not quite. To me, become a witness implies she wanted to be in court. To give herself an alibi would just be to be like, it couldn't have been me. Although being invisible is already a pretty damn strong alibi. Um, to cover up for a crime is like the most logical re- I'm using logic though, that's the problem. Hmm. What did she fuck up then? It, well, well, okay, hold on. Well, one part of this puzzle, it doesn't make sense, puzzle, is that she used the witch's staff, right? And then ran away from the scene, made herself visible again, and then had to put the staff back at the scene of the crime. So that's not so much a cover-up. Well, I guess it is kind of a cover-up, but it's more like a, a, a planting evidence. Um... Because the entire time, the question has been, if the staff was invisible, when did it, who cast magic to make it reappear? It just kind of showed up and then Barnum's like, I found it. So. Would she stay invisible if she didn't use it? Presumably, you need the staff in order to cast the magic. Well, this says it requires the scepter. This one doesn't. It d actually, it says simply chant a mirror to make it reappear. So actually, that implies you don't need the staff. So she could have just dropped, although the staff itself would have stayed invisible. I don't know how it works. Do you need the staff for a mirror? Well, I mean, the, the, the crystal's in the staff. I don't know. Did she just leave it behind? Yeah, I don't, it's not really clear how, I guess a mirror just dispels anything made it invisible by it. Um, I'm just gonna say it was to cover up a crime because the other two aren't really strong enough to me. I can't think of any other possibility. This has to be the answer. Isn't it obvious? She was trying to cover up her own crime. Now is that right? Tell me, why would she do that? Well, just give me a minute. I'm getting to that part. That will not be necessary, Sir Blue Knight. Huh? I will not forget, I forgot. What I forgot? Think about it. What would she have to hide if no one could have seen her to begin with? Footprints? <laughs> you heard the good Inquisitor? No matter how you look at it, there'd be no reason for me to reappear. Assuming I was the criminal, that is. Skull cat mouth. Ugh. I can't Objection. argue with her this time. Layton? Was it a fake choice? No. Pardon the interruption, but that's not necessarily the case. Mr. Layton! Oh, she's fine. Explain yourself, Sir Top Hat. Sir Hat of Toppington, you have stated that Miss Kira had no reason to reappear. However, the situation changed and it became necessary for her to show herself. Did she not realize how many witnesses there were or something? Isn't that right, Miss Kira? Uh-huh. What, what, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you mean. Sir Topham Hat, it would seem the defense must clarify their arguments with evidence. Mr. Wright! Sorry, I thought it was Luke. Mr. Wright, I believe that Miss Kira did not intend to reveal herself at the crime scene. Rather, that something occurred which forced this young lady to make herself reappear. What well, was so important that she had to reappear and risk getting spotted? Defender, tell the court why it would have been necessary for the witch to appear at the crime scene. Was it her glasses? Did she lose her glasses at the crime scene? It hasn't come up yet. She says she lost them a few days before. She could be lying about that. What else could it be? Uh, these are which guys weren't too males in his life. They, they said something happened. So she would have left and then something happened? Because if she just left her glasses, she could have gone back while being visible. Sorry, invisible. And then be like, you want to grab my glasses when people aren't looking or something. The broken glass from the lantern. Oh. 
the lantern sploosh and the sound of glass breaking were two different things. I mean, that does make sense. I didn't think of the glasses being shattered as being the, uh, that's pretty good misdirection if that's the case. So maybe she dropped her glasses and someone stepped on them or something. I mean, well, I don't know, cause the witnesses said that they heard, he was like, oh, I heard a sploosh and she was like, I heard glass break and it startled me. So that implies that it happened around the same time as the fire going off. So I still don't know. I mean, I'll try it because fuck it. I don't know what else makes sense, but take that. I'm really not clear. Miss Kira. Did we get it? You usually wear glasses. Is that correct? Huh? Ma'am, it's like I already told you. I lost my glasses a few days ago. Are you absolutely sure about that? Oh, because also if her glasses were left at the crime, crime scene and then broken, that'd make it really hard for her to be like, I wasn't there. Are you absolutely sure about that? Normal, innocent person behavior. Correct. Or did you not in fact lose them tonight during the crime? Of course not. Those flowers have good nutrients in them. Perhaps you accidentally dropped them while you were committing the crime. Then, as you were attempting to make your escape, you noticed they were gone. Therefore, you made yourself reappear in order to search for your missing glasses. It's really intense when Lane slams his hand down and then points. Get her ass! We're gonna get this lady murdered, for the record. <laughs> Like, like, that happens in Ace Attorney as well, but it's kind of fuzzy. It's like, well, if you find the person who's actually the, the culprit, or, or, or the, the, yeah, the culprit, then it's like, you know, maybe they're executed by the state some... She's gonna be dipped into a pit of fire in front of us in, like, five minutes. It's a bit fucked. Anyway, uh, good. No! Let a gentleman show you how to slam your hand on a desk. Mr. Wright, I slammed my penis in the car door. How absurd! Such baseless conjecture! I'm not trying to. What you propose is fundamentally flawed. What do you mean? Let us assume hypothetically that the witch did in fact drop this evidence. That does not explain what purpose it would serve for her to make herself reappear. It would still make more sense for her to escape under cover of darkness. Objection. Nuh uh. Unfortunately, Inquisitor Barnum, such a plan was simply not possible. <laughs> Mr. Wright, do you understand what I'm suggesting? Yes! He means the reason Miss Kira made herself reappear at the crime scene. Okay, this is it. Defender, enlighten us. Why did the witness feel the need to make herself reappear? Good question. That's an excellent question, Your Honor. Oh, someone found her glasses? She couldn't find her glasses? She broke her glasses. Done. The answer is clear, Your Honor. Unlike her vision, the lenses on her glasses must have broken. What do you mean, no? Clear, you say? Clear as day. How else do you explain the fact she's not wearing them right this minute? I mean, I thought that would be it. Thought that would be it. I thought that would be it. Makes sense to me. Perhaps your point is not as clear as you thought. I love when Luke is doing the same pose as him. It's not as clear as you thought it was. I think my only point, my thing broken is my confidence. We can end this in one fell swoop. Now then, Mr. Wright, give us a bit more thought. Got it. Defender, enlighten us. I didn't take damage for that? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess someone found her glasses then. In which case, she couldn't find them. Answer, Shrimple, she couldn't find them. She could not find them. If you've noticed, she's still not wearing her glasses right now. Objection. Hold a moment, Sir Blue Knight. What does that have to do with anything? 
That's right, it doesn't change a single thing. Objection. That's where you're wrong. In fact, it changes things quite a bit. Wait, is this the right answer? Tonight, the two victims were engulfed by flames courtesy of a magic spell. That very instant, four witnesses saw the flames erupt at the scene. It was at that point. I mean, I guess if someone found the glasses, they would have been like, I found your glasses. How was this the, that's something you didn't expect occurred. You suddenly lost your glasses. How does this change anything? That's right. You were scared that if your glasses were discovered at the scene of the crime, you would be suspected of being a witch. Objection. What foolishness, even if her glasses were found. She could simply have explained that she dropped them there days before the crime happened. Objection. I'm afraid that is not a possibility, Inquisitor Barnum. Well, what did you say? If you recall, it had been raining quite heavily at the crime scene beforehand. Had she stated that she dropped her glasses before the crime, then naturally, one would expect the glasses to be soaked in water and covered in mud. However, the rain had already stopped at the time the crime itself was committed. In other words... One look at the pair of clean, dry glasses would reveal she had dropped them later, thus implicating her as the witch. They would have dropped into mud. What are you talking about? I doubt that the ground had fully dried in the five seconds since the rain stopped. There were puddles everywhere. What the? This sucks. No! After fire. Even still, I... Did the fire dry the mud? That would be one thing. If the fire just like caked all the mud and then it was landed on top, I, whatever. I should have known I was perfecting my rainfall rending technique in the forest. And not once during the rainfall did I see that flower maiden traveling along the nearby path. That's not all. In order to frame Miss Cantabella as the witch, you needed to leave this witch's scepter behind at the scene of the crime. That's why I was like, she needed to, whatever. I see, that would be the most definitive evidence that she is the witch. The objective here was to have somebody else discover the staff at the scene. Alas, that person was I. However, no doubt you came to realize that one can deduce which spells were used simply by examining the magic gems on the scepter. In this case, one can see that the witch must have used Demir to vanish from sight and make her escape. That's why, Miss Kira, you left with you were left with no option but to reappear at the crime scene. Now is the only way for you to avoid suspicion if someone were to discover your glasses at the crime scene. So I was right earlier, just not right. You, by reappearing, you'd be able to explain that you simply dropped your glasses when you rushed to see what had happened. My god, they're so good together. What do you have to say to that, Miss Kira? You know, I've let you both ramble on and on, but... Playtime is over. So? So that's it, then? I'm a witch because I dropped my glasses? I must have said it how many times now? I lost my glasses days ago. Were you even listening? I'll say it again. Over a million times! I lost my glasses, I lost my glasses! Do you like evidence, Sir Defender? Do you love proof, Sir Top Hat? Then prove I dropped my glasses at the crime scene. Ha! You can't prove it! In other words... You lose. The mere fact that she said you lose implies that there is winning in the sense of her being a witch. She kind of just admitted that she's a witch, but okay. Um. Yeah. That is correct. Proving such a thing would indeed be impossible. To prove that the witness dropped her glasses at the crime scene, 
What say you, Inquisitor? Tis indeed a question of proof, my lord. These glasses have been missing from the very beginning. The Knights of the Inquisition found no trace of these glasses anywhere near the crime scene. Therefore, this witness cannot in any way be accused of being a witch. Have you tried uh, uh, a set of scales? See if she's uh, heavier than, what was it? Some chickens or something? You heard the man. But we were so close. Oh, as a duck. How could I forget that? She's heavier than a duck. That witch is, that girl's a witch. Cut anyone else see that? What should we do, Professor? Ooh! Ooh! Well, it would seem the young lady has finished what she had to say. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Wright? Yes, it certainly looks that way, Mr. Layton. And then they kissed. What? What is with that face? Do you find something funny here? It is as you said, Inquisitor Barnum. Explain. The defense raises just one further question. Why were you unable to find those glasses? What? And what do you mean? You must have searched the area quite thoroughly looking for them. Did they even know to be looking for glasses? And yet, even now, the knights have been unable to locate those glasses. Did you ever wonder why? Yes, that has become quite the mystery. Surely they must be around somewhere. The glasses were lost to the wolves. That is the only explanation. There is still one remaining piece that you have not... Sorry, one remaining place that you have not searched tonight. Underneath the wheelchair. What did you say? The glasses were supposedly not found at the crime scene, leaving only one other possible place. What is this? You two. Have at you, Sir Blue Knight. Draw your blade and reveal to the court where the glasses are supposedly hiding. Looks like I've somehow managed to make it through my first witch trial. It all comes down to this. The final piece of evidence. Time to clear up this case once and for all. I have no idea. I leave the rest in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. The piece of evidence pointing to the one place not searched tonight is... Um, the milk. It's in the milk. It actually, it could, it, it might be. Could be. Could, it could be, in, it could be in the milk. Hold on. Because she came back. Didn't the glasses break? Someone heard glass shattering, right? I, so, if it would, okay, if the, if somehow she's setting on fire, Espella freaks out, drops the milk or whatever, glasses fall into a bucket of milk, then Mary goes, hee hee, see you later steals the milk, then she wouldn't have any way to get the milk back, I guess. But again, how did it wind up in the milk? Um, alternatively, it could be inside the broken lantern, I guess, but that would probably be visible at a glance. It's the milk, isn't it? If it's not, then this is amazing because the idea of it is stupid. So... Take that. Take that! Tonight! We're gonna have ourselves a real good milk. I feel thirsty. And the world is turning calcium, yeah. There was one thing that was carried away from the crime scene right under everyone's noses. Carried away? Don't milk me. 
Now, that's bad. I'm speaking, of course, about the milk. So the sploosh wasn't anything dropping into a puddle. The sploosh was glasses falling in the milk. Jesus Christ. Ah. That's the milk bucket that disappeared from the crime scene. It's only case two. Thus far, the defense's claim that the glasses were dropped at the crime scene has been regarded as mere speculation. However, if, Miss Kira, we find your glasses within the contents of this milk bucket, then our mere speculation will suddenly become fact. What manner of witchery? What are you talking about? You're crazy! Just crazy! Crazy like a fox who's thirsty for milk. No way can my glasses be inside that stupid bucket! That's just impossible! How about we quit with the speculation and actually find out? What do you say, Inquisitor Barnum? Thirsty? Th that'll just waste the court's time! Don't listen to them! Don't! I am pretty parched. Tis mandated that the Knights of the Inquisition always drink milk when dared to. Uh, investigate any and all possibilities during the course of a trial. You can't waste milk. My lord! The Inquisition requests that this milk bucket be searched immediately. Very well. Just give it to, uh, Emil. Amir, not Emil. Give it to Amir. Just let him chug the milk. And it's just milk. And this one really crunchy bit of milk. That's it. Oh! What? What? Okay. Alright. Okay. I'm recalibrating where my... where my thought processes need to be for the rest of the game. Miss Kira, as you can see, your glasses have been found inside the milk bucket. The truth is out. Nothing you say can change that now. Which leads us to the next question. Specifically, a question of when. When did you drop your glasses into the milk bucket? What? Why is this happening? This whole thing is ridiculous. The answer is obvious, isn't it? I dropped them afterwards, after I ran over to see the fire. I took a tiny peek inside that milk bucket. That's when they fell in. Objection! Don't be stupid, child. Snowy and I were at the scene first. We made sure to take that milk bucket before anyone else could get their grubby little hands on it. <laughs> we weren't going to let a single soul get anywhere near that sweet, creamy bucket of deliciousness. You can bet my farm on that. Poor Snowy. Yeah. Each of these four witnesses has stated that they heard the spell Ignaze being cast at the time of the incident. According to the Grand Grimoire, Ignaz summons a circle of flame within a one meter radius of the caster. In other words, the real witch must have been at Miss Cantabella's side at the time of the incident. Indeed. That is when the glasses fell into the milk bucket. Therefore, there's only one logical conclusion. Only one person who could be the true witch. Uh-huh. Miss Kira, you are the real witch. You! That person is you! They're still pointing at two different people. <laughs> She's gonna die now. Um. Like, she did burn two dudes to death, but oh, oh, no. Okay. What a very strange trial this has been. 
From the very beginning, we have all paid witness to a most unusual set of circumstances. A baker turned defender, a surprise extra witness, and now a not guilty verdict for the accused. And a super guilty verdict for you. And it's gonna be like, yay, with the confetti as she gets lowered into a pit of fire. <laughs> Never have I seen such a spectacle. Get it? Spectacles? Because glasses were... Why is no one laughing? Is this really happening? The girl inside the cage, she's the real witch? But what about that Ispella Cantabella girl? Your little gallows Miss humor. Kira. Gallows humor for someone else's gallows. Hmm. Yeah. Tell us why. Yeah. Why were you trying to frame Miss Cantabella? Layton's like, I'm out. I don't care about motivation. See you. You could easily have escaped the crime scene without a trace. There was no reason to frame anyone. This crime was a result of nothing but your overwhelming ill intent. To frame a person as a witch is to condemn that person to death by fire. And we've never made that mistake before. Surely you must know this. So why Espella Cantabella? Do you have any idea what it feels like to be a witch? What it feels like? I didn't ask for this. Okay, Adam Jensen. I didn't ask for these powers, but I have them. And now here I am, begging for my life. You did burn two men to death, though. So... I was living such a peaceful life until now. Selling flowers, getting scolded by my boss for not selling enough of them. That's why I was trying to put an end to these trials once and for all. Huh? Put an end to the trials. You all know what I mean! The one condition written in the story that will end these witch trials! When the great witch Bezella has been put to the flames and vanquished from this world, these trials will come to an end. Oh. We just gotta get Bezella murdered. Okay. This was my chance to finally end all this. At least that's what I thought. Why would murdering Espella get Bezella killed? Why? How? The sun had begun to set on that lonely forest path, and there wasn't a soul in sight. I always carried my hidden Talea Magica with me in case of a moment like this. Oh, it's, it's Magica, not Magica. I used my magic to expose that girl for what she really is. Uh, well. If I had been successful, then all these trials would finally end and I could go on living my peaceful life. Is she saying that a spell Cantabella is Bazella? Because that would be a twist. What? What? What are you saying? A am I hearing this correctly? But if you killed her without everyone going, oh, that's Bazella then the trials would continue. You have to prove that that's Bazella and then drop her in the fires for the... Are you actually accusing Espera Cantabella? Why do you think no one has ever seen the legendary Great Witch? It's because she's been hidden in our midst the entire time. No, no, no I know that people are stupid, but, like, genuinely, Espera could be Bazella. Yeah, she got grabbed by... Oh, an ominous figure. Hidden in our midst! <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't put it past you to come and be like, no, no, she's actually Bazella. That's fine. She's protected! She's hidden from us! It's all part of the story! A part of the story? Part of the story? Objection! Pining for the fjords? That's enough! Speak no more. A witch's existence cannot be justified. No, please! I know you've all noticed it too! You could end this! All of this! That girl! It's all because of that girl! I beg you! Please! She's... Please release me! Knights of the Court! Isn't it your duty to protect the people of this town? Give me another chance! That is where you're wrong. <gasps> it is indeed a knight's duty to protect. We are impelled to protect the citizens of Labyrinthia. 
against you and your ilk. Mr. Logic is not important to prove she's Bazella, it's important that she dies, no. Well, I don't know. That's the thing, is is if Bazella is killed and fired, does that magically make everything go back to normal, or does it not matter unless they know what they're doing? Eh. Mm. Mm. He's racist, yeah. The reason you were offered my protection yeah, until now was because your guilt was uncertain. There was the possibility that you were not a witch. The circumstances were such that it seemed another was guilty. That possibility has since disappeared, and your innocence along with it. You now find yourself at the other end of my sword. No. Vile witch, enemy of Labyrinthia, may the fires purge you from this land! Uh-oh. Bella! If... if it means putting an end to these horrible trials... Let me take her place. Let me be Bazella. Send me to the flames. That's not how it works. Are you actually Bazella or are you not? But please, if it would save her life... This trial has proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that this flower seller, Kira, is a witch. And according to the law, all those found to be witches will be executed. I love Luke in the wide shot. Did he say executed? He can't mean. Why didn't Leighton say that? He walked in the room and saw someone get executed. You don't have plausible deniability, Phoenix. This is most unsettling. Bailiff, ready the fire. Ready the fire. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <gasps> no. Uh. <laughs> no! Don't do this! She will be baked soon. Huh? Listen to me! Don't let her fool you! Isbella is the great witch! Hear me! Uh, there's no time to waste! She is Brazella! Take her! Trolls will be no more. The witch trolls will end. It's okay. Any moment now, she's gonna fire out of there going, mama, mama, and then she'll be okay. Let's just do a couple bounces. Can I share a meme of this trial? Yeah, in a minute. Remind me. Thank you. So far, we've always managed to pull off a win and get a not guilty verdict, but... Winning has never felt this depressing. Well, because you've never confronted what happens when you... ...correctly accuse someone of guilt in Phoenix Wright world. Nice. This is the first time you've been directly confronted by it, Phoenix. Doesn't mean it hasn't been happening. Oh god. Now everything's fine. Oh, Espella, are you all right? Who's to say what happened? I just want to thank all of you. You all came to my rescue yet again. I don't feel at all conflicted about this. Yeah, well, we all did. Of course we did. Hold on a sec, Espella. What did you say just now? You all came to my rescue yet again? You don't mean... Yamaya doesn't have her memories back, does she? Yes, I remember everything. I remember the last trial. I suppose that makes this the second time we've met, and the second time all of you have helped me. Hmm. Mr. Wright, am I to infer that you and Espella have met before? Uh, yeah, it seems that way. You too, Mr. Layton? Perhaps it would be best if we briefed each other on what has transpired. Maya just sitting here like, what? Okay, what should we discuss? What happened in London? She needs to be locked up in a detention center, so she remember. Espella paid us a visit in London. She had in her possession a letter from an old acquaintance of mine. Is that right? Mr. Accidenti helped drive Espella straight out of Labyrinthia. Did you say accidenti? Yep. 
You both kept me safe from the witches that were chasing me. Not really. You hung out for like five minutes and then Luke opened the window. Wait, did you say witches? They appeared in London too. Wait, does she remember? Regrettably, I am unable to say our protection was absolute. Mr. Oopsie Daisy, when we saw you last, it seemed you'd managed to escape courtesy of that passing freighter. Oh yeah, that's right. What happened to you after that, Spiller? I rode the ship along the river for a while before arriving at a nearby port. And then... That's when I met Mr. Wright and Maya. I'm glossing over a few details there. What should we discuss? The boat! We'll hop on all the boat. I didn't know where the ship would end up. I felt very lonely out there. Please accept my sincerest apologies. I'm afraid there was nothing else I could do to prevent it. Uh, no, no, please don't blame yourself, Mr. Layton. You could have picked a better ship for me to fall onto, though. I just didn't know what to do. So I tried to look for something, anything on the ship that might help me. Boy, you sure found something, all right. Or rather, someone. You ran into a master thief working as part of the, cr the ship's crew. Yes, that's right. Did you say Master Thief? Crikey, that's amazing! I wouldn't exactly say it was amazing. After that, I was taken to court, and that's when Mr. Wright helped me. I see. Then perhaps, somewhere deep within your mind must have existed a memory of that previous trial, and of Mr. Wright. Hence why you thought to seek out his help when you found yourself in such an unfortunate situation this evening. That makes sense. After all, Nick did make legal history that day in jolly old England. Did you say you made history? Wow, that's incredible, right, Professor? I wouldn't exactly say I made history. But then after that, I was ne never able to find my way back to the Professor. Even after I went through the pains of finding that clue, it just ended up being taken away from me. A clue, you say? Yes, the tag that was hanging around the neck of that sweet little stuffed toy. The blue badger tag was important? I mean, she was holding on to it, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that tag was a clue for what? Blue badger jump scare. Okay, what should we discuss? Blue badger. I had a lot of time to think while I was on that ship. Thought about a lot of things. Like how to try and find a way back once the ship arrived at its destination, things like that. Find a way back. A way back to Mr. Layton and Luke. They were the only ones I knew I could depend on to help me. The pleasure was ours, Isabella. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't remember the name of the town where they lived. Huh? You mean London, Isabella? Oh, that's it. London. That's what it was written in Carmine's letter. Carmine's letter to Mr. Layton. Yeah. The blue teddy bear I found in that room was wearing a tag around its neck. Sorry, Spella, but PC Badger looks nothing like a teddy bear. On the tag in very small letters was written London. I recognized the name of the town. I thought it might be an address. That was her clue. That's because that stuffed toy was used in a special promotion run by the London Metropolitan Police. Oh, that's right. Aspella, you must have known that address was super important, so that's why you kept the tag, right? That way, you can meet up with Mr. Layton and Luke again. I just felt so lonely and helpless. I wonder, though, who do you think really did it? Hit Olivia over the head with a pipe, I mean. Lead pipe, dud, waff. What's this? Oh, yeah, I, I guess we never did find out who the real culprit was. I do believe that may have some connection to the group of witches. What? You mean the witches that were chasing us through London? Indeed, it would be, it could be they noticed your escape onto that ship and managed to infiltrate their own way aboard. Could it be? So, you're saying that there was some big scary witch lurking around in the inside of that cargo hold? I'm afraid there is a rather high possibility that was the case. Luke doesn't know what's happening, but if he puts on a little thinking expression, no one's going to ask him anything. Those witches were intent on seeing you brought back to Labyrinthia, no matter what. 
However, in order to do so, they had to make certain you did not become entangled in any situation that may stall your capture. Ah, in other words, the situation with Miss Aldente, you mean. Precisely. They must have knocked that crew member unconscious and attempted to recapture Espella before the police could arrive. However, their plan was clearly foiled, given that you ended up in court regardless. And that's when she became my client. A little rat just went running by. I just can't clearly remember anything that happened back then. Do you think there is a possibility that someone was pulling a spell of strings throughout the entire trial? Hey, maybe you're right. There was something a little strange about a spell at the time. Mr. Wright, a spell was introduced to you at the time as a schoolgirl. A female college student, is that correct? Yes. She would have had no knowledge of the world outside of Labyrinthia. That being the case, having her stand in an English courtroom as she was would pose a serious problem. Meaning that someone must have been attempting to cover up Espella's identity. What? Well, Professor, could someone really do that? That they could indeed, Luke. And if it is as I sus, I believe our adversaries may be far more powerful than we originally thought. Just exactly who or what are we dealing with here? Hey guys, let's head back to the bakery for now. I bet the boss is waiting for us with one heck of a pastry feast. Pastry Borgor. Oh, actually, I, I can't go home just yet. Huh? You could. Ooh. Well, there are still a couple of legal procedures to be taken care of before I can go home. Please, you all go on ahead without me. Is that so? Very well. I'm sure she'll be fine. I really must thank you all. Thank you so much for everything. Alrighty then, Espella. We'll catch you later. If everyone leaves and then she's just like, they don't suspect a thing, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Yes. Farewell for now. We hope you've enjoyed playing Phoenix Wright versus Ace Att Like, the way he was just standing there felt so awkward. Mr. Wright, please allow me the pleasure of a proper introduction. My name is Herschel Layton. I'm a professor of archaeology in London. A professor, huh? My name's Phoenix Wright. I'm an attorney. And a baker. As I suspected, you are no ordinary baker after all, Mr. Wright. Yeah, I thought it was pretty weird myself, to be honest. I mean, I really did believe I'd been a baker all my life. The more everyone kept saying it, the less sure I was that I was it was actually true. Just where did that memory come from, anyway? Hey, Professor! If Mr. Wright's an attorney, then that must be as smart as you, Roy! Haha. -ha. I'm afraid I can't really say, Luke. No. No, he's not. Hmm. But... Behind every ace attorney, there's an even smarter, not to mention beautiful, witty, and utterly amazing ace assistant. I think you also forgot humble. My name's Luke Triton. I'm the professor's apprentice. I'm Maya Fay. And Nick here is my apprentice. Isn't that right, Nicky boy? Nicky boy? Hey, wait. Why am I your apprentice? Anyway, we should all head back to the bakery. Let's get a move on. I'm sure a spell will be back before we know it. I would not get your hopes up about that, Sir Blue Knight. Front-facing Barnum? Inquisitor Barnum? Most impressive work tonight. Tis a shame you have kept such ability hidden until now. Trust me, Nick's lawyer abilities beat the pants off his baking abilities any day of the week. Okay, moving on. What do you mean by that, Inquisitor? Why can't a spell go home? New charges have been brought against Mrs. Espella Cantabella. What? No way! The copyright! You have realized it, haven't you? She is being charged under suspicion of being the Great Witch Bezella. She what? How can that be? <laughs> Am I to assume that charges based purely on Miss Kira's accusation? 
It was not I who made the decision. Excellent read. He just didn't seem to care. Huh? Lane just wants to go home and eat some pie. Regardless. The girl will return to court at the appointed time for further trial. Until then, I am to seek out any and all evidence pertaining to the Great Witch. Hmm. Pardon me, Inquisitor. When exactly is this appointed time? Well, five minutes from now. The investigation into this allegation will conclude on the day of the storyteller's next parade. That would be two weeks from today. That's actually more time than we normally have for a case. Following our investigations into the matter, the trial of the Great Witch shall proceed. What the... It would appear the girl has been withholding a dark secret from you all. A spell... Uh... The spell that Cantabella's questioning is set to begin shortly. That means visiting hours are over. I recommend you leave immediately. That's years of prep in Ace Attorney time. No kidding. Spella, the legendary great witch Bazella. But their names are totally diff- Well, the story that dictates the fate of an entire town, and now a so-called great witch named Bazella. Most intriguing. It would seem to be up to us to uncover the answers to these mysteries. But how are we supposed to manage it all in two weeks? Where are we going to find any evidence? Hmm, you know, I was thinking. How do you address a great witch? Hail to the old magnificent magical one. Or maybe just, what's up, witchy baby? What difference would it make? She's called a great witch. That's not someone I'd ever want to meet. Hmm. I believe I've thought of a solution to our problem. It's actually rather shrimpery. Professor Layton? That is my name. Allow me to explain, Mr. Wright. The only way we may be able to solve the mysteries of this town and its residents is if we join forces. Why is this game called Versus? He's right. We've come this far. There's no way we're just gonna give up on Espella. Okay, I'm on board. I look forward to teaming up with you, Professor. Me too, Luke. Oh, me too, Maya. They're gonna hold hands and have zero thoughts. Now then, shall we press on? This marks the beginning of our own story. One dictated by ourselves and written by our own hands. Bare Knuckle Brawl saw this somehow. To be continued. The pose is the same as the front face splice in the first Layton game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really happy with how the, the 3D models. There's a couple angles and some animations rarely. Let's go. Give me all the pick rats. Nom, 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 nom. Delicious. Yeah, there's every now and then there's some like angle or whatever. I'm like, that's not as high as the bar. But in general, just I'm really impressed by the production values here. Yeah, I'm going to save. Yeah, I'm going to save. Which is caught. In the which is caught. Chapter 2 complete. That's standard length for the trials in this game? Holy hell. Chapter 3. The Great Witch. Should just be called Chapter 3. Uh, what were we talking about? The Great Witch Bazella. It should just be uh, Chapter 3. Espella is Bazella. Parentheses. Spoilers. That's her cat. Uh, the chapter three, huh? Chapter three, what? Um, may maybe, maybe, we're only, only five hours in. Jesus, that was a long trial. Um, yeah, 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 thanks for the reminder. Um, maybe we, uh, maybe, maybe this is where. Thank you, weeb. Appreciate it. Yeah, you remember, you can always ask permits for mads. We well, got your meme for the trial. Oh, whoa, whoa, um. Uh, um, uh, yeah, this is bait. Correct. Uh, I'm sure the chat's gonna explode. Let me just see if I can refresh the chat real quick. I need to put on some jams. Just gonna refresh that. Hello? I hit refresh and it didn't refresh. Is it waiting to get caught up? Um, hold on. There? Refresh? Is it? Oh, there it goes. Hooray! Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is certainly an unexpected twist of events. 
Uh, it would seem that one of our own witnesses to the crime was the true witch all along. No, please. With this evidence to mind, the court has no choice but to declare the defendant not guilty. Yay! They did it. No, you can't do this, please. Foom. Yippee! Accurately small. Every time it cuts to that wide shot, you just see Luke barely able to even see over the, like, counter he's behind. is just excellent. Yeah, correct. This game is, uh... Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Yeah, covering Luke's eyes. Luke, run. What do you mean, Professor? Um, anyway, there we go. Man, that's a jam. Now that's a jam. Uh, thanks so much for being. Uh, what is? We'll fit. We'll fi finish nothing. I, I, we're we're gonna continue it next time. Um, yeah. Itty bitty legal accomplice to murder. Nominative determinism for a spell does cast their fate there. A little bit. Unless it's like she's really good at spelling, you know. What if one more slime block puzzle? Well, I'm assuming that next time is going to be more latent centric again. So we'll see. I'm sure everything's fine. Ambitious words. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is happening. Um, I'm glad that fantasy court is as dumb as real court. Um, I do like the mechanic of having multiple witnesses and then having them react to each other's testimony. I'm it, I'm curious to see them bring up the thing that happened at the very end where it was like, you're giving everyone's testimony, you can kind of like point out inconsistencies there. I was a bit confused by it, but we got it. Um, it was good. You like Radius Turning? Yeah, it's neat. It's neat. Might be dumber. I'm off to bed. Have a good schnooze. I'm going to get a cop on alerts and go send you off somewhere. Thanks for hanging, though. I'm really enjoying this. I, I'm I'm really mad the glasses fell in the milk. <laughs> I'm really mad. I'm also mad that they looked at the camera and said, there's no logic in this world. I'm still mad about that too. So it's good. Tita, thanks for the hammy. Yeah, happy birthday again. Um, it's my birthday and you're streaming. You know what that means. Turns out my birthday is five years and four days different from yours every year. Thank you so much for the hammy. Hope you have a great birthday. Aladici, thanks for the hundred bits. Uh, yeah, I said it'd be funny if there's a trapdoor beneath the witness. Yeah, and then that's what this game is. It's good. Yeah, I'm gonna have a bucket of milk. Make sure you drop something metallic in there for flavor. There's no common sense. Yeah, both. Neither. Azamaj, thanks for 50 bits. You know what else is hot? The guilty. Mm. Well, it's Joan. Thanks for 69 bits. Bar ham, my pebbles. I could, I could definitely make a bar ham emote. Um, uh, what's a, what, what's a good jam... Oh, how about, wait, wait, no, that's not, wait, hold on, let me find, wait, it just scrolled past it, uh, actually, no, this is better, um, is this one, or is the next one, that's fine, Barnham, prosecutor's execution, yeah, we saw two witches get murdered, hmm, latent point to go with the phoenix, yeah, maybe. I don't know if I'll have time, though, but thank you. Cave, thanks for 64 bits. Speaking of emotes, uh, Twitch today um, unleashed a ton more animated emote slots for all streamers. So you might be seeing a ton more on general in the platform. In general on the platform. I need to make some. So that's going to take me a while because I have many more, as well as they've added a bunch of emote slots for tier 2 and tier 3 subs. So I got to figure that out, too. So uh, hopefully more of those things. And there's two extra slots of use Twitch alerts. And I have been meaning to switch the Twitch alerts. Uh, at least give it a shot. But they're still missing a couple features. Namely, random. Unless I can make Hammies work, I'm not switching. And they announced that they're going to be adding random alerts. They just haven't done it yet. So. I can promote BTTV animated emotes to canon emotes. That's true. Yeah, I mean, at least in the short term, I could take some like Awesome Yeah and put them native on Twitch. We'll see. We'll see what I decide to do. Oh, no, scared me. Hope it was yummy. What are Twitch alerts? Uh, Twitch added, so in the same vein as this, when someone does things that pops up, that's not a built-in feature to streaming. That's something you have to use a third party for. And Twitch has basically created their own solution. You still have to add it to your streaming software. Um, but there's some features about it that seem kind of neat. They're like taking advantage of the fact that it's native to the platform. So some features that are like you can customize alerts, stuff like that. So, uh, who could be at it? Well, yeah, I don't want to take someone else's emo. I mean, granted, Bar Bobble is made, I think, by Johnny Honey. Um, but, uh, something like, ooh, I'm not going to upload that to my channel. I'd only upload something that either I made or commissioned or, you know, 
whatever. It's going, Scaredy. We just finished the second trial. And and you know how I feel about it? Is is this is this the I didn't name it. I just, it's just called image. Hopefully it's that's not the right one. That says lawyer restored. Um What happened to it? Oh, I guess I deleted it. Well, I do still have this. But the the image of um what a trial, huh, Nick? Uh, no, it's only case two. You know, Tintin meme. There she is. Beep, beep. Uh, Kev, thanks for 64 bits. This case will be the yeast of your problems, Baker. I do like how he was promoted from apprentice Baker or assistant Baker to Baker to actually kind of being a lawyer sort of defender. Um, good. Case three, huh? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Shoot to Kumi must be stopped. I hope he never stops ever, forever. Boy, the show was Ace Tourney game. It was only case two. Yeah, wow, what an adventure. Glad it's all settled now. Sir Blue Knight. Yeah, but also the judge himself also kind of warmed up to him over the course of the trial. Uh, Cave, thanks for the 64 bits. Leave leavening days go by. Knead the dough all around. Bake it all to a golden brown. Banjo, thanks for 69 bits. Nidal is papyrus pre-skeleton. Cave. Oh, dang, Judge, you're about to be puzzled on gentleman style. Boom. Whoa, it's Joe. Thanks for soup. Your Honor, I found a gun. Fias Farnes, thanks for the dollar you do. And 69 months long. That's a lot. Thanks again, Emily, for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. For Delinio, thanks for 245 bits. Uh, finding his theme is hard as hell. I hope you're able to find it. The soundtrack is very good. Ebay, thanks for 100 bits when the lighten theme kicks in. Oh, so good. I didn't know how badly I needed accordion and violin to randomly jut into the middle of an ace attorney case. I don't know if that picked up on my microphone. <laughs> a truck just went by and started honking like right as it passed. It was startling. Uh, everybody, thank you. Uh, Quincy, thanks for soup. Were you expecting Bar Sting to get such use? No. But I'm glad it's getting used. Baby Kale, thanks for 15 months. Aval Inara, thanks for the hammy. Start watching part one and realize never got a chance to play it myself. Uh, thank you again for the birthday wishes and thanks so much. I didn't hear. Good. Sound like a cat. Yeah, it was like a meow. It was weird. Uh, Ozzel, thanks for the 50 bits. The new Pursuit music. It's so good. Ebe, plot twist, some guy has... Plot twist, some guy has answers. Exploding crayon art. I guess I should get out of here and return to the VODs. This is amazing. Thanks for streaming it. I'm glad, and I really appreciate everyone saying that they're excited and enjoying it because... I've talked a lot about how I try to space out longer playthroughs because anyone that doesn't care is like, holy shit, I can't watch his stream for like a month. So this is going to take a lot of streams to get through. So I'm glad it's it's as much for you guys as it is for my own enjoyment. So I'm glad you're enjoying I'm glad you're, you're sticking around with it because I've had a lot of fun. Uh, it, is, it is a hoot. Um, I also just know it's not for everyone. So uh, looking forward to mixing up eventually. And also, I don't know if I'm going to ne necessarily break it up too much with other streams, but I'm having fun. It's good. Someone was safe here at the last second, but damn. Yeah, I mean, that... I, th the stakes are real, and I really appreciate that from an narrative perspective. They're not shying away from like, no, these witches are being executed. Unless there's some ass pulling in the game where it's like, no, they're not. They get dunked into the fire, and then Bazella saves them at the last second. They might do something like that, but at least as of this point, it's just, no, they're dropped in the fire, and then they're gone. So, it's good. Where the killer was named Killer. I know. I joked when she popped up, and I was like, wow, her name is Kira. Look out. And then she was... You can't, you really can't. Uh, B2KD for Judge. Thanks for 15 months and the hammy. Caught up on the VOD. Gotta catch up before live. Happy Barthmas. Thank you. Smashman, thanks for 96 bits and 10 more bits. She turned me into a newt. I'll call better. TFK Wall, thanks for 56 months. His name is Better Luke. My spin. Edgar Ware, thanks for 14 months. What? Chad Ripple, thanks again for sharing the awkward zombie comic and the bits. Ozomagia, this murder reminds me of a puzzle. Yeah, they're watching a witch being lowered in a fire and screaming, and he's like, Luke, I remember this witch puzzle. And there's like a cute drawing that he made of a witch on a broom over like a field. And there's like goats on one side and sheep on the other. And he's like, oh, this reminds me of a puzzle. Looks like, oh, Professor, she's burning. She's burning in the fires. So she see, uh, you, she had to travel from A to B. Or perhaps she traveled from B to C. There's a new... Luke, look at the puzzle. Uh, Cave. He's not even doing it because he's, like, trying to shield Luke from the horrors of what's happening. He just likes showing puzzles to Luke. Rebuild the incinerate skeleton of an accused witch. 
It's fun. Uh, Cave, okay, thanks for six snippets. Confetti? Jacob Bacon, thanks for soup. As pointed out by chat, Kira's VA is Karina Reeves, also voiced Flora in Xenoblade 1. Oh, not Flora from Professor Lane. It was really interesting to hear in something else. Her, I mean, the voice actor was great. All the voice acting has been very solid. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's mainly just I'm not used to hearing Phoenix and Maya talk, so I'm not used to it yet, but it's good. Fiora, not Flora. Oh, in this font, it just looked like Flora. You're right, that isn't I. Fiora. Who's Flora? The voice actor? I do not know. Oh, are you just saying who? there's a character named Flora in Professor Lane? Who is that? Garbage Nevada, it's nice, it's It could be worse. This whole thing could be presided by a monochrome bear. Could be worse. Spanjo, thanks for the 96 bits. Make one where Barnham shot puts. Um, I'll see. I'll see. We will see. I don't know if I have time. If I have time to make a, an emote, we'll, we'll see what I have time to do. Uh, but I also want to try to make some animated emotes because I have a ton more slots, as I mentioned. But regardless, thank you so much for hanging and watching and memeing. I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. We're all having fun. Everyone's having... You're having fun. I'm telling you that you're having fun. Um... Uh, I am biased towards my fiance. So we're gonna raid bad for Fortnite Friday. And they're currently playing Lego Fortnite, maybe? I don't know what's happening. Um, but it's good. Um, the final stretch of that case was an really complicated odd man out late in puzzle. I mean, kind of, kind of a little bit. It, I mean, it felt more Ace Attorney E. It just was fun to have it cut to the side, and instead of Maya, it's just Leighton with Luke behind him. It's jarring every time. Did they get Peter Griffin yet? I have no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it seems like Fortnite's goal, like Epic's goal with Fortnite, is to make it as confusing as possible. And I imagine if you're embedded in it, it doesn't make sense either, but at least you're up to date on what's happening. Whereas I'm just like, what? I mean, it just, at this point, it sounds like they're trying to turn Fortnite into Roblox too, when they're like, we added a Lego mode and we're adding like Rocket League and a racing game and it's all inside of Fortnite. I'm just like, I don't, add Ace Attorney Fortnite and then I'll be interested. Epic, you listening? Tim, Mr. Sweeney, we add Ace Attorney Fortnite and I'll be there. Not, not, oh, we added a 3D model of Phoenix. I want court cases and evidence and testimony in Fortnite. Your move. Please don't do that. That sounds like a nightmare. Anyway, I don't know what a raid message is. Um, uh, 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 something about logic. I don't know. Sploosh is good. Milk, less good. Bye. Thanks for, have a good weekend. Goodbye. Thanks for watching VOD Watchers. We'll get back to this next time. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go now. Goodbye. Ah!